live. Uh, I will go live. Yeah, it's a nice little, uh... I wanna live. I wanna live. Like tears in the rain. They live. No. Like tears in rain. There's no, not tears in the rain. Like tears in rain. What's wrong with the, there's, calling it the rain? There's not, there's yeah. not a the. I'm pretty sure you're rain. inaccurate if you say in the, I'm pretty sure it is just tears and rain. Just tears and rain. That's right. It's even what the Evangelist song is called for it. <laughs> we talking... were talking about some of those best movie moments. That one's mm. up there, man. Oh, Oof. dude. Hell yeah. It's one of them ones that's like... Why is he man, yelling at us? I don't know. <laughs> Make sure we don't miss it, you know? But, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> that's one of those greatest very... movie moments of all time because of the fact that people are very quick to understand it and yet consider it pretty darn deep. And think about what it is. It is, um, it, it is one of the best scenes, like, in any film ever. <laughs> it really it's, is. Uh... It is a, it's a perfect match of music... Yeah. And payoffs for characters and acting and just cinematography, just the lighting. Oh, it's beautiful. It's like visually, it's gorgeous. stunning. And his name is Roy, or, which is a reference to uh, the game of Roy in Richard. Roy is well, Latin. I mean, uh, sorry, not the way Latin way around, right? King, right? No, no, no. Uh, Rick and Morty was made before Blade Runner, actually. A lot of people don't know that. Oh, uh, it's true. Right. If you were like, a super sorry. fan, you'd know that. Yeah. yeah. Roy the game. Blade Runner was actually inspired by uh, Rick by and Morty. By a video game, Roy, which was in, which is part of the, the mythos of, of Rick and Morty. Yeah. Rick really. and Morty takes elaborate. place within the Blade Runner cinematic universe. So, DC man. Mola, there's like a whole season of Rick and Morty that's, <laughs> that's happening right that's, now. That's, that's slowly <laughs> falling out, and we've just ignored it pretty much. Yeah, but you could. Yeah, exactly. You could just not watch it. You well, could watch like well, She Hulk. I watched, this. I watched the uh, watched the premiere, the first episode of the yes, season. Yes, we did. Um, the season and, six. Uh, yeah, and I yeah I didn't like but it. But doesn't that oh illustrate what it truly means to not care? Because if you had asked me, do you care about Rick and Morty? I'd be like, yeah, yeah. It's like, have you watched the new ones? I was like, no. It's um, it's it's odd because it's just. It's yeah. Every time there was a new season coming out, it's like, oh, cool, new Rick and Morty. Now it's just like, oh, Rick and Morty's there. How yeah, about that? they it, it it season five it released the latter half of it like obliterated my investment in that show. It's kind of incredible. Yeah, oh, I didn't see that one coming. I didn't and see it coming. I didn't think it would be that uh, cataclysmic in a sense in terms of destroying my investment in that show. And like I, I just I recognize the fact that I don't know how many have come out. I don't know how many are even in the season. I I'm not looking to find them as they do. I, and then I'm like, oh, how many are out now? It's like there's three, right? I think there's four. <sighs> well, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's just like a, okay, that's fine. I don't know. It's, hmm. yeah. Meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, precious, precious speaking of Williams. shows, speaking of science fiction television programs. Mm. We Indeed. watched ourselves of, a good old little Mr. Andor. It wasn't right. cringe. It, it, it wasn't it, cringe. It wasn't only. I enjoyed we watched it. The first, yeah, <laughs> it, we watched the first three episodes, and not only was it not cringe, it was good. I like it. I was satisfied, right and I, first, I'm probably going to be episodes. careful with my judgment until possibly giving it a rewatch once the season's out, or... Something yeah. else, because I want to make sure of what I've been provided by the mouse. I uh, think well, it's pretty it, good. You know, I definitely really like it. it. Yeah, it is weird. It's legitimately the, uh, strange. I think the conclusion that we've all come to is that I don't know, like what what the factors were that enabled it to exist, but it's like somebody managed to sneak a real story into a uh, into the mix. You know, like of all of these other shows that are being made by Disney at the moment. Somebody's managed to sneak an actual story in. There was an idea informing the story that they want to tell. There was um, an idea. There was an trailer. idea. And it's a, yeah, I do. <laughs> there is, yeah, it, it's, it's kind of pensive. It's restrained. It's artful. Um, there seems to be some sort of like they actually want to tell a story here. There's a cast of characters that I mean, are interesting yeah, to listen think, to. They're distinct environments. 
there it's um it is refreshing after so long like to see a star wars story where you have characters with different viewpoints and perspectives that clash with one another in reasonable ways or or even that like it just comes through subtly like there's subtext man <laughs> crazy thing that subtext <laughs> like <laughs> it's a really valuable tool well, if I mean, you choose uh... to use it Anybody in chat who watched our coverage of uh, Rings of Power, you'll notice a, a common theme, at least one of them, was that these people don't sound like humans when they talk to each other, they don't react to each other. They did that in Andor! They did a whole bunch! They would say things, and then the other person would hear that thing, and then say things that relate to that thing. It was incredible. Exactly. It was, it was mind-blowing. Is... It's like the inverse <laughs> of Rings of Power. There was even a time where they asked a question, they were given a, an evasive answer, and then he said, you didn't answer my question. I was like, whoa! Oh, oh, yeah, it's, 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 I it's, was aroused it, by that. It's, it's been so long since somebody has evaded a question in a story, and it's been acknowledged <laughs> by another character. <laughs> they were not allowed to just evade the question, yes. Um, oh, I mean, it's, it's, it's so it's, wonderful. Andor, like, pretty evidently excels on a production standpoint like in terms of um it it looks more looks expensive good. than uh yeah. than boba fett and and it's not just that it looks more expensive there's just some cool choices that are made in terms of cinematography and sound design like there a is. lot of focus on on people's faces and their reactions to events um which is nice to see because it's like that grounding element uh, it's very focused on people that show at least so far Focused yeah. on people and their perspectives, and something that, um, depending on where they go with it, could end up being really cool is exploration of like the bureaucracy of the empire and like the 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 sense that you get in those first three episodes. Even though we don't see any stormtroopers, thankfully, or any you know any any of like the immediately recognizable iconography of the empire, that the cloud of the empire looms over everything. Everybody's like kind of trying to look out for themselves. They don't want to get themselves in too much trouble. And it informs a lot of the ways that they interact with people, like how they conduct themselves. And then on the other side, we get to see the bureaucracy of the Empire, that there's a level of complacency um, in the institutions that are part of the Empire, like feed into it, like private security companies, how they just don't want to get in too much trouble, want to fly on the radar so they can keep doing their own thing, or they're just indifferent to it. And then it like it's it's good to see these uh these parts of the universe be explored more meaningfully. Rather Star Wars than... has never felt more like a real place, and like I can't even I don't, in a long time. A long oh, and how nice it is time. that we haven't been on Tatooine, two new planets. Oh, it's incredible. It's three? incredible how much. Uh, have I we mean, seen three, or was it a two? Well, you got the forest. Oh, three. Yeah, three. Yeah, you're right. That's true. There's three. Yeah, there are the forest three planet. planets. Each are distinctly different from one another in terms of their aesthetics, not just of the planet itself, but the buildings and the people there. It's easy yeah. to tell them apart. And each of these planets, they don't all look the same. You go to different places on these planets, um, but you still feel like you're there, just in another part. And we get to it's see really what it looks nice. like. People going about their days, just going to work. We get to see people going to work. You yeah, know, this is something we've asked for for a while, by the way. <laughs> yeah, like, people just going about their daily business, catching shuttles. We get to, um, we get to see more of, like, what it, it looks like to live in this world. Which is, it's so refreshing. One of the, man, what I thought Mando was gonna be, what I thought that show was gonna be, <laughs> oh, was, yeah, how foolish and naive oh, I was. Oh. What I thought Mando was going to be was a story that was more disconnected from the main Star Wars saga because I this is a whole unit this is a whole galaxy. There's so many stories you can tell that are going to have nothing to do with like the strict main story. Um, Mando wasn't that, as as of course we later found out. Mando is uh, very heavily tied into those Mando main storylines. Yeah, is a boring asshole in his baby. That's what Mando is, and it's shit. Yes, Mando um, has no character. It has no character, and this show does. It has a character, and it has characters. It has meant, yeah, it has a cast of characters, and a lot there of characters is... actually, and they're what quite well realized in what time. Like by the end of episode three of Andor, you've got about one and a half episodes of the Rings of Power, and think about how much was accomplished in those first three episodes of Andor compared to Rings of Power. Yeah, yeah, and Rings I've seen of a lot Power of like... has had 
four. We've seen four hours of Rings of Power. Four hours. Five. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> five per Mahler. But for the other was of, of so we've seen four hours and we've covered four just, hours of it. I just want to let you guys know uh, the Numenor storyline after an additional hour is they conclude they will head to Middle Earth. I All right, because I because I feel like that's what they did at the end of the last four, episode. Yeah. Um. Well, you'd be wrong because. Uh, oh. That, uh, okay. Oh, I can't. It's just so dull. <laughs> <laughs> so dull. Such um, a dull joke. What's funny as well, there's this big discussion about whether or not Elrod broke his vow uh, to, to do it. <laughs> it, it, it. Sorry. He did. I've only seen the teaser. The I only saw the teaser. I don't understand how we could have a dis. You did. He, well, you uh, did. Uh, in, like, in the show, happen. he like talks about it for a <laughs> You know what? We'll save it. We'll save it for you know when what? we cover right. it, because we'll get there. All right. We'll get yeah. there. Um, but yeah, I, I, uh, I was trying to explain it on uh, Friday Night Tights that uh, I'm, I'm very much a fan of just uh, starting really foundational, setting up our little world first, and then making things happen. And I can see a lot of people are very like, oh, fuck, how exciting watching random normal people go to work. What the fuck is this? And it's just like, okay, um... One of the things people compliment Alien for quite a bit is that it's opening like 20 minutes to 30 minutes is like, as, as it's referred to, space truckers. It is normal people doing a normal job, but in the setting of like however many years in the future, and it's believable because everything looks like it's uh, been used and it, it looks run down, but at the same time way more advanced than we have because they're literally in space. And a lot of it is just the, their interactions and you can gain a lot about the dynamics of the, of the crew from that. Um, so, like, you know, spending... This TV show is going to be, what, 12 episodes? Spending even two so. episodes yeah. just setting a baseline. We still get some action scenes, and uh, and I think... Uh, like, I, I was always interested in all of the um, uh, security guard stuff. All the, all the Absolutely. Lower there level were a lot of subplots stuff. that were interesting to follow. And, I mean, you know what? Like, I'm invested in seeing where Andor's story goes. Yeah, I him and all the other really people. I want to see what happens to him. I want to see what happens. Uh, yeah, next. like for the they, first time, they... I'm not terrified. Um, I I guess it's always going to be because um, the third episode I think is I think we all agree that the third episode is probably the weakest of the bunch, and that's like when I it's would starting so, to yes. escalate. So I guess I wonder like if we the, the more that the plot begins to take place, if things start to problems start to arise but like even as the plot began to press onward it's still got like less problems than what are typical in the disney star wars shows there's Far still stuff problems. that's functioning and working and in the midst of it we have characters who are interesting and cool um like i mean i'm super excited to see more of stellan skarsgård's uh character oh yeah um, super yeah. excited to see those two interact and go on their adventure mm -hmm. interested to see what nuke new characters are going to get brought into the fold cuz like after episode 3 I it like th that is a uh that grouping of episodes like tells a a complete story in a sense uh even though there's obviously more story to come so I can imagine that like things will change in the next few episodes new characters will get introduced the scale might change maybe 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 <laughs> there's like a escalation and a de-escalation and then you know it ramps up and down because, like, those first two episodes are very much taking their time before ramping up to the big explosive, like, conflict in episode three. Mm -hmm. Which is refreshing compared to the two action scene mandate per episode that has infected all of the other Disney, infection. like, IP shows. I'm subscribed to uh, Fulmento, and he... I, I think I saw him tweeting about... Sometimes he wonders about... Because he, he always has to make a movie, like... Failure or success, that's usually the thumbnail style he right, goes there's for. never a, a, a neutral film, I don't think okay. so, but you should, <laughs> if he doesn't do that, he definitely should throw it in there, like have a, you know, this is a mixed bag movie, but, so, Prey is his next one he's doing, he's, he's decided to go with failure, what do you think his summary of what is wrong with that film is? Um, Ooh, what would he say? In a sentence, if you can. He says that it, it devolves in the end to uh schlocky action that undermines the build up of the first element uh, uh, aspects of the film um maybe i should ask the question better so let's say he's going to if if he was making a video on um what's like a 
uh, you know, like Godzilla 1999. Um, he he a blurb? Could, yeah, his blurb would be like, that's not Godzilla. That's... Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, that that's would be, what it would be. So, what would do you think he, the equivalent of that would be what for What would it be for Prey? Prey? Oh, he doesn't uh, think that this predator uh, honors the legacy of that character or culture? That's a guess. What do you got for me? I'm actually not sure. I I don't know I mean, what he guess. would say. So, I don't know. if you would ask I, me, I, yeah. I wouldn't know either. I'm not sure what is so in a sentence would be for the bit. He said, "When is a movie too simple?" Oh, <laughs> which when is, is like, too, too simple. Too simple. I don't know. I'm almost, I almost. I know. might. I might check that when video is, out because I. I'd love simple. to know how Prey's problem was that it was too simple. I think we praise the fact that it didn't try to be complex, especially in a world where everyone wants to have a super complex and intricate plot that they just cannot write. Yeah, because there was plenty of issues to, to pick at and valid reasons to like yeah. be put off by that film that have nothing to do with how complicated it, being too it was. Simple, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's really? a lot of a lot of stories that are really great that are conceptually very straightforward. Um. I mean, you could say that Alien is pretty simple. Oh yeah, know? like Which... and and yet Alien was remember he he loved Alien. He loved it so much. He, he hated Underwater for not being more like it, but also being bad for ripping yeah. it off. Yeah. And um, have you guys seen Duel? I think that was Spielberg's first movie. Um, I have not. Or maybe I'm I confused. haven't. No. Duel is from 1971. It is directed. Yes, yeah, I think this was Steven Spielberg's first movie. It's a very, very simple plot, um, just about a, a, about a guy driving down the road, and this guy in a truck is, like, fucking with him. Like, that's the entirety of the that's plot. That's the whole movie? <laughs> that's, it, it's, yeah, but I, I like Duel. I think it's a neat, I think it's a neat movie. It would be one that I'd be is curious Is it called Duel for Duel Carriageway? Is that the idea? D-U-E-L. Okay. Do they shoot yeah. at each other with uh, muskets? The I couldn't possibly tell you that. I mm. couldn't. I couldn't tell you. If I did, it would ruin the fact that they would. You wouldn't not. want to spoil Duel. Yeah, that's that's just the premise of Duel, and it's really it's a neat movie. Um, also, hi Destiny, how you doing? Hi, pretty good, babe. What's up? Great. We're uh, we're getting we're gearing up to check out this video. We're finally going to answer the question of like what what art is, is and whether rat. or not it's good. Yeah, because yeah. whether or not what's good, whether or not. Rat. Art can be good or not. He's not gonna get that, right? Like, He's not gonna get good rap. Yeah, four year old fine. meme. That's, oh, oh, that's but that's it's still a beautiful me meme. I wouldn't yeah. deny it. Uh, it's a gorgeous meme. Fonts Wait, what's that a meme in reference to? <laughs> when in a video we covered once, someone wrote on the screen what is good art, but the font was very strange, so it looked like what is good rat. <laughs> and so that's just been a it's just been a little meme of ours. We like to we say that things are good rat. And we enjoy it. it. Gotcha. That's well, yeah. glad um, I could be on that you've meeting. been filled in. Yeah. Thank you. Look, you had to be there. Could, okay. It's one of those. Okay. Back pocket for later. All right. Here's your link. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Context for this. As time goes on, a lot of great figures in history are trying to answer the question of, you know, like, what even makes good art? What makes art meaningful? Philosophy Tube oh, is actually. God, uh, it's this person. <laughs> hey. <laughs> You, oh, you don't know. This could be insightful. Oh, you didn't tell him what we were doing? Oh, God, I forgot. I, he did tell me. I wasn't emotionally prepared. Sorry. I'm, I did okay, tell him. Uh, it's not my he fault did, this time. He did time. tell me. Okay, I'm here for it. I'm sorry. Do this. Hey, I, you know what? Use it as a vehicle. Talk about what you think about art. I was actually going to say, oh. we could probably... So the name of the video is, Is Art Meaningless? Um, I'm going to assume all four of us would say well, no, too. and then we'd be done. But you could probably go further than that. Okay, I just want to warn you guys in advance for this conversation, okay? I'm the worst person to have this with because I'm going to be autistically quibbling over every fucking word you use. That's, when you that's say, totally uh, good. That's, that's good. Totally You're fine. on the right good. podcast. You're right? in a good that's company. Good. Yeah. That's so literally when you ask, like, podcast. is art meaningless or is it good? I'm going to ask you, like, what do you mean yep. by meaningless? Yep. What do you mean by good? Because that's yep. important. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay. Good stuff. Okay. That's, we'll I definitely be doing that. Christmas video. Christmas video. Yeah, Abigail Thorne presents. Ha <laughs> ha Oh, yeah. good one. Okay, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, now that we've got that out of the way. 
Um, well, I was gonna say, do you want to start by we, we, we let Abigail take the conversation wherever she wants, or do you want to answer the question first in whatever way you would like to? I leave it to all of you. Hold on, I am so sorry. Can I ask you guys a question? Do it. You mean, can you ask this? Are there any other words like that in the English language? So, present mm -hmm. and present are spelled the exact same way, but the word has two different meanings based on where the accent goes, right? She presents her presentation, or I just got a present. Um, are there well, any other words like that? Live and live, right? They're both spelled the same way. Ear and so. tear. Yeah. There's a lot Wait, of words yeah. that are Which word like did you that. just say? I, I, sorry, you were speaking Australian. Say that one more time. Tear, <laughs> oh, live, live and live. Live and live is one. Spelled. Oh, yeah, produce and, then, and produce. Yeah. Yep. Like I said, tear and tear, I think, is one, right? Oh, content. Content and content. content. Yeah. content. So the answer is that there are a lot of because English <laughs> oh, is a very English is easy to understand language. Oh my god, there's so many of these. Okay, yeah. sorry, I'm done. Go ahead. Um, well, I mean, yeah. So what do you reckon? Do you think we... art is meaningless destiny. <laughs> that's that's the question that's being floated. All right, base. Wait, did you want me to answer that, or are we just going to the video? Well, or... yeah, we wanted to confront you on yeah. your position. We're cornering art is definitely you. Definitely meaningless. You told us before, and we didn't. Uh, we said we wouldn't tell everyone, but we did. Um, oh. that you, you totally think art's meaningless. We all do. That's why we're here. True. Yeah. Any question about whether or not art is meaningless is probably going to quickly devolve into some like very cringy, like nice. everything is meaningless bullshit would be my guess. Obviously, everything, everything can have meaning, right? Hmm. Is that, is that step one? We go, it's all down to the individual, right? All wrong. Is there meaning that goes beyond the individual? What is meaning? What does it mean to mean? This is going to be a long fight. Well, I would trying. say meaning is in is definitely a human concept. So without humans, meaning disappears. Right? Meaning is a constructed idea that humans have. So and that's an interesting, it's interesting like to think about when a story as a concept is a human creation too. Well, like or art in general, if we wanted to go more broadly, like does art exist without anybody to perceive it? To perceive it, I, I think we talked a little bit about we this. We talked about this before medley. for sure, but yeah, maybe it's worth, uh, worth uh, going. To, well, it depends. We could be here for a while. Is it, is it less to do <laughs> with right, perceiving? So... More to do with categorizing it. Like, because if if no humans are left, then nothing is necessarily well, I mean, anything it, from anything's point of view. To, well, I guess an example would be like, for instance, a star is a categorization that we've like. That's a category we've created that has you know th this is what it means to be a star. But the thing that is the star, like the actual object, the celestial object exists regardless of whether there are humans around to categorize it. I don't know okay. if art is the same way, you know? Well, is... Fr is we gonna fringy go... guy. <laughs> fringy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, I think that's the line, of tr the, the line of thought that you need to be on. I think that's true. I, when you talk about meaning, meaning to me is in this category of things called relationships. And I don't think relationships exist outside of human like perception like whether mm -hmm. or not something is related to something else like where does the tree end and the dirt begin these like boundaries and categories that we draw upon things the relationships that things have to another i think that meaning can probably be described as like a type of relationship and without humans like meaning doesn't exist that's what i would say yeah, yeah. but then of course we encounter I would say the... that go ahead i'd say that about art um yeah if you ha if you create art, it's still art. Even if if you made a statue and everyone just disappeared, rapture style, it would still be art because that was still an expression of someone. Well, I think we uh, that was that was part of the discussion we had was intentionality. Let's say that we've got a landscape that's beautiful. Is that landscape art because it exists and I was here to perceive it, or would I need to do something to essentially like take a photo turn it into art, like take a picture or paint the landscape? Like, can something just so. exist and be art? Or does, or, or, and, and I guess, what if you accidentally create something? Like, what if you, I don't know, you drop a glass and then it shatters. And then, I don't know, the way that the light is cast down on the glass is, is like, visually stunning. And so it's like, that was not intentional. You didn't intend to create can I, that. Um, actually, because we, we did talk about it um, in one of the previous EFAPs, but one of the things to maybe throw in a curveball, it might not be, but I suppose I'll direct this at rags to make it quicker. <sighs> Uh, a friend of mine was getting uh, several photographs taken of their eye, the inner eye, and uh, 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 they, had, they they were telling me about this because they, they had it on their phone and they were showing me. 
uh, it was like a black and white screen once they got the photo and I was like why do you have that like what did they find something horrible and he was like no it was that they took the photo and both there was there was like the technician and then their superior they were both staring at it for a while and then the technician went wow and then I was like oh god what, what what's what's wrong and then they were like no nothing's wrong it just it just looks really good and 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 they showed it to them and then they let them take a picture of it and they took it home and it's just like it does look really cool right because it's like black and white the big Hard to explain almost. It's like a, a paint of yeah, white I'm and then loads of the veins. I, and, I, I know the feeling, yeah. Yeah, and it's just like that was a photo that was taken with the intention to be viewed for medical purposes, but it became art the second that they saw it and was like, ooh, like, right? Like that, that would count as art, right? I would say that things can... I think you almost have like two different uh, related but separate things in the sense that I think something can seem it could ma it could have a lot of the criteria that we would generally assign to things being artistic but it could be created incidentally and if that's the case i think that the key of what makes something art is that it is the expression of a i guess a sapient creature some mm. some brain that's Sorry. a fish you know sufficiently able to express itself so you can have something that you create incidentally that has artistic qualities, but it wasn't created in order to express any element of anything. So I wouldn't say that's art, but it can be pretty in much the well, same way so that you can accidentally do something and then look at it afterwards and be like, oh, that's actually really lovely. What do we, what, if we're talking about incidentally, what does it say if you intend to create something and then you unwittingly create something that was totally different than what you envisioned? Or I guess a more mundane thing, you have an idea and then that idea changes. Uh, I think that would still, I still, I'd still put that in the first category of you are trying to express yourself the way that that manifested wasn't the way you intended, but it was still through your attempt to express yourself. It we define expressing yourself as being way. incredibly broad to where anything, like any action, deliberate action, like any action of any kind that creates something that any, you find aesthetically pleasing is essentially any act of, create art, you know? Any act of creation where you are putting in some level of uh, your talent or focus or direction in a way that makes it your own, uh, or that uh, even if it's to a very, very small degree, like you could be at a job doing a work thing and you could go that extra little, that, that extra little bitty step in order to put your yourself, quote unquote, into the thing that you're doing, which I think would push it into that art category do we um we don't have any ben shapiro fans here do we no <laughs> well only when we talk about star Wait, Wars. no there will okay. be in chat as, but so, yeah as long as all of us here are are artistically sophisticated i don't know if we got a prerequisite wow. to anything i say uh, because obviously my opinions are just <laughs> de facto correct we all agree in here that almost anything can be music right uh, no one here is going to uh, be like, think, rap's like, not music or something, right? Oh, uh, no, no, no. No. Um, we can I thought you were going to go as far as saying noises, like, like birds, I drop like, my keys, is that music? Um, theoretically, but like, um, <clears throat> something that I would say to, to not get too hammered down on this is that art is going to be an unfathomably broad thing, and any mm -hmm. time you ever try to draw a box around it, uh, in terms of this is art and this is what it is, I'm gonna. People are gonna be able to find a million exceptions. Oh yeah, that's uh, kind of what we we're just yeah. doing, right? Yeah. Um, so even if you're gonna try to say that, like, well, if there's some level of intentionality, blah blah blah, people can say that, wow, this looks like art to things that have zero intentionality of being art. You know, sometimes a very very elegant solution to a programming problem can be like, oh my god, this is artistic. Uh, yeah. Or people might say the same about like math equations sometimes, or other types of solutions in engineering that there's absolutely no desire here to create something artistic, but like a solution could be like so elegant and so on point that you're like, oh my God, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like art is gonna be like, it's an incredibly subjective thing and it's almost an emotional experience being described by a perceiver rather than any absolute boundary that can be drawn around certain things. And if we say it's intentional or unintentional, we're always going to be able to find things that break literally any line you can draw around it immediately. So that, that would be my... Presumably, though, would, would, you, would you say art exists without humans? No. Even if... What about, like, gorillas and stuff that paint? Um, well, I mean, it's theoretical. Okay, hold on. When you say, can art exist without humans, what I'm hearing you say is, can something like art, which is like a relational thing, exist without minds that can perceive relational things? Now, if you ask me, what about if gorillas draw? Well, I guess if a gorilla has a mind that's sophisticated enough such that it could perceive art, 
then I guess I would say the art does exist. But then right. the existence of that art is contingent on the existence of the gorilla. So if you show me a mind of like sufficient complexity, then I'll say, well, I guess, yeah, this mind can create art. That would be the answer. What if, right? um, what if like somebody made a painting and then, uh, well, what if all humans disappeared like t today? Like if all mm -hmm. humans just disappeared and there's nothing left, did the things that we create that we consider art, would it still be art? Or is it no longer art because there's nobody around anymore? I guess you'd be asking from the universe's point of view, in which case, no, right? Yeah, exactly. I think the question is deceptively challenging, but it's because of the phrasing of the question. When you mm -hmm. ask, so I would argue, when you ask the question, is it art? I think that within that question, the answer is already baked in. The fact that there is a person around to even ask if something is art shows that there's a mind there to make the perception of it being art. So like when you say like, could something be artistic or could something be considered art if nobody was around there to consider it? I would say no, because baked into the concept of art is the, is the perception of a person or a mind perceiving it to, for it to be seen as such, right? Like if there was a painting floating through the universe with absolutely nobody to perceive it as such, like when I say that it is art, well, there's nobody there to perceive it as art and art isn't even a thing that we can define. So how could a thing that exists without definition, say for human perception, be something that exists without humans perceiving it? But yeah, right. like in a sense, that painting that was floating around in the universe, if there's nobody to perceive it, it is no different meaningfully from any other thing that exists in the universe that is like, I guess you would, just, you know. Yeah, yeah but it's just categorically, a, we can still say it is thing. there. Uh, it just wouldn't necessarily be referred to what as it means, art. Like to the universe, these yeah, are all like, still... Yeah. It's all stardust, it's I guess, to it's a degree. Yeah. Atoms. Atoms Though I would disagree. Yeah. I, I think that so what makes something art is in its creation, not in its ability to be perceived by other people. Um, I would say that if all the if every sapient mind in the galaxy just disappeared, all of those, everything in the Louvre and all that stuff, it would still be art, even if there's no one to perceive. Uh, well, it. I guess what does it mean if there's nobody left to perceive it? Like well, nobody left nobody to categorize it or understand yeah, it that way. Can say that it's art. It's well, almost like you're saying that you in post life would be looking at the planet and being like, that's still art over there, even if I'm not in that world to look at it. But it's like, well, yeah, but it's no, not. No, it was, it, I think it's art once it's created. Uh, so it still is that thing, regardless if there's people to see it. Um, in the same way that we say that art is one thing and a brick is one thing. Like the brick would still be a brick, even if there are no people around. Would it be? I think, yeah. Well, that, a tree it, it, stopping a tree without people. This is the issue: is that I think that as humans, we'll draw, um, we draw boundaries around matter, and then we categorize it as such. But like, um, I guess if we, if you want to look at like science, like here's a question: right? Does does a hand exist? Somebody say it might say, well, no. Technically, hands aren't real. It's really like a collection of cells. Well, do cells exist? Well, not really. It's like a collection of organelles. Do organelles exist? Well, no. Okay, it's like atoms. Does an atom actually exist? Not really. Does an electron actually exist? The way we see? Well, not really, right? I think that's the issue. Is that you might look at something and say, oh, well, this thing exists, and it's like, well, there's matter there that definitely exists. But the way that we define that thing as being a coherent object is probably a human concept. And absent humans, I don't know if the universe distinctly recognizes a tree as being a thing that's separate from the ground that it sprung from. That's what I would say. Um, I actually think this question, I, I think you may have said something along the lines of this already, but by saying is art meaningless, by using the word, we've already uh, understood that we're all using the framework of like humans, uh, which means the answer is yeah, what has to be yes. Do we have, right? Yeah, well, that's that's kind of the thing, right? Because um, if we never existed, it, would art ever exist? And it's like if uh, because we were never around to say what art is even defined as, um, you know. But 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 like this question poses that that is already we understand it is from a human perspective. In the same way, that's well, kind it, of how I look at storytelling. I'm like, there isn't when when, when someone's like, yeah, story, story can mean anything. If humans were all gone, it's like, yeah, but we're not, and we are having a conversation with, with the framework we all are working with. I assume we're not. Um, you know, we don't want to devolve into absurdity just because of the fact that you can actually pick this apart at the atomic level or even further. Um, but yeah, I, I, I guess we just differ on this because I, I'm, I, I just, I don't think that art requires someone to observe it to be what it is. Now, the meaning and like meaning and purpose are things that you, we, we imbue in or we take away from a thing that is separate from the thing itself. What do you, so out of curiosity, things, what do you think the argument the three of us are making is? That because it requires humans to categorize these things, they, 
lose that designation when the categorizers are don't exist anymore? Not even necessarily that they don't exist anymore. It's that there's no capacity for that categorization to take place whatsoever. It, it, there isn't. So, like, where are you starting That's... from when you continue to call it art? Oh, well, I wouldn't be calling it art in this situation if I didn't exist hypothetically, but that wouldn't change what the thing is and the intention behind its creation, which is what I think is what makes art art. It's in the creation of it. It's not in its continued existence. In the oh, same I mean, way that if I if I was to make a, if I was to paint a painting and it was lovely and everything, but it burned down and it was it didn't exist, it still would have been art. But Even it if it doesn't anymore, exist though, right? Like, and, not anymore but, but, because it's been destroyed. But the thing is, is, we're not talking about whether the art doesn't exist anymore. I guess it's more so whether there's anybody to perceive it anymore. Well, that's that's fine. I mean, and if if you had a, I mean, if we want to take this into the sense of there's. You don't even have to remove minds from the universe. You just have to put the art in a place where it's never, ever discovered or known, ever. So here's a question that I would ask you, okay? Um, so we have a thing called the electromagnetic spectrum, right? Which is just varying, um, I think it's just the um, wavelength of wavelengths. radiation or whatever, right? Um, there is a certain spectrum of wavelengths that are visible to us, to our eyes, that have colors, right? Yeah. Um, so let's say that I paint a picture and my painting is just red. I just paint a whole bunch of shit that's just, it's red to us, right? Let's say that every single human being dies. And let's say later on, some other alien creatures come by and they're capable of seeing things on the electromagnetic spectrum, but it's not the same wavelengths that we see. If they were there, could you still say that, oh, look, this painting is red? Is that still a red painting if nobody can perceive the color red? If that's just not a color they see? No, it's not a red painting if no one's around to perceive color. Because color requires a, a, a mind in order to, with a brain that can interpret that. that way yeah, well. so color here for me is, I'm using color as a shorthand for, this is an arbitrary boundary that we've drawn around something due to our ability to perceive things as humans. And then we're going to call that a particular thing. And in my mind, color would be the stand-in for art. Art even if we make something with the intention of it having the color red, with nobody to perceive the color red, the question, is this red, is a meaningless question. Because red in and of itself already assumes a, a perceiver that can perceive the color red. And when I look at art, I would view art the same way. Do you think that this is art? It was made with the intention of being art, just like the color red was painted with the intention of it being red. But the reality is, is that the intentional creation of something, if those perceivers disappear, doesn't mean that it maintains those properties past those uh, creators dying because the properties themselves are things that are like only held by or can only be perceived by the creators, much like the color red. That's how I would view it. Yeah, I, I would see those as uh, two different things. Uh, What's the whereas difference? The, it's, it's the fact that it was expressed at all is what makes it art, whereas color literally requires a perceiver, whereas I don't think that art requires a perceiver. Because okay, art then is then in, I, then so, I guess, yeah. The question would be, what is art for you? What's the definition of art for you? I'm not. You don't. I would. I know that's difficult. Th that's fine. I, I would. I would consider art as the expression of uh, creative skill and imagination. It require. It is something becomes art in its creation, in its production, and then after that, it doesn't matter if there's anyone to perceive it. That is. That is a different aspect of the thing that exists outside of the thing itself. If you make something as art and you don't tell anyone and no one ever figures out and you lock it in a box and you throw it into space and no one ever finds it, it's still art. That thing was an expression of someone who created it. Hmm. Okay. I don't want to, I can argue more if anybody wants. Or I don't Go for it. Sure. Why not? I'm curious. I'm curious if the rabbit hole up goes to further. you, up to you. Here we um, are. So I would agree with you that the creation of a particular thing that when it was created, that it was art when it was created, but for it to maintain that status, I think it still necessarily needs to be perceived. I think that the only statements you could make about it would be with relationship, to, it, it, they, they would have to be temporal statements. Like there's a thing floating in space, is it art? Well, I don't know, it was art. When it was created, it was art. And when there were people around to consider it as such, it was art. But now that those original perceivers are gone and the, orig the original creator is gone, I can only make statements about it in relation to the past. But presently, I can't say that it's art because there's nobody there to perceive it as such. In fact, the entire concept of art 
with, with minds disappearing from the universe would disappear, would no longer be a concept that exists independent of humans. Or I guess like another I, question would be like, is do you think if no humans were ever in existence, do you think art would ever be in existence? Uh, eventually, yes. If there were no, what do you think insects create art? Like, could part of no? I don't think I don't think insects are sufficiently complex enough to express themselves in that kind of way. Um, I think eventually brains would come about that would be able to express themselves in the way that would be sufficient to make art. But even if humans didn't exist, it could happen. Like, I think a sufficiently advanced machine could be able to express itself uh, mm -hmm. personally. But even if think... there were no humans, uh, mm -hmm. I think it would eventually happen. Do you think that if a tree falls in a forest and nobody is around to hear it, do you think that the tree makes a sound? Yes. Why? Because sound waves are physical things that exist in the universe. I'm not asking if it creates sound waves. I'm asking if it makes a sound. Well, that's what... It's not, and that's the difference, right? Sound is the human perception of those sound waves, but it's definitely a different experience than just the description of the sound waves themselves, right? I think that's the difference. The experience of sound is unique rather than just the vibration of molecules next to each other in the air or through some other medium. All right, then I, then I would agree. It, it, if, if sound is just what is perceived by things mm -hmm. and sound waves are different, then I would agree it doesn't make a sound, but it makes sound waves. Sure, and I think my... And I think that would be the argument that I would use for art. So somebody would say, like, is there, like, what's in this box? And I would say, well, it's a collection of matter. I mean, we would define it as, like, a painting, or we would define it as art. But, like, those are all human concepts that are part of our perception and the relationships that we have with, with matter. But absent humans, sounds don't exist because sounds are things that are perceived by humans the same way that art well, doesn't exist because art is perceived by humans. If, if sound is defined as a vibration that propagates as an acoustic wave... That's a acoustic acoustic wave, in in that definition, then it would make a sound. Um, it it would it would, I guess the the interesting question is that like it does a physical thing, but I think that there is a difference between a physical thing existing and the qualia of the experience of that physical thing. I think those are two different things. I think they're different as well. And I think mm -hmm. that's what allows art to exist and keep existing after its creation as art, mm -hmm. even if there's no one to identify it or to perceive it. But you still think that the color red will disappear if people can't see that color. Yeah, because that thing, that's because color literally is a brain's interpretation of wavelengths of light. Why is art not though? Because art is art, not because of how it's perceived, but in an element of its creation. That's the difference. By creating art with an intention or with some element of your personality to express yourself, that's what makes it art. Color is something that is literally defined by its perception. You have to perceive that wavelength as a concept. That's what the color is. I'm trying to think of other analogies that I could use. Um, if you if we want to go with a video uh -huh. and you just whenever oh, it yeah, comes sure. to you shoot it my way or ours we could talk talk about it because we'll we plan on being here for a long time so uh -huh. out of curiosity in terms of characterization I guess this would be more so to rags if we mm -hmm. were all to be wiped out uh, would you say Pluto is a planet? Uh, that's I guess Pluto is a category of celestial body. Nothing would change about Pluto, but would it be a planet? Well, you um, have to say yes. If you think art exists, planets and other like groupings of matter must well, exist. I'm assuming Rags knows where I'm no, going that's, with this. No, that, that's... I think that's something that... Would it still be a planet? Also, chat, chill out. This is going to be a slow burn EFAP, okay? You're all going nuts. Um, <laughs> As opposed to what the normal EFAPs you guys do, where you're going we, in like we, thirty minutes, or this is, yeah, they can be faster paced. <laughs> We've had short four hour long EFAPs before. Yeah, I don't know. Because of course, I'm thinking about the fact that if uh, if we all got wiped out at a particular base of a moment in time, it would change whether or not we. I assume whether or not you would say Pluto remains a planet, because technically speaking, it it gets because it it's not a planet now. Correct. Oh, actually. I, fuck, can I ask? Here, here's another example, actually, on that train of thought. Yeah, if sure. I show you a video game, okay? Okay. And then all of humankind disappears, is that thing that exists still a game? 
like tic tac toe, we'll say. I let's say that I draw. I might not know I'm based using. off because I don't know how I would truly consider what makes something a game. I I assume that it would still be a game even if there's no one to play it. Well, I guess God. what does that mean though, right? Like if you have a game that has a set of rules, and I'm, what does that mean if there's nobody there to perceive those? So rules, let me. You know, so like so let me make a distinction. In a video game, I would probably say yes, but something like a chessboard or a checkerboard, I guess they're the same thing, aren't they? Yeah, they they, are. they would be, they would not be games. But I think the video game would be a game because all of its rules are baked in in a hard sense to the like its coding. But I don't think that a checkerboard, like for instance for chess or checkers, I don't think that would be a game anymore. Because it's not baked into I don't know. I don't I legitimately don't know. I do not it's, know. It's I'd tough. have to think about it. <laughs> these yeah. are not things I think about often. I don't yeah, think these I, are well, things many you know, people think about are, often. Maybe maybe the video will elucidate. Well I do it's, uh, it's, Oh my like, god. <laughs> That's why I hope it was saying, like, this has been argued forever. I just find it amusing that, that there's so many people who are like, I have the correct well, answer. It's like, an hour. calm down. There's four of us. Exactly. I find it all very interesting. Because the, the, the thing with the whole, uh, the Pluto question is what makes me think about how uh, humans evolve over time to, you know, maybe make their categorizations more accurate or just create new ones to define things that they've come up with. My standing on this is, is art meaning meaningless? We kind of went over it already. Is that it, it's like no because you've already said art, so it's too late. You you've uh, you've already entered into the human framework. Um, mm -hmm. Meanwhile, like it's, it's someone made us from that. It's like well, wait, what, what what does that mean? What does it mean to not have entered into the human framework? Then it's like well, it's the you know what framework do you enter into when you say Pluto remains a planet or not when everyone's gone? It's like well, it's going to now be restricted to a timeline or a, a date, which gets even more weird and complicated. And it sort of reveals, yeah. I think, the truth, which is the well, humans can be kind of arbitrary in everything that they do once you broaden it as far out as literally the universe. We've, yeah. uh, not arbitrary, but subjective, I would say. Right? Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah. So, for us, it's not arbitrary. It means a lot, but it's just it's very subjective to the human experience. Yeah? And, and uh, it, they, they could have ended up in all kinds of different ways. So when you, like, um, you know, does Pluto remain a planet when no one's there to perceive it? It's like, well, it depends on what we last said it was. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that doesn't sound... Very definitive, and so it just it, um, I'm more comfortable in saying that um, all the categories humans come up with, we we all enter into. A, a, I'm not sure if it would be considered an axiom, but that's kind of where I'm at with the, how I judge mostly everything. It's like we all we all sign the contract on our way in, for the conversations. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I yeah. think most challenging questions um, that it, that the reason why a lot of uh, a lot of questions are very challenging is because they're deceptive. That as soon as you've uttered a question, there's already so much baked into the fact that we're even using language that questions can become deceptively complicated. So like the question of like, what is it like after death? Well, it's like the concept of death implies that there's nobody there to consider. And when you ask, what is it like? The assumption by asking what it's like is there's something there to know what it is like to be something. And so the question you're actually asking is, if there's nothing there to perceive what it's like to be something, then what would that nothing perceive when nothing can't perceive, right? So like the questions themselves seem like, oh my God, this is like, it's so difficult to think about it. And the reason why is because the question itself is already like bringing in so much baggage that it makes it really, really hard to even consider what's being asked. Sorry, yeah. yeah just tell okay. them it's just death is just like it was before you were born. That's exactly that's the, the most te the, yeah that's the answer I found most satisfying, which is not even necessarily an answer, but it is it is kinda you'll get satisfaction out of that I think most than any other answer. But well, I guess religious people wouldn't, but that's that's a whole other thing. I am more than happy to start this video. Let's do it. If everyone else is anyone let's else, let's do it. Else? Sure, go for it. Sure. Let's let's learn if art's meaningless. Woohoo! I am the portrait of Madame X by John it. Singer Sargent. I was first exhibited in 1884 and I caused quite a stir in Paris because although my artist intended for me to be a study in light and shade, audiences and critics thought I was trying to be sexually provocative. So which is it? What does the artwork mean? And funnily enough, uh, that's actually the, right, the so. tear up question, because the first one we've done, I think we're fine now on the first one. What is art? And then does art mean stuff? If we've already said it's baked in, that it would. Is there a correct meaning, incorrect meaning, or is there anything close to those would be the next thing? Um, 
in the sense of this example here where the artist had and we have to assume that the artist is being honest which it would i think it's all right if we do that for this if we assume the artist is being honest about their intentions then that was i think all we could say is that was the meaning they were trying to get across and someone accusing them otherwise well i guess it's I guess it's them trying to insist they know the mind of the artist better than the artist does. So if they say, if, if, if that's what they pull from it, that's fine. But to make a statement of this is what you were trying to do with oh, it. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. That would be, that would be like, I'm assuming, oh, well, yeah, because if, if one was to say, I know what you were doing and you've been lying, I suppose there are scenarios where that could be true, right? You could prove that the, the artist lied about what their intentions were. You can maybe find, you know, <laughs> leaked DMs. Proof, but... uh, Pretty close, depending on the, uh, you know, depending on the individual Right, you can never but it's get that inside their actual between, mind or anything. Um, yeah, it's okay to say, this is what it means to me, or this is what I think it means, and this is what you meant when you created it. Oh, and, and might because I know be my, your mind better than you do. I mean, might these be two, two totally different questions? Like, maybe they're not the same question. What did the artist intend versus what did the audience perceive? Oh yeah, you these know, are like, two different things, different yeah. Questions. They like often the align, but they often don't. Well, and then can we, if we can throw a monkey wrench of just soundness of mind, is that necessary before taking any perception uh, seriously? Um, if I, like the artist yeah, has to be of sound mind to... Just, well, the, the audience too. What? what about the audience, yeah. And what, what well, even if you're not of sound... To some people at a certain point in time, and then you use your time machine that totally exists to go back in time and show it to a different group of people in a different country at a different time. Yeah, if you, if you change observers, you might get different, you know, perceptions of whatever it is they're observing. You almost certainly will, right? Hey, so Destiny, kind of, I mean, absolutely, you believe yeah. in death of the author? God, Hello? Why is the here? <laughs> he's thinking about it, I'm sure. Were you asking Destiny. me, or were you asking the other guy? No, we, I already know these, th th that's three yeah. answers, I was asking your answer. Oh, um... Art is complicated, okay? I'm not going to give you one answer on everything. In a way, death of the author is true. That, like, if I grow up and let's say that there was, like, a special, like, um, series of letters that my grandfather always drew and they meant a lot to me. And every time he drew them, it just was a way of him expressing love for me. And he drew them on trees in the forest where we grew up. He arranged flowers in these patterns and it meant it was like very special to me. And let's say that I grew up, I integrate into society and I want to create movies and I want to have my characters share like these special combinations of letters and the special combinations of letters like ends up being the N word, right? Well, I can share that message with society, but like, obviously I can't share things in a vacuum. It's going to sit within the greater context of society and it's going to be perceived as such. So to some extent, when an author releases his art into society, he's lost control of that art and he has to be aware of how a society is going to perceive it. Like that is necessarily true. However, like part of the perception of the art could be learning the intention of the artist. So it's a little bit more complicated, right? It's so like the stupid response is saying like, well, only the intention matters. If you're a little bit smarter, you'll say, well, actually intention is irrelevant. It has to be always perceived within a certain society. But then like on the next level, you could say, sure, a society could perceive something within the context of the society itself. But part of that context could be understanding the intention of the author is what I would say. But basically Our position is, I would say, like in terms yeah, of we, the author, somewhere in the middle. Wait, wait what? Yeah, we Death think that, go for it, Fringy. Oh, just that, that it's, um, it's, it's to, to some extent, uh, your intention is not going to be factored into it, but to some extent it will be, or it mm -hmm. might be. Could it's be, it's yeah. somewhere in the middle. It's, all, it's like, usually it, case it, by case. Um, oftentimes I, I will expect the author to have not necessarily the most insight, but more than likely the most insight. Um, but sometimes they can I, fucking destroy their own work, uh, mm -hmm. unfortunately. You have to sort of take it piece by piece, uh, case by case. I, uh, we, we, our previous EFAB, we were talking with our guest about this, and I was saying that I would love to hear what Tolkien has to say about what his work means in Lord of the Rings. I would never want to hear any more from Michael Waldron about what he meant when he wrote Loki or Doc Strange 2. I'm more than happy to never hear that. So, like, what's the difference? It's like, well, it's just the level of insight I believe I will get from these sources, even though they're both the author. Mm -hmm. um, well, that, I guess that stems from, like, how much do you think that what they intended to do was achieved, maybe? Like, well, did they create something pretty close to what they wanted it to be versus somebody who unwittingly created something terrible that doesn't realize it. And if there's like a really good 
piece of work, and then the author tells uh, everybody in the world, like, by the way, you see this, 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 that no one could possibly have known. This actually represents, like, this big old thing that happened in my life. And we would all share that fun fact with each other, uh, you know, depending on how interesting it is, and uh, probably be interested by it. Meanwhile, if it's, like, a really shitty piece of work that everyone hates, and then the, the author's like, oh, but, you know, and, then, like, the thing you were suggesting, Desi, everyone would be like, I do not care. What your thing mm -hmm. is is horrible, that sort of thing. Um... Which, I don't know, that's kind of interesting to think yeah. about how it ends up. But... I think there's also, like, don't lock yourself into one way to read art, too. Like, you're depriving yourself of a lot. Like, I think there are times where you can know fully the intention of an artist, and you can actually perceive something in a totally different way, and still get, like, really cool meaning out of it, and, like, really cool things that come out of it. Like, uh, there's the joke, I say half joke or whatever, of uh, people perceiving, like, uh, Top Gun as being, like, a thing about, like, being a closeted gay man, or, like, <laughs> Matrix as being, uh, like, a and story Elgory. about, like, trans There people. were a lot of yeah. cockpits in that movie. Uh, yeah, sure, yeah. And, like, I don't think it was the intention of either, like, creator of these pieces for it to be an allegory for, like, being trans or being gay or whatever. Um, but you could still read it as such, and you can still get meaning out of it in, in doing that. So, so, yeah, I think there's tons of different ways, yeah. Now I feel like that opens it up. Can we lock it down at all? Is there ever a time where you would hear someone's assessment of what something means and say, no, that's incorrect? Yes. Um, when it comes to analysis of art, I think that your statements need to be defended. But I think you can defend a lot of different types of statements. There's a lot of different statements you could make that have a lot of different defenses. So if I wanted to say, I think the Matrix is actually an allegory for how um, Factorio is the best game on PC ever. It's like, well, how do you support that statement? Well, um, you know, they live in a computer world and Factorio is a computer game. Well, that's a shitty defense. That applies <laughs> to so many different pieces. Right? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense, right? Yeah. But you can interpret things a lot of ways. It just, it's going to depend on the arguments that you put forth to, to strengthen whatever your thesis is, right? Almost like yeah, a, but I mean, calling uh, doesn't have any basis in reality. I guess ultimately, though, like you would you you always have to make appeals to what is in uh, a piece of art. So, like, what does it mean yeah. to get that wrong? To say, like, uh, yeah, man, okay, like, um, uh, yeah, if yeah, and relate to other things, yeah. Well, so because I was gonna say, uh, maybe this moves it into a different conversation. But obviously, if if Frank says like, oh, I, uh, the meaning I draw to Saving Private Ryan is like a really strong message about the the repercussions of war and the cost of uh, courage and bravery goes into all stuff like that. Meanwhile, I say like, I don't know, just, um, I think it means a lot about like, like just, just, uh, and I try and maybe, maybe more so appeal to personal feelings and what it means to me in terms of like, let's say I'm, this is a very much sound of mind, but if I said like, it's, um, kind of funny, a lot of it, because it's, it's so absurd that the, 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 the movie's about how humans drove themselves into killing each other for no good reason at all. I was laughing throughout it. That's what it means to me. Is that invalid? Um, is it invalid? Um, I mean, it could... When, that one, so there's, there, yeah, that one's more in the middle. Um, I think there's two things. Yeah. You can either put forth an interpretation that other people could vibe with, or you could just say, like, personally, this is how you view it, right? And I think those are going to be two different things. I if think I'm so, trying yeah. to, like... If I'm trying to defend my interpretation, then my the implication is I think you could interpret it as such as well. But if my interpretation of something is incredibly personal, well, then obviously that's just going to work for me, right? Like if I watch a movie and I like, you know, I've always associated the color red with an ex-girlfriend and, and I'm like, this is a romance movie. And they're like, wait, what's a romance movie? And it's like, oh, Kill Bill is. Why? Well, because every time people die, there's like blood gushing out and the color red reminds me of my ex. And so it's a romance movie. Well, okay. That's like personal to you, but you're not gonna be able to convince anybody else of that. That's a dog shit argument, right? Yeah, that almost gets into like definitions of, well, that's just language, right? Uh, it would be appealing to your own like personal definition of maybe genre. I fucking hate genre discussions, but I think that's where we'd be aiming for at that point. Uh, maybe, yeah. Yeah. Um, personal meaning versus what we can all sort of agree was in the thing. Seems to be like, I guess, two conversations you could have at once, but there's probably blurry lines where you have them both at the same time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. there's a really good conversation that directors have sometimes about using music that is external to the actual movie. So, for instance, if you have a movie and you decide to play like a popular song or something or non diegetic song, whatever, music. Um, yeah. Um, that when you play that music, in a way, well, no, because diegetic movies, I think, just refers to whether or not it's occurring in world or it's just playing like over the movie. Yeah. But I'm specifically talking about like, let's say that I want to play a uh, Taking Back Sunday song as part of my movie. Well, as soon as I play that song, I'm losing a lot of control over how the audience feels because somebody in the audience might associate that song with something that's way different than the message I'm trying to sell in the movie, you know? I'm not saying it's good or bad, but that's like a consideration you have to make. Yeah, versus like an original song where you have complete control, exactly. kind of. Mm -hmm. I guess you never have complete control, though, because. 
they could associate the individual sounds in the song with something. Sure. I think you ever do. But you have more control about it, yeah. Yeah. Now, you might be sitting there thinking, well, it's subjective. There's no right or wrong answer. But I am willing to bet that you don't really... When you say it's subjective, there's no right or wrong answer, is that what subjective necessarily means? No, and I hate it when people... <laughs> I was going to say... Yeah. This <laughs> Vox does this all the time. Someone will say, oh, it's arbitrary, it's arbitrary. There's a lot of arbitrary and subjective things. Just because something is subjective, or just because something is arbitrary, doesn't mean there's not a right or wrong answer. Most of the human experience is subjective, but we definitely have strong preferences for different answers within that subjective realm of things, right? Or like the human experience is subjective, but that doesn't mean that like any answer goes for anything else, right? Yeah. You yeah, they... That. It, and plus, when she says, is it sub subjective... To which thing is she asking that? Sure. Which part of that is supposed to be subjective? The fact that what the meaning actually is, what the intention was, what the takeaway was from other people, which part are you referring well, to as being the subjective part? This is the thing. When I saw the name of the video and I saw the length, I was like, no way you cracked this <laughs> in 38 minutes. No way. <laughs> no. There's a big difference between saying that the quality of an artwork is subjective and the meaning is subjective. If you don't like the portrait of Madame X, then fair enough. I guess I'm not to everyone's taste. And I actually think there's crossover with those two conversations in some ways, depending on if you can get two people to agree on what quality means in the same way, kind of, that if you can get them to agree, kind of like we, what we just did with meaning as best we could. If someone was to be able to do that, then you can start. Because, like, I don't know, if you had the two forms of quality, like this is good from the perspective of craftsmanship and you define that specifically versus this is good because it makes me feel good, like mm -hmm. you could have those two separated out, so in the same way. Yeah, you have to get really into the weeds on this. Like you, you can do this when arguing about music. People are like, oh, music is subjective. And it's like, sure, but you can have intelligent conversations comparing piece of art. Like this might be a song that is way more, um, uh, not sophisticated, but complex than this song, which is far more simple. That doesn't make it good or bad, but this song uses more instruments versus this song. This song is louder or has a greater range of whatever. Like there are objectively true statements you can make about art itself, even if the ultimate perception or enjoyment of it is, is somewhat subjective, right? Right. And I suppose when I pose for it, it's more like the portrait of Madame XY. But is it really the case that I can be about anything? If somebody says to you, I just saw Doctor Strange 2, and you go, oh yeah, what's it about? And they say, it's about how love has an everlasting value, even between two people of different social classes on a doomed ocean liner. So funnily enough, with that example, I was thinking, you kind of screwed yourself over because you said what it's about, which isn't necessarily what it means, right? Yeah, something, so when you say that something is about something, you're making a much more direct appeal to it's more the of an is claim, right? Content. Yeah, it is way, about this. Yeah. It's yeah, almost like, like, like you could describe the plot or the, the characters in it, yeah, at least like when we're referring said, to a movie. Like, what is, what is um, like, Indiana Jones about? It's like, well, it's about what happens in the story, I guess, would be like yeah, the clearest. It is not about a tortoise eating there strawberry are, jam. Yeah, there are correct and then that, answers with that one. Well, yeah, you can be correct and incorrect. It'd be like, Indiana Jones stars Peter Parker, also known as Spider-Man. It's like, oh, wait, whoops. Like, you've gotten your references wrong. Like, what you've just said is just not true. Yeah. Like, pretty categorically. And, like, any claims that you make based on that, it's kind of like what it's about is, like, what you need to agree on first before you can even start to talk about what it means or, like, how good or bad well, it is. Well, yeah. Although, again, um, God, fuck. Somebody turned me out of this. I just realized there's so, so many hard questions that are actually just, like, poorly phrased questions. When you ask, what is something about? Mm -hmm. what, what do you mean by about? Are yeah. you asking like for very fundamental descriptive facts or do you mean like, what is the overall theme or meaning? Like that question requires expansion. It's the same. Yeah. I think it was um, the same for like when she said, what, what does it mean versus what it's, what is its quality? Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like those questions have a lot of overlap if you're not very clear on what exactly you mean by meaning. Yeah. Is the quality <laughs> exactly. yeah. meaning? Is there a mean? yeah. first question, which would be what is meaning? <laughs> That's probably where, exactly. or what is art? You got to get those out of the way. What is art and what is meaning? And once See, we figure those out, we can agree. We can move on from there. We only took, yeah. what, half an hour? You know, you can do it, sort of. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, like, I make fun of like philosophers for legitimately just having dog shit writing skills because I think a lot of them do write poorly. Um, but like part of the reason for that is because you have to be, when you're defining terms, you have to be so, 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 so careful because mm -hmm. it's so easy to like not be ultra crystal, crystal clear in what you're saying that you get like lost in this kind of dumb shit, yeah. You'd be like, no, that's Titanic. It definitely that could be Titanic. 
Mm-hmm. Um, Definitely well, seen yeah. many others, I suppose, yeah. right? Probably. Well, yeah, you've, uh, already, you've already assigned it to the thing. You could be wrong. They could be. They could be a completely different thing. The other disaster be, uh, ship film was Poseidon, right? Did anyone ever see those yeah. ones? Yeah, I terrible. saw the original. I haven't. It's probably a romance. I saw the original. On that. I haven't seen a remake. Poseidon was part of the era that I dislike, where there was no consideration for people who were secondary characters. If you were secondary, nobody cared what happened to you. It's Aww. Gordon. <laughs> I didn't have a lot of Gordons. I remember that. Yeah, but people just suffering and knowing the, the story doesn't care about them sort of thing. Nobody cares. Yeah, nobody cares. They just move on. It's like, well, our main characters are cool, so who cares about this guy who helped you, who helped you escape, and then you oh, just Oh, by the die. way, you know, my version of your, um, like, I've already forgotten the name. My brain refuses to remember the name. Gordon, you said, right? Yeah, Gordon. Yeah, from fuck. It's my, my Gordon is the one from Jurassic Park Lost World, right? I've told you about him yeah. before. I will never forgive the film for that. He, that actor, I found out today, he's the voice of Odin in Ragnarok, where he's going to be in, in really? God of War Ragnarok. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> what are the odds? Cool. Okay. Feels oh. coincidental. Probably isn't, but yeah. Seems like you can look at a work of art, think you know what it's about, and be wrong. Which means the meaning, at least, is not subjective. Well, that's what, wait. That is a different thing. Uh, yeah, just because you can be wrong about something doesn't mean that it's not subjective, right? Well, yeah, because you could be wrong, but there could be plenty of like arguments that somebody could make for totally different conclusions about what it means. Just because you got it wrong doesn't mean that there's like a absolute set, yeah, it, rigid, one answer to the question of what it means. It's almost like there's a broad spectrum of what you could say is what you got from it but it's still in a box as in there are still limitations on the totality of the things yeah. you can say uh because you you can't just go out like well, so far outside there's nothing to support it at all we've talked, about the, uh, the, we've talked about colors right maybe it's like that there is the color spectrum and there is the visible color spectrum which is like the boundary for i guess correctness vaguely and once you get too far away from like what is in the story where like all of your references to what happens in it or who the characters are, yeah. what they say to each other is so wrong that like it basically becomes impossible for you to slot into the correct conclusions, the many correct or, or like, you know, varying correct claims you can make about a story. What's funny about that is that you could have a couple of people be like, so Doctor Strange 2 was about love transcending the multiverse, and someone else be like, No, 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 it was about trying to escape the worst version of yourself. That like that's what life is. And someone else goes, well, no. It's about that you should never think of like the best vision of your life in some of the multiverse. You should always think about what you have and how thankful you should be for it. And all three of those would be correct, I think. Well, I, I think this should be exclusive either. They could, yeah. they could be about all of them. It's not like this is a like a dichotomous proposition yeah. where it has to be one thing or the other. But if you say and that then... Interstellar is like about like the relationship between like um, like friends in school and like a feeling of like loss and moving on when you like move from high school to college or big stages in life, it's going to be pretty hard to defend. Yeah, that you'd be like, what are you referencing right? with that? <laughs> that yeah. is a hard difficult. to defend movie, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ooh. so just because you can be wrong about something does not imply that a thing. Um, yeah. I feel like you could probably express this with really basic like prop logic. I, she's, I hate this person. So. <laughs> well, well, the... What's what's baked in? Like, we don't even say it because it's so baked into it. But when someone says what this art means, it's generally they're, they're saying to me, um, like well, yeah, when no we really. say is a is a like is a certain I don't know our that is is our vegetables good? Like, yeah, for for humans generally, yeah, they are. You know, it, it's got that assumption that's kind of built into the statement that you're making. But since meaning is pulled from a thing based on individuals, you have to you have to add more to that statement for me to know. True. We're also almost entering the language problem again there as well because of uh it's like when when you guys were talking about about it's like my brain immediately went to what what happens in the film meanwhile plenty of people will be like as destiny said they'll go to what the theme was or something like that so you have to be more clear because i actually think like if i was to guess what do you think the majority responds to when you say what is a film about do you think people would more likely go for theme or they would more likely go for a, a plot summary it's I think they'd so, go for I think, plot I don't know. I think, I think most people would go for it'd be like 80 yeah. 20. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I think, think so. About it. Or maybe there might be some 90. movies where people there might be some movies where people predominantly would talk about fame, but there's probably the exceptions. Yeah, no, I think and it depends on kind of what circles you're running in, right? I think that if Philosophy 2 were talking to like H Bomber guy and asked what a film is about, they're almost uh -huh. exclusively only ever talking about themes. 
Pro oh yeah, probably depends on where you're introduced to it as well. Like if you were to ask people, what is 1984 about? Nobody's probably actually, I don't even know how many people read the book, but nobody's gonna give you a plot summary. Okay. They're gonna say 1984 is about right. Big Brother. I like it depends right? on what the story is. If it's like some really culturally important story um, that like has spun off into, well, maybe not spun off. It's just like, yeah, like so culturally significant in terms of how it informs people's perception about a bunch of things in the world. Maybe it like, yeah, at that point, People are just going to gravitate to its impact more so than what even happened in the story. Yeah, I is... wonder if you take uh, 1984 as a good example, because I wonder if the people who haven't read it and the people who have read it would give one would focus on the plot and the other would focus on like the message more. Uh -huh. I, I think because um, a lot of people, so... they don't know the plot. Most people haven't read that book. I bet a lot of people have heard of the book and they know the general concept of what it's trying to say. So that's what they would go to because they don't even know the plot at all. Yeah the meaning, at least, is not subjective. So assuming artworks do have objective meaning... That is a leap. Do we? Yeah. <laughs> that is, we, are, we are not Wait, two minutes in. I was gonna say, I don't know how we got here already. I'll play it again. Just... The meaning, at least, is not subjective. So assuming artworks do have objective meaning... It's, it's just, it's such a like, oh, okay. I feel like we skipped the video there. Because I, um, I think she, she's gotten this from how you can say someone is wrong about what a film is about, therefore there must be objective. And it's like, oh, I feel like we've, there's so many steps we didn't do there, oh, but. One, one, one minute and 39 seconds in, we have the conclusion. Art is objectively, it has an objective. <laughs> to be fair, she, she's phrased it as a question. Uh, assuming. Because of yeah, course, assuming. I don't believe Abigail Thorne would say art or meaning is objective. Uh, but she's well, presenting. Not. I'd hope not. <laughs> How do we find out what the meaning is? If I don't get it, how do I get it? All right then. Okay. If you enjoyed today's episode and you want to help me make more free educational material, <laughs> educational. Come on now. <laughs> consider signing up at Patreon.com/PhilosophyTube and pledging a couple of dollars a month to keep the show. Going. Why can't I just donate one? Oh. Very rare. It's got to be Stephane Molyneux reference. I appreciate it. Is that a Wait, was that a, oh, is that a Stephen Molyneux reference? Oh, fuck. Never mind. I thought it was. Oh, look. There we go. We got intar intention versus subject. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, my God. We did it. Right oh there. Oh, my God. Oh, God. These paintings are some of the most famous examples of modern art in the world. And are I you have digitally... absolutely no idea what they mean. Is she doing something with her voice here? To make what, it sound like big, she's in a big, open, right? echoey space? I think yeah, it's just probably echoing. like whispering and everything. Well, they should probably added reverb in post. Right? Uh -huh. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how you know what? What do we think the meaning of these paintings okay. are? Why we, well, why because we, because we've both got we got the same origin story. I'm pretty sure we both tell it every once in a while. It's, uh, you must convince um, me that art is shit and it'll be torn down. My, it was, my origin story is I went to an art gallery and it was like for a school trip, and they brought us to like, I I. It was either a blank canvas or it was just red, uh, like the example that we had. And we had to sit there and try to talk about what it meant. And I was just sitting there and I had no idea what I was supposed to say or make of any of this. Thanks. Well, that's, yeah, we're going to. You walk in and you're like, did we need a whole room for this? <laughs> Well, well, she'll explain what these ones are, but I, I was going to say, my one, um, it, th at this point, because I used to tell it as sort of just like a funny story, but I'm starting to think it was like fucking formative for me. It was, because uh, it, was, it was early on in school years, and we went to the Tate Modern in, um, in London as a school trip thing. And yeah, there was a room filled with, it was similar to this. It was splashes, big red splashes onto loads of these huge canvases. And um, the two teachers that had taken us, um, I even remember their names, but uh, one of them was was, uh, was a they? lady who was super friendly, super super awesome, super encouraging. She wasn't great at art, but she was just so she was very into the fun side of things and loved this oh, room. Good for her. Uh, good the for other her. one, the guy, he was exceptional at art. Uh, always impressed everybody, everything he did. But he was a lot more harsh with every, every, all the students, right? Like if they fucked up, he'd be like, "This is wrong. You need to do this. You need to do this. You need to do this." He went into the room and immediately left, and I was like, "Wait, wait, wait! Like, what, what's, what? What am I supposed to do with all this?" And he was just like, "You look at it, it. and then you think about stuff, I guess." And I was just like, 
<laughs> he's so, my new favorite person. Yeah, and that's the thing. I um, uh, I ended up like I did look at each of them, but I was just like, mm. and then I tried to find out where he was, and he'd gone up to like uh, Renaissance paintings and stuff, and I was just like, oh shit, these look amazing. Like, and I was staring at them for ages. Yeah, you know? fuck the red spots, man. I'm looking at this Hieronymus Bosch. And then we had, um, we got these little, like, papers at the end where it's just, like, describe your feelings about these papers. And I was like, it's a big red splash. And they're like, that's what it is. That's not how you felt. And I was like, I, I don't... I felt like it was a big red <laughs> splash. <laughs> Alright, leave me alone now, please. Yeah, please Go leave me alone. Like, um, because I should have called in sick. it's not just that, um... Because I know that anyone out there would be like, oh, you can't just... Like, like, how stifled are you? Just look at it. And just try to feel... And I'll be like, yeah, but it's, it's not even just that. It's the whatever I am feeling. I don't even know that the paintings earned it. You know, it's it's, it's more so work as the artist done to evoke feelings rather than me doing all the legwork on that. Well, behalf. rather than what yeah. my day has been so far, who I'm with, how I am, right. and how hungry I am, how tired I am, what I what I was thinking about just now, what did I watch last night. Like, it, maybe that's the point. That's the point. <laughs> yeah. Is good. it really a good <laughs> painting if I could do it? I, well, I, so that's where we get into a, a complicated discussion as well. How much of like what we talk about when it comes to art and its meaning should stem from, I guess, like is art like the skill? I was expression paired with skill. Um, well, I I was I was just joking, but um, I guess I mean I wouldn't not call these red fucking boxes. No, I wouldn't call them art. You wouldn't. I, I, sorry, I wouldn't not call them art. Right. Sorry, it, it is art. It's just boring art that I have no interest. <laughs> well, in. I think. I am very tempted to call it shitty, but I probably oh, wouldn't if man. we were in conversations that were incredibly like specific and detailed. And the the irony there is that I think most oh, people I in the world. Oh, I thought you were going to say if the artist was in the room, you wouldn't call it. That. Um, yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, this is great, man. I would. I would. I would do it just to get them you know, to defend this. What I would like I'd be to like, see this is, is shit, mate. I'd want to see the creation of them, and if it's as simple as I imagine it is, that would be interesting okay. to see. They're called the secret. Destiny, what are, what are Look these at that. to you? <laughs> Come on! <laughs> oh, fuck off. When you look at this, what does it mean to you? I need to know. Um, right now, it just looks it's fucking stupid. It would depend on how <laughs> it was and the mood I was in. You know? By the way, this is a meme format for sure. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. The framing is pretty perfect, yeah. Hold on, I'll be back one second. Mm -hmm. so good, the good thing there's a security camera there, so someone doesn't fuck up the red box. I, well, I mean, they've, they've got the line there to make sure that you don't go. Mess yeah, don't with get it. close. Don't to ruin the red, the red box. It, I, it, it is know. an endless it's void. Just, it will swallow you. Do not touch. I the don't thing. know. Like when you go to an art gallery, I don't know. I'm just like when I look at these amazing like paintings that were painted like 500 years ago with way fewer like access to the resources that are available now to paint something similar. If, and I see uh, this. If all of us were told to stand in front of it and just 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 experience it, I would probably start giggling because I just feel like this feels I like shit up. only humans are fucking capable of convincing oh, yes, themselves. The hues, this is like a super meaningful thing the to do. Rage of the artist as they drew this picture. It's a in it, they, they are there is a tempest <laughs> inside the artist. Uh, the red. Oh, maybe the anger. I guess. Mm. Well, you know what? Why don't we actually try like? <laughs> For real, to uh, to oh, figure out. Do, it's supposed to represent right the vast nothingness of pain. It <laughs> represents. Okay. The, it the represents that mm. they the the artist was very upset and angsty, but it's not a bright. It's red, but it's Man, not bright red. So they're not like. Like I, need I know, all right? You could Somebody fit else like could have ten a painting good up things there, in there, but you need all this space for your one. Yeah, look at him hogging up all that real estate. Yep. Oh, and and imagine it. you were the artist that like did this incredibly detailed, like super long landscape, this enormous and beautiful just just portion of earth, it's huge. Alive, and you both you know. submit, and this one is like number one at the gallery, yours is number two. You're like, okay, <laughs> that's fine, mm, that's, right. fine. Guess, that's fine, that's fine. You gotta yeah, take yeah. it on the chin, you know. Yeah, you do, because that's just the reality of but art. Also, like. What does it mean? This is, this is a room filled with painting like this. You can see the one behind her just off on the right. And then there were other ones as well on the walls. It's a whole room filled with paintings like this. Maybe that's how I would, would rationalize my experience here. I'd be like, I'm going to rate them in terms of funniness. This one is number one. There's nothing beating it. <laughs> it's great. This is a comedy. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> like, what, what is this painting comedy? It's like, but I mean, I guess that's the thing, though. How much does it factor into the meaning of this art if I said that to the artist and they disagreed with me? They're like, it's not meant to be funny. It's like, welp, like it or not. Uh, <laughs> well, got a good chuckle out I, of me. I'd admit, anyone who's drawing You'll shit like this, this red or rather, pill, then. anyone who's painting shit like this should surely be on team. You can interpret it as you wish, you know? You would think so, because otherwise... Could you imagine having, like, a rigid meaning? Because there's so little to pull from it that you, like, what can you pull from it as its, like, core meaning? I guess what... This I'm sucks. trying to be as good pay faith as possible. It's like, what can you pull from it? It's like... <laughs> well, look, at least We're try supposed to be right. Whoever, whoever drew this is an asshole. Hey, look, all right. Maybe, maybe there is something here that I'm not seeing. Maybe you it's know? maybe there it's hung on the wall the wrong here. way. The painting's on the back. They they put it on backwards. Oh, the real painting's on the other down. side. What what if like? Could you imagine if 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 like they flipped it upside down in a, a new exhibition? Everyone's like, oh, this changes every. See, right. So <laughs> like, that's a, that's like a skip for. A well, it is kind of a skit because it's kind of that's kind of how I feel about this. Like in terms of trying to have a conversation, it feels like we're performing. We're lapping. Like we're doing mm. a little play where we're sort of like pretending that we understand what this means. When in reality, we all kind of recognize it's just a big red canvas. And that's all we're looking at. You mentioned how but big it was. Like, it's literally too big to flip it into portrait orientation. Um, in this you room, fit it's it. too big. You yeah. destroy the roof or destroy the canvas. It I would guess. just it goes straight through the roof as they turned it. Its yeah, sheer artistic presence off. would cut through. Oh the well, I guess no. I guess you wait. No, we're being stupid. You could just put it on its flat and then spin Angle it around it, and then <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> Let's just and put it on the floor and pretend flat. it's a rug so people can walk all over it. I think people it's might fall for that. That would become its own art piece. See, it this would. is how firm the pain is. Ooh, yeah. Do you guys uh, um, yeah. know about like interactive, interactive art? Yeah, yeah. I was yeah, gonna say because like yeah. the the sort of motion of everyone walking across it eventually makes it interesting to look at. Which I'm not even. I actually would defend that versus that's this an <laughs> like, experiment for sure. Yeah, that's an interesting experiment. Uh, but yeah, no. To to what you were just saying, Frank, it does feel like uh, that's what humanity did eventually this is the lowest common denominator where we tricked ourselves into sort of everyone is telling each other that this is very meaningful right right and everyone's just sort of you want to get inside everyone's heads and uh no they perceive the color they conclude that's all that's there but now i'm just going to go into deep thought like you're in a deprivation tank sort of thing and you just start thinking about stuff and then you apply whatever that is to this like this did it i guess well, that, it's yeah i guess that works I guess that's where it starts to what what do we say about like the meaning of art in terms of what it evokes from you to if if like we start to consider you know how are you feeling before you showed up today what's on your mind at the moment um and you mentioned it before like even even if we got like what did you eat for breakfast like how many of these things will filter into the way that you perceive it and if so how much of that should be attributable to the art itself rather well, than way. just the natural experience of life I kind of appreciate that we got this one specifically because I actually, even with the simpler, you know, if it was like a stick man with a smiley face, I would, I would actually probably defend that quite a bit compared to this, because I'd be like, I probably would. Too. Yeah. There may be a lot of dimensions to be able to draw from it, but this is about as simple as this. Is this the lowest? I know you can what a stick get? person generally represents. That's already a huge step forward. I suppose a white canvas well, would be on. absolute zero, right? Or at least close well, to Well, it would be better if it was a white canvas because there would be the opportunity to, for someone to paint over it like an actual piece of art, you know? Well, you could... I mean, it's in a way, it's like, this is 333 by John Cage in art form almost, right? What? I know, I know well, that song. I, I know that quote-unquote song. There's, oh, a, there's a song that a guy called John Cage makes where you just, you sit in an auditorium being silent for three minutes and 33 seconds. I think the piano player sits down, he lifts the... Oh, um, yeah. yeah and he just sits there and the yeah. Or it might be four minutes and 33 seconds, I don't remember. But um, you see, he lifts it, he sits there, you wait, and then he closes the piano to let you know that the song is done. And the song is the experience that you have sitting there listening to everybody around you, right? That would be the equivalent, yeah. I guess. I remember, I remember in grade school, they did that. And it was like, we're going to listen to the song. And I was just sitting there in my chair. I was like, this You think about video games, wouldn't you? Yeah. So, I don't think about anything else. That can be interesting for sure, and there's something to be spoken about there. Um, I guess I I wonder like when we what how, what do we compare for what four thirty three to I don't know like Moonlight Sonata or something like or uh, just any any number of uh, songs in terms of comparing like what they're trying to offer you 
it seems like they they're so different that um it'd be hard to compare them you know like how do you compare this to like some elaborate baroque painting what kind of comparison could you ever make in terms of like how they try to evoke meaning from somebody when one of them has things that are much more readily identifiable and easy to latch onto compared to you know this where like you're doing so much of the work uh-huh. and the <clears throat> I brought it up before, but I, I just can't resist saying it. That in, I think it was Venice. My memory's falling apart at this point. There was a series of rooms, and then in the corner, there was a fire extinguisher, and people were standing looking at it. And it was not a piece, but it is in the place it is to be viewed. So it beca- that's going to bring us back to the whole definitions thing, right? Because to all the people viewing it, they're like, of course, this is an art piece. But then uh, it would just be like, well, I wonder if it would change their mind if they found out it was just a fire extinguisher put there for the utility of extinguishing fires in emergencies. I don't know, like it, because they would, they would do the post. I mean, when the, you say when you say something like that, that in and of itself is an interesting question, right? Yeah, this is the this is the thing. It's funny, but simultaneously, it's like the fact that it's getting everyone to perceive differently because they believe it is here to be uh, yeah, an influence that's... into your perception beyond just being a fire <laughs> extinguisher. Yeah, it's like, that's kind of, like, that you've entered into this place, and by being in this place, like an art gallery, it's just changed the way that you're going to view everything that you see in here. Yeah. Because you know where you are, and you know what that means, compared to if you're just out in the open. Well, like, that's why I was... Walking around in some place else. I was saying, I feel like this has pushed it to the absolute limit, and, uh... Yes. I suppose, <laughs> fine. Because this is the thing, you know, if, if, if thousands of people enjoy this, I was like, yeah, okay, fine, go for it, sure. Well, I guess we're going to find out what Abigail... Uh, thinks about yes. this particular painting. They were painted in the 1950s by American artist Mark Rothko. Originally, he was commissioned to make them for an upscale That looks like the, uh, the pause <laughs> the EVAP logo. That is inspired by us, for sure. In New York. Yeah. But when he actually visited the place, he changed his mind and gave the money back. The paintings are still displayed in accordance with his intentions. Close to the ground. Yeah, you shouldn't have been paid. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> Ooh, you're being too mean. If, I know, I'm being mean. You know how it works. If people want to pay for it, they'll pay for it. Is it. Yeah. Which, that's their own decision to make, okay. <laughs> yeah, Freedom, it's, it's, right? It's, you're American. It's, we're just having fun. We're having fun here. We're, we're just having fun. In a fun small with room squares. with off-white walls in low, even lighting. Rothko said he wanted audiences to feel trapped. Which is funny because okay. the first thing that came to my mind seeing this one was window. Which, oh, uh, I was thinking about the number zero. I just think oh, I look at what, zero. and isn't yeah. that interesting? It is. Isn't that I, interesting? To be fair, I think at this least one's... this one has a fucking shape on it. I was going to say, this one's more interesting than the other one. I, I'm just saying. It is. Objectively, yeah, objectively, objectively more interesting. I don't think you can say that. I just did, Fringy. Objectively, I just I know said, you did, Fringy, but... get, oh, get okay. wrecked, defeated. Yeah. Wow. Art hater. If I want to get it, maybe those facts are a clue. If somebody tells me Roth. When you say get it, do you mean understand what the artist meant I, I by it so, or what yeah. they were trying to say or how I, you I, should I, interpret I, it? Right. How well you should interpret it? I think she means the artist's intentions, I think. Because okay. she, she just set it up with the whole, like, feel trapped thing. Okay. Because paintings are about being happy and having a nice time at the beach. I can point to his intentions and go, no, you're wrong. Because I don't want to get it wrong. What? Sorry. Did we skip? Can we, can we hear that again? I think we, did we skip? If I want <clears throat> to get it, maybe those facts are a clue. If somebody tells me Rothko's paintings are about being happy and having a nice time at the beach, I can point to his intentions and go, no, you're wrong. Because I don't want to... Well, you can, oh. you can say you're wrong about his intentions. Yeah, you're wrong course. about his intentions. You're not wrong about what it means to me. I get it wrong. I don't want to misinterpret something. That could be really awkward. Like when your friend who you thought care. was straight sends you a bunch of flirty messages and you're like... Babe, is there something you need to tell me? And she goes, what? No, I'm definitely straight. Definitely interested in men. Everybody sends messages like that, right? This is hilarious. Why? Oh, no. Some philosophers this is really said, funny. I don't know. I think it was a joke. Really I, funny. I don't even, I'm not even sure what just happened. But yeah, you but can tell it's a joke because of how funny it was. Is part of it. 
albeit not a part that you can see with your eyes. Take, for instance, Fountain. One of the most famous works- I was told about this in school. I'm assuming you guys know about this, right? The toilet. I do not know about <laughs> Fountain. Okay, I'll let her explain it. It's of art it is ever. a urinal. It was presented in 1917 by Marcel Duchamp, and it's what's called a ready-made. A sculpture that was already made, because it's just an ordinary urinal. He bought it from a shop. To the eyes, Fountain- Do you say urinal or urinal? Urinal. Urinal. I can never tell like, when like British people are like kind of memeing and what, making uh, words sound intentionally yeah, stupid. Yeah. 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 Wait, 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 like, yeah, I have the British yeah, that just I said you. Wait, you guys say urinal? No, I, I said it as a joke, but apparently urinal is how it's. Oh, that's how I. Philosophy Tube's British, but I'm also British, and I say urinal. Wait, I thought you were fucking Australian. Are you really British? What? Ringy is the, Australian. the Australian. I am the American. Wait, where the fuck is Mahler from? Can my chat tell me? I don't know if I'm getting trolled now. He's what? from. <laughs> what? What, do you mean? what have they told you? <laughs> well, I thought you were fucking Australian. Am I wrong? He's yes. Very... How do I sound Australian at all? Fring, you should know. be offended. Dude, you all sound the fucking same to me. Jesus wow. What does that even mean? Wow. Wow. <laughs> fucking white. Wow. People. <laughs> You always mention him at like fucking like 6 a.m. and shit. I figure, oh, this guy's Australian. He's up at the weirdest fucking hours of the day. He must be Australian. I just don't but, sleep. Okay. Yeah, clearly. Jesus. Sleep is Australians week. can't sleep or else they'll get mauled by wild beasts. Kind of true. I huh. That's true. Have to sleep true. with one eye um, open. They're like fish or sharks or something. Yeah, out of curiosity, Rags, does this uh, create a monkey wrench for your definite? Like, if someone just grabs a thing and then says, this is my art and puts it down, how does that I like. I thought. I thought about that a little bit, um, but I'm not. I I'm not sure. I suppose that the placement and the the things they say about it are part of the expression of using it as art. I don't know though. It's pushing um, it, right? It's pushing it. <laughs> it, it it's, the, we. I think we can all agree this is pushing it. Um, but yeah, I don't know how I feel. Like if if they if they did this and put it in a thing and said this is art, I'm like. I still yep. remember uh, when they told us about this, the whole class thought they were trolling, like our teacher. She was like, they just took a toilet and said it was art, and then we were just like, <laughs> and she was like, no, 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 that happened, that was a thing. And it's like, what? I mean, is it, it could be if the person who made the toilet really wanted to have the slopes and curves of the urinal to... Well, no, no, wait, hold on. It, this was trolling. That's what this art piece is, right? It was to challenge, the, I believe, the perception of what is but art. But the thing is, is it a... <laughs> That's an expression. I was about to get into intention suppose, versus uh, meaning, I guess, because I was like, is it a troll if it is only perceived as, well, if it is accepted? Do you know what I mean? Like, um, is, is a troll based only on it? Because people were saying that those red images trolling. And it's like, as far as we can tell, no. Well, I was just saying that this guy intentionally, the goal of this was to be a challenging piece, to challenge you and what your perceptions of art were. That was the goal of the artist, I believe, for this. Sure. Uh, but I guess it, because it, it didn't. Re did it do its job if it like only just proved that it still counts? Well, yeah, that's yeah. The, the job was challenge to, someone uh, and they succeed. Uh, it was to be thought provoking. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Okay, yeah. We've thought a little bit about it. Yeah, we're thinking right now about it, aren't you? Yeah, I guess I am. I still find it funny. Well, yeah, that's part of what you're posting all about. Yeah. <laughs> the trolling is to be funny a little pissed. bit, right? Mountain is identical to other urinals that are not art. So the argument goes. What makes it it's the opposite of a fountain, isn't it? Because generally fountains produce like a liquid and spurt it out, but actually generally you, you pee into a ur urinal or urinal. So it's like an inverse fountain. It oh, wait, was the name of this the fountain? Drink. Fountain, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, I guess it's so a like even the name of it have been spawned about what it means for something to be art. There you go. Oh, I thought it was like it ironic. I, I like, this is it, a year I caught it objectively. I figured. I it don't out. know. I think that calling it a fountain was part of the intention to challenge it by naming it something that's like the inverse of. Matt, I feel like you just oh, a really oh, good example just... of the opposite troll of this, of doing the exact opposite of what this particular piece is doing. Is um, this is shit. This is just posting a fucking toilet in a museum and, and challenging like, well, is it art because it's in a fucking museum? Um, and an opposite, an opposite. An opposite example of this was a world famous, world class violinist went and he played um, solos in a New York subway for a while, and nobody stopped to care, nobody stopped to listen. This guy charges thousands of dollars um, when he does performances with orchestras and shit, but outside of a concert hall, nobody really seemed to give a fuck. Nobody stopped. A couple people stopped, and I think threw him a couple dollars, but really nobody gave a fuck. Um, and that's part of the 
that's it's like the opposite example of this. Like, oh, so I guess it's only art when it's in a concert hall. Location, you know? location, location. Yeah. Is its meaning. If you don't get that meaning, you have, in a sense, failed to experience the artwork that uh, is fountain. You've uh, just seen your rhinal. Funnily enough. Uh, no, I just that's that's oh. that, those are not the same. I I can fail to see the original intention of the artist, but I can come up with a or I it could have a particular meaning to me. I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd call that a failure overall. A failure I, only I a very specific element of the viewing. Why does you just see a urinal? Why is that like bad, wrong? Worse you know, or bad or worse? Yeah. Why is it worth? Yeah, why I'm is it worth? I'm assuming you're drawing that from having described as failure as opposed to just different meaning. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, hold on. Wait. At, wait. Play that part again. All right. Let's consider. Oh. To other urinals that are not art. So the argument goes: what makes it different is its meaning. If you don't get that meaning, you have, in a sense, failed to experience the artwork that is fountain. You've just seen your rhinal. Funnily enough, like yeah, I, I I might have failed to have that particular specific experience, but I had my own experience. If that's so, the point being made by philosophy, I, then I guess it counts. It's just yeah, strange have, to put it that way. I think. Yeah, this whole discussion about the fountain thing. I mean that that was our experience. That was fun. That was really fun. We enjoyed that. Had a great time. I have some artwork with me today that is about this very question. Oh my god. Interpreting art, not whether your friend is flirting with you. Although actually, kind I of both. About that. This is Pale Fire by Vladimir Nabokov, one of the most famous novels of the 20th century. The I've story- never heard of it. Damn, I've never heard of it, yeah. <laughs> I've never heard of it. Well, that could just be because- I wonder, I, I, yeah, I wonder if it's real. I don't know, it's, it's not, I don't know. I guess I'm not into well versed in Russian literature. Not very well read, that's my excuse. Yeah. That the poet John Shade has been murdered on the night that he completed his greatest work. So the poem has been published posthumously by his good friend Charles with notes explaining its meaning. But as we read on, Charles's notes get weirder and weirder. He starts claiming that certain words in the poem are really a coded message. She is describing what the book is about. Uh, yeah, a summary of what actually takes place as opposed to what it necessarily means. But maybe she's getting to the meaning part in this. Maybe. maybe. Poem are really a coded message about how John was in love with him, but his wife wouldn't let him say it. And really, the poem is all about Charles until he's talking about things that are completely unconnected. And we're like, hang on a minute. Did he murder John? A lot of the humor comes from the fact that Charles' interpret- Spoiler alert. I guess potentially spoilers, I don't know. ...interpretation of the poem is wrong. He says it's about one thing, it obviously isn't, and that's why it's funny. But how do we know he's wrong? Well, it would be very helpful if we could just ask John what his poem is about. And that indeed- That doesn't some... necessarily answer the question. I'm assuming You'd we'll get there. have to assume he's being, yeah. Of being like, We've got to have like a basic understanding of what actually the words mean. I don't know, like it, that is kind of the basis for how we decide if someone's right or wrong about any particular interpretation of a piece of artwork, right? It's just like you're not being reasonable with what is there, at least with how we understand language to work. Uh, I don't know. I guess the funny thing about that is what if a simultaneous human civilization developed that just had a completely different set of parameters for everything and then they both, they watch a film while we watch a film and then I don't know if that... Does that make sense? Would they come to different conclusions, or would it just be different ways to describe the same conclusions? Assuming they could... Uh, is this assuming they could understand it, but all of their, like, symbolism and th stuff is different than ours? I just... If we were to duplicate uh, Earth right before, I don't know, advanced humans came along, and, uh, I don't know, move everyone around a bit, shake things up, and then just let them both progress, I imagine they'd have different languages, different... Pretty much everything, right? Butterfly effect style. And then... Take a human from yeah. both of those planets, make them watch the movie. They're going to... <laughs> I was just trying to think, would it be fair to say that, uh, uh, that whatever they come up with, both of them, you could still bridge the gap between them because they're probably still going to have to adhere to whatever is actually present in the film. It doesn't really matter. Um, that... 
Probably, and plus the fact that they are the same species will probably give them links to the way that they perceive reality uh, at, uh, at a more like cause and effect. Level, but, yeah. Well, maybe. I think we'd have yeah, to be careful. Like, like we perceive music of... differently across our same planets, like the exact same planet, right? Like, so yeah, if yeah, things are totally you... different. It might be totally who knows, right? But in, in terms of stuff like cause and effect, and this thing happens to another, and be, being able to have a perception of what's actually being done, and you know, elements of just human psychology and you know, the, the very, very intrinsic things that are, you know, the humans have, that would probably create some connections that they'd be able to both come away from it. But I don't know what those might necessarily be. But I imagine there'd be some. Maybe. Maybe. Some of us have said, the way you find out an artwork's meaning is you look at the artist's intention. If it seems like your friend is flirting with you, but it's kind of ambiguous, just ask her how she feels. But it doesn't really help us with pale fire. Well, that's not a really good example, because if they're being really ambiguous and you ask them a very direct question, then they might be very evasive and they might lie to you on purpose. Gets you even further so, away from the truth. On, yeah, that gets you further from the truth. We're going to death of the just, author, the person who's interested in you. I imagine an author's them. probably going to lie about the meaning of their art, though, right? Yeah, in, in that sense. It, but that would be like, that would be the example to use, not the one that she sure. used as an example of it. Well, yeah, because you do... You do relationship advice, right? If uh, I do, if you absolutely. Ask, I meant destiny, yeah. but sure, you do. Forget I'm the, like the Hitch, zoo, right? man. Uh, yeah, if you think someone might be interested in you, or that it's like heavy implications from all the things that you can see, but then you ask them and they're just like, no, not really. You're like, that could mean a hell of a lot of things. Yeah, it could mean. Because the whole setup is that John Shade has been murdered. We don't know what he intended. Maybe Charles is right and the poem really is about him. And this problem comes up a lot in art history. We have evidence of what artists like Rothko and Duchamp intended for their works, but often that isn't the case, especially if the art is very old. And even if we could go back and reconstruct an artist's intention. Right, is that square on the wall distracting anybody else? Because it's distracting me. No. I don't know, maybe. I, <laughs> uh, all right, that's fine. That's fine. It's just, it's, it's just distracted me, that square on the wall. It's fine. We can it might not be a very no secure problem. foundation on which to base an interpretation of their work. The French philosopher Michel Foucault pointed out that the author of a text is sometimes a bit of a vague construct, even a brand. Basically, our reconstruction would kind of be an interpretation as well. Was that a YouTube video as a citation? Lindsay, Lindsay I Ellis, think so. The Death of the Author. I guess yeah. you can do that. It's just kind of interesting. Yeah. He's still, uh, she's still not come back, right? Uh, so, yeah, so I'm assuming she may actually not come back at this point. I don't, know. I don't know. As Charles shows us, it's perfectly possible to imagine an idea of somebody in your head who supports your interpretation of their work, but who isn't that close to the real thing. Maybe your friend is flirting with you, but maybe you're just projecting, because secretly, you kind of want her to. Face joke. This is really hilarious. What did we so conclude funny. yet? Have we gone anywhere or? <laughs> like in terms um, of... It's, it's like not. So much of it's the not discussions dense. oriented around like the the like asking how much is it worth what the author says about their work and what do you do if you can't ask them because they're you know they're dead, dead. like death of the author right? Um, but I mean what. Are we going to factor into this discussion at any point? What if you, like, just fundamentally disagree with the way that the author explains the meaning of their work? Like, if they, if they wrote the, something as... Yeah? Was that what the citation for Death of the Author was? Is it sort of like, you are supposed to go consume that quickly so that you understand that part of the argument? Or is that going to come no up one is. Well, no, because... Well, well, watch the video to... I don't know. <laughs> I was, uh, well, like... we'd have to read, like, seven books, four articles, and three YouTube videos in the span of two minutes to get through this video. I'm and assuming I, I she'll just... go into Death of the Author. I think you have to for a yeah. conversation like that. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. I sure hope so. The risk is that we just end up repeating what other people have told us about the artist's intentions, regurgitating the marketing rather than actually engaging with what they've made. That's why the philosopher Roland Barth said we oh. should forget about the author and just focus on the text. Okay, there we go. His famous essay, Death of the Author, which... Yeah, John is dead, so I guess you got what you wanted there. Roland Barth, where were you on the night that John Shade was murdered? Just to make things even... 
This is staggeringly unfunny. Hey. Wow. That's true. <laughs> but someone out there interprets it as very funny, right? Who's correct? Yes. No, they're wrong. Oh. I draw a hard line. The universe considers this unfunny. This is not funny. It's based, baked into the fabric of reality. But this is more, not funny. More hazy. The British art historian Michael Baxendall said that artists don't really have intentions for their work the same way that an architect has an intention for a bridge. When you design a bridge, uh, you plan it all out beforehand and you have a very clear goal in mind. But art... Ooh, but that, but uh, that's, that's far more... Uh, that's, that's, but that's based off of just the physical reality well, of but, having a bridge. Well, I, don't I don't even know, know that it's true. You're, you're, you're implying that also it depends on who... Art. Like, architecture, as a as both of my parents are architects, there is a very huge art component in the in, in that field. Yeah. Um, well, so and, when you're building a bridge, of course, like um, if like I we I live in Little Rock and we had a we got a new bridge a number of years back, and there was a big deal in the city. There's a new bridge to span the river, and there are all these designs that were presented, and they showed them, they put them up, and I don't know how they eventually chose, but like the the Everyone assumes that the bridge will work, of course. So people would were they were judging it and looking at these bridge designs based off of their aesthetics. She probably entirely. wouldn't disagree with us, right? She's probably just talking in general, like the function of a thing, like something being designed functionally versus like, just like a. There are so many exceptions to this. I feel like you have to acknowledge that even even still, trying to draw a distinction between these two is really awkward because a bridge being designed. I think that it's like, is there ever a bridge that's designed? It's going to be rare for British design strictly for utility. It's never considered to be what it looks like when it's done. Like, in terms of how aesthetically pleasing it is to the eye or well, whatever. Sure, but it's, it's a functional design, though. That's the most important part, generally, when we're talking about bridges. But, they're functional, right? Yeah, but couldn't you say the same about, like, like if you write a book, that it needs to be legible? Like, that well, there's a, a model functionality bridge. that must be accounted for? I don't think that's the same thing, though. Why? Why is it not the same as saying that a book needs to, to needs to be written in English or legible to read as opposed to a bridge needing to be designed to cross is the same as art or can you function or phrase well, so I guess I guess it's that there's a separation being drawn between like architecture and I guess what we would broadly consider like regular art forms like paintings and books yeah. and movies and stuff. Um the impression I, as I understand it, is that architecture, like aesthetics are a big part of architecture. The like architecture, that, that, that's like a huge focus of it. And of course it needs to be something that's functional. But if we're talking about the functionality of like art, you could apply that to a lot of things, right? Like a film needs to function in I mean, a certain when way. We say that, yeah, when we say that there, yeah. are there are aesthetic considerations to architecture, but the function of the architecture is the most important part. That's the foundation on which it's built. Uh, sure, but I mean, you could say that, that I guess it's something that we don't talk about, but yeah, like a book needs to be legible. Like if nobody can read it, that kind of gets in the way of anything else. It almost you want stops to, being uh, a book at that point, right? Uh, I feel well, like I mean, we're having, I feel like it's a fundamentally different consideration. Like art is created to be perceived and enjoyed as art. A bridge can have art as part of it, but it forms the function of like, us crossing the bridge i think those are two yeah, sure. that's like saying like well everything is art because in order for it to be designed it has to be seen and we see art like i don't think that's a meaningful distinction like there's We're clearly sorry. something is different happening when we create something like a knife to cut something could also be art you could put art on the knife but there's a function there that is independent from any artistic consideration as opposed to like a piece of art that's meant to be perceived like primarily as an artistic thing that doesn't have like a function doesn't this come back uh, to, because yeah. like, I don't disagree, by the way, that they, we, we could have bridge building or knife building that's strictly utility. They have no interest in the aesthetic at all. There's going to be instances where that takes place. But at the same time, with how we're defining art, would it not still be as a result of the person designing it, like an, an art, like it would still qualify? I'm, this, that's pretty much where I'm getting lost at this point. I don't see how we, at the fundamental level we can actually split them that efficiently. You know, like how cars are made. A lot of people... We've covered this sort of subject before. A lot not, of people bring up cars and be depth. like, "Sorry, sort of, yeah, sort of what?" Like I sort, sort of, of know how they're made. Don't ask me any in-depth questions though, because I will not be able oh, to. I think, help. Point, okay. I think the point more making is that there is a clear functionality to cars in terms of like there's a lot of people there. who bring up cars as an example of see that is function, not artistic work, and it's like what? What? Are you, what That's are you, wrong. What? That's absolutely <laughs> um, wrong. Even though. 
theoretically, and you know, I wouldn't even need to say theoretically, I'm sure it's happened. There's someone out there who built the car strictly for its ability to drive. They had no interest in the way it looked. But like, as a form of expression and engineering, I think, because you brought this up, right, Destiny, in terms of uh, even coding. Like when it's created strictly for utility, or that, that photo of the eye that we brought up. Like, well, it's still, is it not like just as expressive uh, necessarily as, as any other, the other category? Like, I appreciate the intuitive sort of distinction between these two. I just think that if you're going to make a video about this, you have to acknowledge that there's a huge amount of crossover with the industries that are tied to these two things. Yeah, there's obviously going to be crossover, but it's fundamentally different. Creating something where function comes before form is going to be important, or it's going to be an important distinction between like just a piece of art, right? There might be some crossover, but we're not, we're not truly saying these are the same thing. They're different categories of things, right? Fun. Is it fundamentally different? Yes, hmm. it is fundamentally different. I will concede it is fundamentally different, though I think there's still a bit to dig into with how, when we, you know, like a life drawing, like what comes first, like just your expression and, and how you want to make it or whatever, or is it like it still has to comport to a couple of things first, functionality, like functionally, as in it has to, uh, whatever materials you're using or it, the ability to be perceived structurally, it has to actually follow a couple of rules and then you can do whatever you want. Sure, you can say there's a function, but the function is to be art, right? It's not like functionally, like it's serving something. The function is to be art. The function of a bridge is not to be art. There can be an artistic component to it, but it's not supposed to be art. Or there might be some bridges that are can, can, art. Yeah, right? what if someone got like the contract to make a bridge and first and foremost, they want it to be artistic Wrong. and it's oh. also able to support cars and everything. Well, hold on. Then first and foremost, it's not to be artistic. But that it's would be art. That would be art before uh, architecture, would you say? Well, maybe, maybe, maybe here would be a better one. What if you had a car that was never going to be driven, um, but it, it, it totally works, and it's going to be displayed in a museum forever, but it's never going to be driven? What is it? Sure, you could argue that that's art. Even though it is, even though like as a requisite for it being what it needs to be artistically, it fundamentally has to be a vehicle that works. It's a trick question because you're making it like, you're, 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 it's tautological. You're saying it's being created as artwork, but part of the qualification of it being art is to make it functional. Well, by definition, okay, then well, it would be okay, art. But I guess, you've defined um, the art as be, having the function of doing a thing, right? We can, we can remove that component then. It is a functioning car, but the purpose is for it to be displayed in a museum like forever or a gallery. Well, sure, but if part of, the, part of the art is to make it functional, it's still art, but it's not like it was made as a functional car and then it became art. Part of, it was initially, like, that's, it's, you're well, kind of so like... Are we, are we defining, like, when, when are we determining, like, at what point does something become art at that point, I guess, if we're talking about, like, a... Well, I don't like, know, that's what, a formulated what, conversation. I'm just saying that there are things that are created that where the, where the function initially is the important part, and that's fundamentally yeah, sure. given as something where the initial thing is just being art. I, I think what I'm, um, what I'm saying is that there is, that actually applies to art as well, but it's just way less a degree. Um, and I think it should be acknowledged the function of art is, But the function of art is just to be art. When you say that like, oh, you have to make a book legible, well, that you're just making it art. It, like the function of it though, the legibility is of it. Is the function of art to be art or is, I thought the function of it was to, I, I mean, you could have art with different functions, right? If you want to, you know, express something or get an idea across or make people think a certain way. What do you mean? Like, not everyone makes art for the same reasons. So even though, so sh couldn't you have, like, art that doesn't necessarily fulfill the same function? Um, I, Theoretically, I guess. Or some things become art that weren't originally intended to be art, I guess. The toilet? Because I doubt, I doubt that when people make art, they, well, I mean, maybe some do in their own way. But the function isn't to be what it is, right? The, the function isn't, oh, I'm, I'm making this art because I want it to be art. Well, depend. I mean, if we're talking about like painters or musicians, I mean, that kind of is, no? Oh, uh, I, I mean, I don't know. It's that, that almost seems like I'm building a car so it can be a car, or I'm building a car so that it can transport well, people. Here, maybe here's a hypothetical. What if um, what if you have like a fire alarm that's going off? The purpose of the fire alarm is to alert people that there is a fire. They know that this specific rhythm means that it's a fire as opposed to some other thing, uh, and get them out of the building. And I don't know. One guy stops. He's like, "Man, the rhythm of that fire alarm." Like, oh, that's, that's beautiful. It's like, so what, and of course it's, it's all auditory, right? It's like, so what, what is that? Do we say that that is like function before the art or that like now it has become art strictly? Or, or like which category would it fall under? 
like if we have this dichotomy between art and in this case well i mean like any i mean we've already i think we've all kind of said that like anything could be perceived as art but like it was originally created as a fire alarm not originally created as an art project right yeah sure but like what so, I, I guess um <clears throat> oh sorry i'm trying to that's what trying to think about where i'm where i want to go with that thought I will say that John Cage's three minutes, 30 seconds would be a terrible fire alarm song. Probably. Well, it's not going to work out very well. Because of the absolute long. silence, for a while at least. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah I don't know. I don't, I don't, I'm actually not sure like, what the conclusion I want to draw is. You design a bridge, you plan it all out beforehand, and you have a very clear goal in mind. But art doesn't really work that way. Every brushstroke you add to a no. canvas. By the way, yeah, so this, I, I still think she's wrong, even if uh, I went with what you've said, Desi, because, like, you can build art that way, too. You can plan your artwork ahead of time entirely and then go forward with that. You don't necessarily... It's not necessary for art yeah, to change as you make it. Is the planning process that just strict and rigid? It's like, I don't think it is. I think I'd have to back well, up and listen to the whole statement again. What, or what is right. that? Uh, what's a planning call, then? Okay, cool. Work the same way that an architect has an intention for a bridge. When you design a bridge, you plan it all out beforehand and you have a very clear goal in mind. But art doesn't really work that way. Every brushstroke you add to a canvas, every Not line necessarily. to a script, every note to a score changes the relationships between everything else and changes the whole. Yeah, See, I don't I I don't agree, especially if you're making like if you're making a bridge oh. and you plan it all out beforehand, like what that that's what large sculptures are. There's plenty of very large there, art installations. Uh, we can at least agree. Oh, no, it, it, it goes both ways. Sometimes you can plan out your art in a very rigid way and never deviate from that plan, but also you can build things that need to be functional and your plans will change based on new variables that come into play. And yeah, plus, like it, why it, is the planning it, stage not counted as part of the artistic process here? Well, because we are drawing a distinction, right, between the way that these things are created. That because something has a functionality in the way that it's planned, like, it must work in a certain way. But, I mean, of course, you can have breakthroughs when you're creating something that is, like, utilitarian. If this is why the distinction is being drawn, I'm not really seeing, like, where that line is yeah, being drawn. I think she could have done like better at drawing this distinction as is, because Absolutely. now I'm like, if I just plan out to, put, like, make a smiley face made of, like, five buttons, and I draw out exactly where they're gonna go, and then I do it, execute it as exactly the plan, would she still argue, like, well, that changed as you were putting the buttons down? I'd be like, I don't think so. At least not in any meaningful way. Or... Like, no. <laughs> Not in any significant I gave way. an objective standard to follow, in fact. And then flipping it over, the when they're making the bridge, I mean, yeah, it, it may go exactly to plan, but obviously there's going to be plenty of times where it wouldn't for several possible reasons. It feels like a really weird I'm, distinction is what I'm saying. I'm guessing that the point that's getting ramped up to here is that the intentions of a creator will change over the course of their, of their making something. And what does that say about its meaning? It's like, could that... Could that not be applied to a lot of things, like including if we were talking about architecture, you know? If you were if you wanted to make something in a certain type of way, and then I don't know, you got feedback, they're like, nah, this building looks kind of crappy. Can you change it? It's like I guess if we're if we're trying to I'm I'm curious as to why architecture or like I guess utilitarian like building things is being used to emphasize this point in terms of informing like the meaning. Could you say that ultimately the meaning of like when you set out to build a bridge, regardless of what it looks like, is to build a bridge and okay, alternative. Well, okay, hold on, let's back up. Yeah? I don't mm -hmm. like philosophy too, but let's try to extract more generally what I think she's trying to say here. So, when you're trying to build a bridge, okay, we're, we're almost getting like, um, like platonic forms. What she's saying is that the construction of the bridge is serving a particular functional purpose, right? Um, that when you're trying to build a bridge, you're not discovering the bridge as the bridge is being created. You're not gonna change up the bridge in relationship to something you discover along the way of creating the bridge in an artistic manner. Whereas like, as you're creating a particular piece of art, because art is like all relational and there's not necessarily a final product in mind, you're not mass producing like one art piece, that, that the, 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 the creation of the art itself might change the final product since there isn't a rigid final product in mind the same way there might be with like the form of a bridge. Does yeah, that make but sense? My whole point was yeah. that you've made her point better than she made it. 
She's yeah, I understand. Up. I'm just trying to read. Yeah, the way that she's phrasing things is very sloppy and very stupid. But I'm, I'm trying to extract like, what do I think she's trying to get at in the more generalized point? I think that's I think that's in general what she's saying. The, the way that she's expressing is stupid, obviously, because in the process of creating a bridge or anything else, things might change along the way. Or some people might set out very rigidly. Like if I want to do a portrait of somebody, I'm literally drawing a portrait. I have an end vision in mind in a strict way, maybe even more strict than in an engineering sense for like a bridge. But I'm just saying in general, I think this is what she's getting at. I think she's trying to make the point that a bridge has, there is an idea idealized version of a bridge, but there isn't like an idealized version of a piece of art generally. You're trying to create something that's a little bit more um, expressive and not as functional as just like a bridge, I think is what she's ultimately getting at. Yeah, no, I got it. It's just the, the it's super sloppy to say like artwork never, uh, artwork necessarily changes as it's created. I think that's really, like in a, in a video called it's, it's Art weird, Meaningless, that's one, yeah, it's a that's weird a big point. slip. Yeah. Yeah. As you work, your intention develops. So... If we're maybe. trying to reconstruct the artist's intention, yeah, maybe. where do we start? There isn't really one intention. There's an infinite sequence of them. John Singer Sargent. I don't know okay, about that. Well, <laughs> that's, is See, there that seems like we've broadened I, it out to the point where... Cause, it's okay to say that there's a lot. I don't, I don't, I don't even think there can, there can there be can be. Yeah. There can be a lot. Yeah, there can be. Or, uh, so we're, we're thinking, the, the word infinite is a worthless word because there are many different types of infinity, and I think you can actually say that that's expressed right here. There are bounded infinities, right? There's an infinite number of numbers from the set of zero to infinity. There's also an infinite amount of space between one and two. So you can say yes. that like, well, let's say I'm doing a portrait of somebody. Well, even within that bounded confines of a portrait, even in that bounded thing, there's an infinite amount of expression within the bounds of that. So saying anything is infinite is generally just like a pointless thing to say because there's an infinite amount of space between one and two and an infinite number of numbers. What does it mean to say something's infinite, right? Yeah, and I was gonna say that it's like, it's damaged the weird intention at this point because now it's kind of useless. You had well. Um, we were yeah. just talking about that red square on the wall, and she and she said it was about feeling trapped. I was like, I, don't, I mean, if that was literally all that the artist wanted to get across, then that's just one thing. Well, I guess it maybe depends we'll on what you're creating. And, an example, right? Like maybe. what they said that they wanted it to mean versus anything else that they might have said at any point in time. And of course, what happens if after it's created, the author changes their mind? They're like, you know what? With some introspection, I now start to realize that that wasn't really what I meant when I was creating it. What I actually was expressing was this. Like, who do you, yeah, who do you default to? I stage? think that's interesting. But when you say, like, well, to be fair, he kind of has infinite intentions. If you consider the human existence, it's like, okay. Yeah, I'm just, so wait, what's wait, the wait, point wait. Of this, What are we doing? Yeah, that's what, what I mean. It's just like you just doing? made it pointless. Why would you do that? It took almost a whole year to it's finish the portrait of Madame X. And he tried a lot of different poses Man. before he settled on the final thing. Rothko took years to finish the Seagram murals, and he changed his mind about what he wanted to do with them. As somebody who is, I would okay. love to know. And then he settled on what the thought the thing. process was. I would see. I would find that part way more interesting than the the outcome. Like, what was he thinking about before he did all that? If I, I don't know how what format I would want it's it to be. Also, like her example breaks so much because this happens in engineering all the time. How many different times were the F thirty fives like redesigned over and over again? Like, yeah. how many times has the building had like it's kind of a bad example yeah. she's doing, but. But we can yeah. her and we can extract more what her general argument is, right? <laughs> well, we is do, a working yeah. artist, potentially. Yeah. Huge brains here. Oh yeah, gigantic. I can tell you from experience that intentions absolutely change. I recently finished writing okay. a play. It's going to be on in London soon. I bet soon. it's really it's funny. That was a smooth ad. <laughs> <for everything. laughs> I, because you know, like I can, I can confirm it myself because I've made things where I've changed. It's like, come on, none of us need to convince it. Yes, intentions can change. It's all good. But I'm, I'm happy for her that she's got a, a play. That's pretty what neat. Is sure. Really excited for it. Tickets available in the doobly doo if you're interested. When I started it, I intended to write something about the monarchy. But the more I worked, the more I realized it actually needed it's to be about something dying. completely different. And the final product has almost nothing to do with that. So if we try to reconstruct my original intention to decide what the play is about, how is that going to work? It definitely I feel like, ask like, you, right? I feel like what this us? helps lead to the conclusion, though, is maybe we should predominantly focus on what is actually in the story, yeah. rather than trying to do this game of reconstructing what people thought. When they were creating something. Probably worthwhile because. to say is where you start and then you include like perspectives, including, and the authors, you know, one could argue has uh, maybe his first in the queue, but not necessarily the most meaningful, because that's going to be pretty much figured out once you find out what everyone's saying and how it reflects on the actual mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, and you when it comes to being able to remember the things you think and as years go by and it becomes more and more unreliable and that's just get very, very messy. Be wrong about art but I'm still not clear on how you can make sure you're right. 
I am the Make portrait sure. of Madame X by John Singer Sargent. Am I a study in light and shade? Or am I a sexual scandal? I have a both. suggestion. Yeah, I was going to okay. say, I'm happy to say it's, uh, uh, you can validate yeah, both of those pretty easily. Yeah, it depends on who you ask, because those are relative to the people who either made it or are observing it. Observing it. Maybe you need a different angle on things. Did you dress up for that? Yeah, why not? I what, am that part visual of the cast or something? Like, yeah, of it's course. It's interesting. Wow. Those paintings. I'm more interested in this than the red painting, okay? Wow. All of them viewed at the same time from different angles, because that's cubism, baby. Some people think that I am the greatest artworks of the 20th century. A lot of people look at me and they go, I don't get it. And my suggestion is, don't focus too much on the intellectual stuff or you might miss out on what the art really has to offer. The philosopher Susan Sontag. Hmm. So that's, that stuff stop... isn't intellectual. Well, I just, that's a statement that's huge, right? Like, don't focus on the intellectual stuff. That is, that sounds like a, that does I think sound right now, like I think that. she's offering different points of view. I don't think she's necessarily saying like, you have to look at it this way. I think she's just offering No, I, I, that's what I'm no, saying. No, no, that's like, not what yeah. we're saying. Yeah, th this is the intro, obviously, to this section. It's just like, this is gonna be complicated. I'm curious how she's gonna define like, what the intellectual stuff would be. And uh, obviously this point of view of ignoring it. This is probably going to be the, the feel the artwork point of view. Oh. Trying to interpret art. Stop trying to get it and just experience it. Yeah. Like Duchamp's Fountain. Can I... Everybody says, oh, he's making a statement about the art world. And Picasso's paintings, everyone says, oh, he's asking the big questions. Like, <laughs> what if there was a really fucked up looking woman? But art isn't a statement or a question. If it was... Can, is that something that you could do? Just stop trying to understand things? Like there's... Or is that... Oh. That almost feels like it's just a... Is that something I mean, you could just like flick off like a switch? Like I'm not going to try and understand it. Is that something you could I, suppress like consciously? What? I think... Uh, go, go for it. There's two different ways to perceive art. One is through sense and the other is to try to intellectualize it. Sometimes we get so caught in our heads, it inhibits our ability to accurately perceive the emotional thing or the qualia, the experience of the art itself. Um, if you have yeah. a good music teacher, this will be something commonly taught when you're trying to analyze like a particular piece of music. Sometimes students will get really in their head and they'll start like analyzing really crazy things. And if you've got a good teacher, he'll tell you, put your pencil down, stop thinking about it and just listen to what you hear. And when you take a moment, you listen, you're like, oh shit, okay, I understand now what's going on. But I was too caught up in intellectualizing it before to just like take a step back and experience the art for what it is to, to try to figure out later what, it, what, what they're trying to do with it is essentially. It's like mindfulness applied to looking at art. Pretty much like trying to observe things without judgments as best you can to just like observe the feelings that you have while looking at something or listening to something. So just we're like, of, we're yeah. defining intellectualizing then to be like, you take the sense in and then you almost like analyze it versus like taking letting it your, You don't want to let your yeah. intellectualizing get in the way of the feelings of it. Like you can, if you think too much about a particular thing, you might miss out on a lot and then you're not able to actually enjoy that particular thing because you over intellectualize it. Um, and that, it, this relates to, like, a form of drawing meaning out of art, I suppose, would be the, uh, because it seems like section one is trying to cover whose intention would, uh, and, and how valid that can be, and it seems like she's deconstructed it to the point where we couldn't find an answer. Now we've moved on to just experience it. I'm not actually denigrating that, I'm just trying to establish that I think that's the structure we're going for so far. Um, yeah, it seems like we're floating basically different ways to try and get to the question of what the meaning of, a, of art is, like different methodologies mm -hmm. for figuring it out. Because the artist would just write it down. Art isn't philosophy with pictures. It's art. So turn off brain and tune in to the aesthetic experience. I sometimes feel a little bit like that with my videos. Sometimes people comment and they're like, can you just make a list of all your major points and read them out without all of the extra stuff? And I'm yeah, like, you should communicate better. Hey, I actually well, would prefer I mean, that she do this, I, not yeah. bullet points. Exactly. <laughs> like, like um, actually treat making videos. No, I, as, like, I interpret process. those comments as I didn't understand what you were saying. Could you? No, they they just said uh, they didn't. Well. They they don't want the fluff. <laughs> is what the, the the comments were right? They don't want the. Oh, I, uh, that's what they're saying that. The one thing I'll agree with you on, though, I'm assuming they mean cut out the jokes, which would be nice, I think. 
You make the video. Oh, I be I would be pro that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I just misunderstood what the commenter was saying there. Alleged commenter. Oh. Sometimes art is supposed to be difficult to get. For example, I have another novel here, "What It Feels Like for a Girl" by Paris Lees. Full disclosure: Paris is one of my best friends. But I liked her novel before we met. It's about a kid called Byron who grows up on a council estate in the Midlands and has a really rough time. And the whole thing is written in the dialect of that region. If you're not from that specific geographic and socioeconomic place, it is sometimes hard to interpret. And that's a good thing because, spoilers, Byron is trans, which is also never explained. There's never a scene where like a doctor turns up and explains to the audience what trans people are and confirms that Byron is one. The reader's struggle to interpret the text parallels Byron's own struggle to just live free of the interpretations other people push on them. The challenge to the reader is, even if you don't 100% understand this person, can you still feel for them? So in a way, if you 100% got it, you'd almost be missing out. So I, I understand the I spirit of the argument. Yeah. However, what do you do with people who are literally like, no, 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 I I don't know what is happening. I don't even, like, I can't go. Because I was actually thinking, when like, when, do, started. when are you supposed to have subtitles? And you might be like, what are you talking about? And it's like, well, I guess Snatch would be my go-to, right? The um, uh, the, There's a selection of people in that that speak so fast and with an accent. I think this, the film puts subtitles in for you. I can't remember anymore. Point being... When do you put subtitles in versus enjoy the, uh, I don't know, the fact that it's oh. supposed to come across as... I guess that's down to the intention of the person creating it. They did that. Had, yeah, and so, a racist example. Oh, yeah. I had this experience in high school. This is really interesting to me. Um, I, I actually didn't think back on this until past college, but it, it was more profound than I realized. Um, in high school, I was an edgy internet atheist. Obviously, like I'm hyper-autistically analyzing everything because I have all the answers because I'm a fucking edgy high school kid. I remember that we read this book and this book was was really interesting in that it was it in some parts it was written in like a third person novel perspective like john walks over to his blah 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 he does that and then in other parts it's written in john's first person perspective but when it's the guy's name wasn't john but when he's writing himself um when he's writing himself the writing is like a little bit sloppy and um the the, the writing was so sloppy that in some parts it was almost like obnoxiously so, like some sentences could be interpreted in different ways. Um, and I remember that we were gonna bring the author to the school and I was gonna debate the author and say like, why would you make so many grammar mistakes? Like this is like illegible, like whatever point you're trying to get across is lost and blah, 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 blah. And uh, I'd, I'd actually written in the back of the book like a handful of like things I wanna bring up because I, I was an edgy fucking dipshit kid. And um, the, um, it, was, it was a book about World War I and it was a book about like the personal story of the guy, I think like trying to find his son on the battlefield that was eventually dead or whatever. And um, I, fuck, I wish I could remember what, exactly what this guy said, but I remember that um, I went to raise my hand, but somebody beat me to it where they asked, why did you decide to make this decision between writing like in a first person perspective and in a third person perspective? Like, it, it seemed like such a stupid idea. And, like, some of these parts are illegible. And, like, why did you even do this? And I think the author asked the students. Um, the author asked, he said, there was a clear difference between my writing and the writing of the father that was looking for his son. And the students, everybody, obviously, we all agreed. And the author asked the audience. He asked all of us. He was like, can anybody tell me for the final passages where the father finally finds his son and he finds that he's dead? Does anybody remember if it was written from the father's perspective or if it was written in the third person perspective? And nobody knew the answer to that. And he said the reason why he did the two totally different writing styles, the reason why he presented the book as is, was because something that he wanted to get across is when he'd written about history, people have a very detached third person perspective of it, even though we experience it in the first person and all the stories are incredibly important. And that even if there's like this jarring distinction between a first person perspective and a third person perspective, at the end of the day, we all interpret things as humans and that it's important to realize that. And that was why he went between the actual two different writings. He gave that answer and I thought it was a little bit pretentious at the time, but I remember thinking about that later past college. I was like, that's actually a really interesting perspective. So I don't know. That's just uh, one example of how you can present something in a way that's like kind of stupid or a little bit silly, but there might be like a greater intention behind it that maybe gives you pause. 
just a thing of there's definitely it, um there's interesting ways of leveraging like the medium that you have to convey things like in an unconventional way like that would mm -hmm. be one example i imagine there are examples in video games right of like how much do you empower or disempower the player to like mm -hmm. emphasize a certain point or maybe even permadeath as a feature would be another like there's definitely a lot of these tools i guess it's um that's the point of the conversation i guess though right like um to figure out if these tools have been employed effectively or if um, there's a point where it becomes very difficult for most people to engage with the meaning of the story or to like really latch on to that meaning uh, or the way that they use those tools. Yeah. Because yeah, um, I was going to say like uh, the, the example we were just bringing up in, in Andor, and I'm still not fully convinced that we, it was like a file or not, I'm not sure, but there's like a, yeah, a, a people that live on like a forest planet and they seem indigenous and um, everything they do in each of their scenes, there's no subtitles, but they talk to each other and so you have to rely on you know, movements, expressions, and what they're handing to each other where they where they go, and we we were like really liking that compared to having subtitles, because we were like we have to just we have to pay even more attention because now we have to figure out, you know, they they're making noises that we don't recognize at all, but from everything else, context clues, we can actually pick up communication to an extent, which is an interesting uh, format. I could I could totally imagine the people who made that were like, oh, we did that on purpose to help feel like these people are. Um, very distant mm -hmm. from your civilization from in you, terms of yeah. years, yeah. Uh, or it could be that we just didn't have subtitles. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, either way, it's, it's, it's an interesting difference, but um, I suppose you run the risk, right? This is kind of like the hand-holding of writing, where mm -hmm. you can explain to the viewer with a character looking at the screen telling them what the theme is or something, or mm -hmm. you can give all the clues as to what it is and hope they pick it up, or you could even go as yeah. far as making it so that you're deliberately making it hard to understand and you're just like, well, if you got it, you got it. If you didn't, you didn't. I can think of a, I can think of a really good example of this in media, and I can think of a really bad example of this in media. Um, do you remember the end of Whiplash? Yes. Yes. You don't even see his full face, I don't think. I think you only see the director's eyes at the end, but you know you exactly. What eyes. Yeah. yeah, you and know like that he's smiling. There's, yeah, like it's visible in the cheeks, kind of. Yeah, like and you, you know that so much is communicated there. Yeah. And it's yep. like, it's On perfect. It's, in any yep, film. it's done perfectly. A really example of a bad way of doing this, I think, I hope I'm not remembering this incorrectly, but um, in, I think in Interstellar, <laughs> the daughter is learning that the time formula was already solved by the old guy and that he'd solved it and it was fucked. It did, there was no way off the planet. But I think while he's explaining that in his deathbed or something, the music is cranked up really, really, really loud. And Nolan's, Nolan's explanation of this is, I want to weave dialogue and music together. And sometimes you can't hear all the words and that's okay. But it doesn't work if you're communicating dialogue that the audience needs to understand the plot, right? That's not like, if you want to crank some really romantic tune up while two people are saying that they love each other and that's communicated on a screen, you see, you don't necessarily need to hear it, that's fine. But when... Um, when a, not disposition, when a exposition is being given and it's really important to the plot and music is cranked up, that's really obnoxious, you know? And I think Nolan yeah. has a problem with that, with cranking the music too much. We actually need to hear the dialogue. He's almost well, famous at this I... point for his mix being fucked in a lot of his movies. It's really weird considering how, like, beloved and talented he is. It's, it's so weird that that would be a problem he has that's almost consistent. I, th I think that all of this highlights that when it comes to this, like using more unconventional uh, means of, of conveying your story, that it really is like a blurry line here of, of mm -hmm. what point does the way that you've chosen to convey this completely obfuscate the average person's ability to understand what you're trying to say mm -hmm. or like understand what the story is trying to say if they view it, you know, mm -hmm. as its own thing. Interpretation is the revenge of the intellect upon art. Even more, it is the revenge of the intellect upon the world. To interpret is to impoverish, to deplete the world, in order to set up a shadow world of meanings. Real art has the capacity to make us nervous. Interpretation makes art manageable, conformable. So what, what do we think of that uh, statement? Uh, I don't have positive not, opinions of this. <laughs> I do not have positive opinions of this quote, no. Um, I think there's I think there's a lot of really good stuff to dig into with this quote. Like, um, I think that this is the I think this is one of the big issues you have in high school English classes, where when you're reading, you get into this hyper autistic fixation where teachers are telling you like, well, this means this and this means that and this means that and this means that. And I think it's possible to pick intellectually pick something to death until like you don't really have that emotional meaning out of it at all anymore. Um, I understand what they're saying here in terms of interpretation is the revenge of the intellect upon art, where art is supposed to be this qualia, this experience of seeing something. And when you go through, it's almost like explaining a joke. 
Like it's not as funny after the explanation. It's not as artistic after the hyper nitpickiness. Um, somebody might have that feeling, I think. Not to say that like that, you should never intellectualize uh, art, but like so you can do it I would agree that that is a possibility that comes from that way of discussing. But I would also say that sometimes having discussions with people that I guess you could say is like intellectualizing the art can help explain why it was so meaningful or valuable to you. Yeah, like why certain things were working from cinematography, the way that the music complements the scene. Like intellectualizing can absolutely ruin your uh, ability to enjoy something, but it can also enhance your ability to enjoy well, something. Yeah. I, mean, I, I want could, to go yeah. with because you know she's got um has the capacity to make us nervous with real art. What I find interesting is though, have you seen Bly Manor, uh, the Haunting of Bly Manor? Destiny, I'd imagine. Nope. So that's a show about is ghosts are in it. Let's be nice and simple. Um, we we were very fond of it. A lot of people weren't, and uh, one of the big criticisms the show got was that it's not scary. It's it's marketed as a horror, but it's just not scary at all. And um, mm -hmm. we found. That uh, there's a chance, so at least with many of the people that I was showing it, like because I watched it with a couple people just to try and understand what's not working and what is working, the mm -hmm. mechanics themselves for how the ghosts work and what what happens to them in there can be a little bit difficult to to sort of put everything together in terms of all the events and how the mechanics work. When you understand them fully, I think they're horrifying, like existentially. Once you understand what the show is saying, what it means to be a ghost in this world. Um, yeah. And so it's almost like the show isn't as scary until you understand how it all works and how it all comes together, and then it becomes incredibly scary. Um, at yeah. least understanding it makes it, it turns it into something else that's even more intense and gives you even more of a, a reaction to it and a response to it. Which is why ending the quote with interpretation makes art comfortable or manageable. I'd just be like, I mean, it can, but it also does the opposite depending on. I don't think understanding Soma makes Soma. Some, like safe and comfy. <laughs> the more you learn, it seems the better. Sure, it probably. But get, I, so. when they're talking about intellectualizing in here, they're probably not talking about giving you an explanation that's like expanding upon the art. They're probably talking about the type of like hyper analyzation that might happen within the confines of an art class. Where like if you learn that well, this art is incredibly beautiful because of the ninety degree angle and blah 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 blah. Right. When you get hyper fixate on it, you might not be able to take a step back and just like, see the, the art and see it as beautiful. Right. Which is odd because a lot of the times those are called art appreciation classes and they get into a lot of the nitty gritty of yeah, why this is why this, this is why this. And so now you have a more un, more of an understanding of it and you can appreciate it in a way that you might not have before. This quote, you can, um, but there are also like really good examples of people being, in my opinion, I think sometimes people get robbed of their appreciation of stuff by being too analytical. Um, I, a lot of my examples are music inspired, because that's what I went to school for, but I'll use this. Film students can do this too. Um, when, when film students say things like, I can't enjoy superhero movies. They're just far too simplistic for me. Uh, it's like, how can you not enjoy superhero movies? Uh, you just watch people beat things up. It's, it's just like mindless entertainment, but it's fun, right? Like masturbation can be fun. There's not something like very sophisticated happening there. <laughs> like there are some people that become so intellectualized with their engagement of art that they lose the ability to actually enjoy some piece of art. I've heard music, music people say, I can't listen to modern pop music. There's nowhere near the level of sophistication I've grown accustomed to after analyzing Barokian pieces and classical pieces and romantic pieces. It's like, bro, you're literally robbing yourself of the ability to enjoy art because you're over intellectualizing it so much. Like what's happened to you? I think that's that's what this quote is speaking to. I I don't disagree. I just um it feels really bitter. This this uh well, this of course it is. It sounds like it's written by a person who's arguing literally against the over intellectualization of art. Yeah, but, but I mean like to... a lot of artistic movements are pushes like postmodernism is a push against the modern uh, rational man's obsession with trying to organize and catalog all of events in human history in some uneasily digestible and understandable pattern. So of course the postmodernist mocks the modernist and they mock the ability to try to create narratives to explain all society. And of course it's gonna come off as bitter, but like what is art and 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 academia if not like a bitter response to the era that came before? Well, so I right? go on to say that it's caused them to have the almost equal and opposite bad perspective like that they've managed to conclude now that it's the opposite which is still like I, I feel like both sides would be just as wrong as each other well, I mean, there's going to be some form in every academic and in every art sense. There's going to be some form of, of of synthesis and analysis or analysis and synthesis where I'm sure that like some people come out and in response, they make like hyper scathing critiques. And probably from these critiques, there's going to be a new form of academia or a new form of art that's born that will not only resemble things of the past, but it'll incorporate uh, like critiques of the of the current art forms as well. That'd be my yeah. guess, right? I'm sure that that's probably happens in all art forms. Mm hmm. I, I certainly think... disagree with the the element of in this quote. I guess I'll roll it back oh. uh, just a moment. But uh, to interpret is to impoverish and deplete the world. When I think interpretation, I mean it necessarily almost adds like it adds more 
then I think I it guess it would just away. be that it, it, a lot of these, I would just say, interpretation can be the revenge of the intellect upon art. To mm. interpret to me, it can impoverish so and delete yeah, the world. Interpretation can make art manageable. Because, Rags, what you're, they would tell you an interpretation is boxing it in while you'd be like, no, it's offering one more viewpoint on top of the base viewpoint of just experiencing it. And then you can have, you, you, I imagine that's what you'd say, right? You, you, every time someone says, Some like, along those lines, yeah. This like, means I, this. It's, it's like, I, yeah, they're adding guess, to the conversation um, rather than taking away. The, you, you almost want to ask the both... me... Oh, go for it. So you, you almost want to ask, like, do you want your art to be like it does need to be understood for a lot of its effects to probably take hold, right? If you're if you're trying to get across a message or a feeling or something, there has to be some level of interpretation and understanding for us to draw out what you'd like us to draw out. Hey, it probably depends I guess, on the art. Um, hmm. Yeah, of course it depends yeah. on the art. Yeah, but I would imagine that's guess, really broadly true. To me, I guess it comes across as people should give more thought to like squaring away how something made them feel versus like the conversation that they will have about it in terms of explaining what they think works and doesn't work on a craft perspective. Like that these are things that you can insulate from one another. Like you can, rec I mean, it's it, the, the clear example is, yeah, that movie's bad, but I like it. Or I recognize that that film is great, but it just doesn't do anything for me. That's essentially just squaring away. Your emotional response is one thing. And then you having a discussion about its merits uh, from a craft perspective is another thing that like they don't need to be competing or like yeah. one comes at the expense of the other that you can try to have two separate conversations because of course if you talk about a film that uh covers some event that is really meaningful to you personally because of your life history that's not necessarily something that you could it's going to be difficult to map the feelings that you had from that onto somebody else but i mean you can still talk about it and um and, and, and that's still, like, valuable in and of itself, even if it's not, like, a meaning that you would, like, that you would create. This is the meaning that must be stemming from it, that you can separate those two discussions rather than, I guess, making it seem like they're both competing and only one can prevail over the other. Just nervous. Interpretation makes art manageable, conformable. I think we can really get to grips with this idea by looking at the work of modern American playwright, David Mamet, who is a little bit of a problematic fave of mine. In 2009, Mamet wrote a play Did he have an opinion? Race. The <gasps> story is, content warning, a wealthy white man has been accused of raping a young black woman. The whole thing is set in the offices of his defense lawyers as they try to invent some way of getting him off the hook. The witnesses say that they heard sex noises and racial slurs being shouted. So the defense they concoct is that she was into that. The whole thing was actually consensual and she's just lying to get his money. The slimiest possible thing, but... I can think of some worse things. There's probably worse things, but... I mean, yeah. it's only slimy as long as it's not true. I'm assuming it's not the, the point of the story. As in, it, that, the lawyers are concocting She said the lawyers are concocting normal. it, so yeah. Yeah, I guess it's baked into the thing of the... Like, like the book wants you to know that that isn't actually how events took place. Or maybe we don't I... know, and that's an element of the book. Like, we don't actually know. Uh, maybe we're about to find... As the play maybe. goes on, it starts to emerge that maybe that really is what's happening. Maybe there really maybe. is some kind of... Reverse racism, reverse me too thing happening here. And Mamet loves to write these kinds of stories. He did another play called Oleana, which is about a female student who falsely accuses her professor of sexually assaulting her. But then he really does. <laughs> he loves to write these Tim Pool ass thought experiments. If um, I'd just be curious because I'm- Tim Pool ass thought experiments. I've seen some people say that they're familiar with that play. I'd be curious how that works narratively because how would it become a surprise that that was the truth when the, the defense lawyers presumably would have his input and he would be able to suggest that as a truth, yeah, I mean, right? Not a lie? I mean, she described well, it as- You don't know if you can trust him or not, right? To... No, no, of course, but like I thought it I thought the story was presenting it as though the defense lawyers came up with it as if because that may be valid. Not that that was literally his defense because she says like, oh, that's disgusting. Right. And it's like, well, it would be disgusting if it were a lie. 
But if in the story it's presented as his story versus her story, I don't know why we would side with hers. Yeah, I have no clue what the actual truth is. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, like do it, I have the perspective of a jury member or something? Or does the book tell me what's actually the case? Yeah, because this isn't... I'm, uh, I'm sure what she's saying is completely true. I'm, I'm curious how that would work in, in how they tell the story. Uh, that that would be a surprise to us, that eventually it becomes true. Or is it that the film frames it so that we... Oh, sorry, the story frames it so that we more likely believe uh, her, but then maybe her story starts yeah, I mean, to like, have holes in it or something. I imagine there's a ton of different ways it could go, right? I suppose so. He does! <laughs> he loves to write these Tim Pool-ass thought experiments. If you tried to take race I think they're and interesting, translate it into a political statement, the statement that you get would probably be a little bit incoherent. And I'm not just saying that because I personally disagree with Mamet's politics. In his book, Theater, he occasionally talks about his political views and it contradicts itself from chapter to chapter. The stuff about theater is really interesting. The stuff about politics, kind of reads a little bit like discount jordan peterson and fair enough okay man's a playwright <laughs> not a political scientist but are you i saw race on broadway in 2010 and it was electric the performance was so good that when i came out of the theater i was like that's it i have to be an actress and years later i did a monologue from race at my drama school auditions and i got in Mamet says that if you are writing a play, creating a work of art for the stage, forget about politics, forget about interpretations and meaning and getting it and all of that. Oh. Is it entertaining? Oh. Do the audience want to know what happens uh, next? I, I, I feel like that was all leading to a different place. Uh, this I always feel like this is square one, um, which is not a problem, by the way. Like as a perspective, just like is it entertaining? It's like I mean, yeah, we've all got that in our head about like m l making a story, making a film, make making any piece of art. You're hoping that people will be uh, engaged by it, but like I think some people, I think some people will create art to serve a political narrative. Well, arguably, actually, we could argue that this is the the meat of the woke art problem, where people think you're not creating art to be entertaining. You're just creating art to share your political perspective. I think that it's really fascinating. Maybe one of the most fascinating things is there are some people that manage to create incredibly thought-provoking art, and their goal is to just make something literally entertaining and not thought-provoking at all. I, somebody call me, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I read in an interview with the, um, the guy that did the manga for Death Note, I don't think he gave a fuck at all about whether it was right or wrong for L to be killing people based on whether or not he thought they were good or bad. That's like an issue, a theme that he didn't care about, he didn't explore. He only wrote the back and forth between L and um, uh, Light. I'm sorry, Light, Light was the one. Was which yeah. mixed he up, only wrote yeah. the back and forth between L and Light. Um, and I thought it was interesting that because the quality of the writing and because the quality of the story and everything was so high, that's a theme that almost unintentionally gets a little bit explored. And people come away thinking like, oh, well, you know, was light in the wrong? Was it okay to do that? Is it not okay to do that? But his goal when creating that, I don't believe it was to explore that question at all. He didn't even care about it. He was like, I, I, I largely don't leave this um, addressed. I just want to make something that's very entertaining. But by making it so good, you end up inadvertently exploring those types of ideas. Well, it's, uh, it reminds me of like Tolkien talking about how he doesn't care for allegory, despite yep. Lord of the Rings being, you know, everybody draws allegory from Lord of the Rings. Um, though th th there's more to that quote, I wouldn't want anyone to think that I'm like limiting him to it when you have said that. It's it's just that it's yeah, it, it does come up. I what what I guess I I mean is just that if someone tells me to be insightful about the nature of art, just mm -hmm. ask yourself, was it entertaining? I'm just like oh, I already. I knew that part. I don't know. I was hoping for more. Well, I, don't, I don't think they're not just saying just entertaining, but they're saying that like it should be created in service of being an entertainment thing first. And then if you want to work political stuff in, that's cool. But don't just try to make a piece of political art. Like it has to be art. It's got to be cool and entertaining and it's got to serve it, like the purpose of art, which is to be entertaining and, and a cool experience before anything else. What do you think about like that? Is that? Does that have the does art have to be with the purpose of being entertaining? Well, no, I was well, not gonna... entertaining. Entertaining is a stand-in for like serve it, like so. If it's music, it's something that pleasant, pleasant to listen to. If it's a movie, something that's pleasant to watch. I think well, that's maybe, maybe what that's if, where uh, it's what. If, well, I guess like sad music is we like to listen to it, but maybe like <clears throat> it, it depends on what we mean by entertaining. Do we mean engaged or compelled? Like it's um. If you get what I mean. Yeah, like, yeah. Because um, I think didn't Total Biscuit come across this? He was like, you wouldn't want to describe 
Was it Spec Ops The Line? Uh, he said it was, yeah, he, he said like for his top 10 games of the year that Spec Ops The Line is a valuable game. Like it's a game that's worth playing, but he wouldn't call it a fun game or like an entertaining game. He yeah. wasn't he wasn't having fun while playing it, but it was obviously captivating. And so that's Exactly, because I imagine there's people who are uncomfortable describing Schindler's List as entertaining. Be, there's going to be people yeah. who are like, I wouldn't call it that, you know. Um, but it is entertaining, right? It, but it's just it's, it feels like a demeaning thing to say it, right? What I usually like, say Uncut is then Gems engaging. Is very entertaining. Well, sure. Uncut yeah. Gems is very entertaining, but many would describe it as like it's very stressful or good times, right? Yeah. It's like very, very stressful, right? But it's still like a form of entertainment. You you choose to watch it, right? It's not, it's not the same kind of stress as like forgetting a college assignment, right? It's clearly a different type of stress. Right? Well, it's it's um with a lot of uh with a lot of art, a lot of it is indulging in what would otherwise be negative emotions for some level of um yeah, engagement, essentially. Like, why do you play? Like, it's not fun to be scared. Yet, when you're playing a horror game, it can be engaging or entertaining to be scared, yeah. or you know, made sad or angry. Sure. Um, like a lot of a lot of the negative emotions are like a big part of artistic expression. Mm -hmm. So I guess yeah. a lot of people's theory on like what makes bad art is not negative experience. It's nothing, right? Like when it does nothing Apathy. for you. Yeah, yeah. difference. Yeah, and a negative emotion explored in a safe context can be a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, well, that's that's what art helps us do. I mean, what is what is a lot of video games of not being able to participate in simulated danger rather than you know actual murdering like, going scores of people, adventures, like an action adventure thing, or you know yep. going up against zombies or monsters. Do you remember the remember. Note? No Russian. I was just about to say it. <laughs> I know. Glad I cut you off, motherfucker. It was just, that shit was edgy, man. I'm, super, I'm thinking about, like, looking back on Mobile Warfare 2. That game had plenty of edge in it. Do they, how are the new cards doing for, for, for edge? Because I, I didn't even play the campaign on uh, the... Modern Warfare, the new Modern Warfare uh, was, I would say that it was um, somewhat gutsy at parts. Uh, I'm not sure about Modern Warfare 2, though. I get the impression from the trailers that it's leading more into being, like, an act, like, just a bombastic action movie which is kind of it's kind of the trajectory that modern warfare originally took right like as the modern warfare series went on it became more and more insane like yeah any instead of yeah. It by, like any even plausible scenarios was out the window oh wait was that um, yeah was that called for modern warfare 2 i'm mixing them up maybe call it modern warfare 2 was no russian oh, okay. um the call of duty 4 had like the Pripyat missions and, and stuff like that um, yeah and world of war felt that, really raw uh, what, as a game as well. well, yeah, World at War is uh, a confronting game, that's for sure. Work of art and you're trying to get it, then you're a fool. The play, the story, that's the thing that we're here for. And I wonder if you would have <laughs> never got it, so to speak, where would, you know, that I, I feel like that was very valuable to you that you sort of intellectualized it in a way and it led you on this journey and got you to where you are, you know? If, if you hadn't have ever had any of those thoughts in your head would you have been here you know it, it kind of seems like it's really important to do that, um, if anything i don't know if this is similar to where um, you were heading but um what does it look like for the person who expresses this perspective to talk about the play to someone else who shares that perspective when they didn't intellectualize it but they talk about the play i feel like if they were to express like how they felt watching it fair enough but as soon as they start talking about what it you means you have to intellectualize it to con communicate it yeah, I'd be curious. I, I, I want to know what a whole earlier, conversation like, looks like where you haven't intellectualized a piece of art at all. No, well, like, it's impossible. Okay, intellectualizing. When you talk about like intellectualizing art, right? You're going to be talking more about like the actual descriptive things that are happening, rather than like the way a thing made you feel, right? So, yeah, like, for instance, if, like if somebody talks to me about like, um, why do you like, um, why why do you like the Interstellar soundtrack, right? In terms of how that made me feel. I loved all of the um, all of the repeated themes. I liked how haunting it sounded. I love the organ, which is a great choice. It. It's like a big breathing instrument. It feels very human-like. That's like one way to say it. Or another way to say it is, how did you like Interstellar? Well, the repetition of ostinatos throughout a lot of the songs, which is an incredibly effective way to convey both stress and whatever. Um, I think that the utilization of simplistic instrument patterns painted a certain type of tonal. Like, there's a way you can like that's like a highly intellectualized version. But you're not really. How does it make you feel? How did you feel about listening to that? Right. I think that's the difference between like what's an intellectualized take on art is like a very like discrete description of all the individual aspects or building blocks of the art versus the overall impression that it made on you and the way that it made you feel. Uh, wonder... Would you agree that there is that there is a blurry line uh, in terms of like intellectualizing versus explaining how it made you feel with reference to the things that were in it? 
I mean, you can, you can combine, you can mix the two, right? Well, so, like, oh, well, I guess, um, like, an example recently is uh, in Andor, in the first episode, there's uh, a part where Andor has been chased down by, like, these security guard cop-type characters, and the camera, like, hangs on his face for a good minute, uh, just, like, hanging on his reaction as they're coming closer, they're totally out of focus. Um, like, obviously, like, the, the intent there, or the, the point, the feeling that they're getting across is... We want to be like really focused in on how he's feeling, like how, uh, you know, the stress is ratcheting up. And if you're talking about like, yeah, that made me feel stressed. And then you start talking about like, well, because of um, the fact that like they're so out of focus. So it's kind of hard to tell what they're doing. Like, yes. just like him, we don't we know what his intentions do. are because they're out yeah, of you're focus hitting, and worry. Yeah, you're hitting yeah. us on this really important. Okay. And this is the, the number one thing I wish I could convey to every art student. You have to understand this. All forms of art study. The only thing you should be trying to do there is figuring out why art makes us feel the way that it does. It's not, it, it doesn't tell us how art makes us feel. It, it describes how art makes us feel. Um, so like, in, like if you look at something called music theory, music theory exists not to tell us how to write music. It tells us why things sound the way they do to us. That's the whole point. The whole point of any art is to do that. So, um, or the whole point of any art study is to do that. So when you're talking about like intellectualizing things, it's good to intellectualize things such that like, I want to understand this so that I understand why it made me feel the way that it does. Just don't disconnect the description from the feeling. That's the important part. As long as you're doing that, you can like intellectualize and talk about the feelings at the same time, but don't disconnect the two. Um, yeah, I mean, I would agree that I think that, um, I do think that uh, like when it comes to people trying to figure out, I guess, how to be good at creating art, that like you can very easily fall into. You can the, fuck yourself over. Like, what what are the rules that I'm supposed to use? Like three act structure and um and like passive versus active characters. Like these are the tools that I'm meant to use to like. And then you start doing that while being totally disconnected from like the fundamental drive that is behind the story that you want to create. Like, yeah. Because I mean, ultimately, everybody's going to have like if you have an idea that arises for a story that you want to tell. It's going to be hard to like intellectualize why you had that feeling um, or why you ought to pursue that um, or like how to best do it. Um, but yeah, it really is a matter of like pairing and understanding of things that will generally work or the tools that are at your disposal with the ultimate, I guess, fundamental yearning to tell that story. And yeah, I think people can get totally lost in like the tools mm -hmm. rather than. We the actually, uh, like we covered that. a video that had described they, they knew the exact time code in which the inciting You're incident right. should take place. That it, 11 minutes, was it? At what, what should take place? The inciting incident in a story has to take oh, place gotcha. at 11 minutes in. Uh, it I don't is, know it's how exactly like if, they figured that out, but that's the kind of shit I'm talking about where it's like, you've just, you, you're fucking yourself over with... Yeah, for you sure. reference some book or something like that. I, I forget the specifics, um, but... It, <laughs> Someone it, said Filmento. No, it wasn't Filmento. Close a look. No, it was... Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Yeah, close to look. Mm. Dune needed to have its, like, what, first act break at a certain point, and they didn't do that. And he so... was very critical of Dune. You liked Dune, didn't you, Destiny? I fucking hated Dune. What a god off. No, 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 hold on. It's not that I hated Dune. It's that Dune is objectively dog shit oh fucking art. Whether you're intellectualizing it or not, it's just bad. And the people that liked it, their subjective feelings are wrong. <laughs> They're actually wrong objectively <laughs> about their experience. What a boring dog shit. If you like that movie, you should talk to a therapist immediately. There's shit in your life and you get sorted out because your brain is broken. Well, I, I like love it. sand. <laughs> I, just, I just love it. I just love sandy places. It's soft. It gets all over it's, you. It's I soft it doesn't and it's not over. irritating. Yeah. It doesn't get anywhere. Yeah. Objective statement. All three of the last Star Wars movies were all better than Dune. Oof. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus that's, that's Christ. A, that's a what, do you, what do you two going to talk about? <laughs> as soon as, as, soon as he rewatches <laughs> the sequels, we'll talk about them. Yeah. You know, Adam and Sitch are still trying to sort that out. They want they want us to fight over Star Wars. Well, one day I'll rewatch all those movies. So. And then you'll realize how wrong you are. Maybe. Those movies are Remember, you'll always have the opportunity to bow out of that discussion when oh, you yeah. see the light. <laughs> yeah. As somebody who's just finished writing a play and is going to be in it soon, there have been times where I've found that to be really useful advice. In fairness, I'm white, so when I watch Race, I can turn off the bit of my brain that worries about the politics stuff. Maybe someday David Mamet will write a play about trans people and I won't have the luxury of being entertained anymore. But for now, let's take this idea and run with it. Forget about trying to interpret the art. Just, how do you feel? When I look at Rothko, I feel uh big uh it's 
black. I, sorry, I'm a little lost here with the where we are at and what's happening. Did it? So, did the video just? So she's um, concluded in section two the meaning of arc just comes from you experiencing it, and so now she's just trying to tell you how she felt when looking at the Rothko paintings. Which again, like this, we kind of went over this. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what I would draw from this. I I just it's not. It's like simultaneously like meaningful and meaningless to me. I I don't. Um, Feels like we bring all of it to, to, to the work, but it's fine. Whatever she's about to say, uh, I wouldn't necessarily find much to, to draw from it, but um, that's okay too, I guess, is, is the conclusion. I don't know. It's maroon, it's red, it's... Uh... I feel humbled. Uh, I feel you do? All, By that? Right. This is the thing, right? Someone could say anything. I, I don't I don't think there's any limit yeah, it's really. Just like, I, I would be curious why that thing on the wall humbles you. It does the opposite for me. Um sad. I don't know, it's very inspiring that somebody can Yeah, it, it kind of makes you feel like anyone could be an artist. You know, I think it's very, very inspiring that you too, you too, regardless. You could have your stuff hanging up People in the gallery. People have paid one day. hundreds of millions to write the movie. Hundreds of absolutely. Millions. These people—they're—they're well, they're terrible writers. And look at them. You know, you could do it. Look at that ladder. You can climb it too. Don't That's stop right. believing. Brain inviting. You know that feeling where, where some, something bad happens, but you kind of knew it was going to. Like when somebody tells you they don't love you anymore, and you kind of saw it coming, or. You're at a funeral and the person's died, but they've been ill for a really long time. And it's like, well, it's sad, but at least it's done now. That's kind of how Rothko makes me feel. All right, he makes me bored out of my fucking mind. Both and, perspectives uh, would yeah. be valid. This is, this is the thing, though. Like, yeah. I just don't know what to do with any of it I'm yeah sure, i don't know so. what to do with this either i'm just like uh, okay good for you i suppose which um almost denotes that my interest maybe when i hear someone's interpretation of the art is to see how they got it from it um but to also take the that would be far more well. interesting that would be something i feel far more you know well, much what i'm saying is that that's clearly something that i do anyway and so that with seemingly not seeing any connection at all i'm not interested in the analysis it's, it seems that's where my brain is uh which I think reflects a lot of people, but simultaneously some people don't care. They'll just be like, whatever, I just want to hear whatever you felt. Especially the artist, I'd imagine. Or at least that is part of it. But there might be a bit of a problem here. Truth be told, whenever I'm in an art gallery, I always feel low-key anxious because I used to date an art historian. And we would sometimes go to galleries together. We're talking ancient history now. So this is years and years ago. But that relationship ended okay. pretty badly for reasons that were my fault. So now whenever I'm in an art gallery, I'm always like, what if she's here? I can't play the song because it reminds me of you. Okay. My point is, people feel all sorts of things when they look at art. Sometimes I look at Rothko and I feel anxious about my ex. Sometimes I look at Rothko and I feel like suddenly I have to pee. So which feelings are the right ones? Even if I'm just focusing on my emotional reactions. I don't think anybody's going to be saying right or wrong, right? It's, it's so like, fundamental at this point. I saw it was tiring. <laughs> it's like, kind uh... of. Um, I'm just sort of waiting for the th things to be said that I could really sink my teeth into. Yeah. How do I know that I've got it? We can probably narrow it down a little bit. Like well, wait, wait, when you say, how do you know you got it, that means that you're you're implying that there is a correct thing to take away from it. Wait, we're still using the that metric you're trying of to get. getting the intention? Because I thought we were onto the getting it at this point, format-wise, is to just experience, right? Experience and not to intellectualize or over-interpret. Yeah. But now we're talking about how do I know if I did get it, which seems almost like not the thing you want to do if you're trying to avoid interpreting and intellectualizing because yeah, this one is just you scored the victory by experiencing um which is fine if that was your it's point fine. of view about how art works and yeah. stuff it's just the as far as it goes like we could say that your feelings should be caused by the particular artwork you're looking at yes i might look actually that was something i forgot to sort of counter my own argument with um when we like watch a film or, or whatever we still bring with us all of our daily 
experiences and life experiences and stuff, right? So technically yep. speaking, that still happens, even though I'm saying that that's the would have been more so. I guess I just feel like the ratio is increased when you look at someone at the Rothko paintings or whatever. But there's no way I can really prove anything like that. Um, it's just that uh, it feels intuitive to point it out, I guess. Look at Rothko and feel anxious about my ex, but that's not caused by Rothko. Any painting in any gallery would do that. I might look at it and feel that I have to pee, but again, that's not caused by the Rothko. That's just coincidence. But even what? Well, if you recognize it as coincidence, uh, I'm trying to. Why, sorry, I guess I'm just I, trying to walk through this. Up. Was there talking about like how um? Well, remember in The Simpsons how like when Homer was sitting there and like. The bus said Flushing Meadows, and that just made him want to go to the bathroom. Maybe sometimes art can evoke those. Well, I think she's, that's what she was saying, that that was... the idea right now that this is a thing that happens, that there might be some meaning yeah. that's totally outside of the control of the artist. Kind of like what yeah, I said earlier when I brought I thought you were going to reference the the, uh, the sculpture you accidentally made with the barbecue. Um, oh, yeah, 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 that's right, yeah. That shit's oh, great. Yeah, that's, well, that's a great example of Death of the Order, isn't it? I guess so, yeah. And then... That might not be enough. Whenever I look at the Seagram murals, I think about Spider-Man 2. Oh. The story of how Rothko made them was adapted into a play called Red, which starred Alfred Molina. They adapted the paintings into a play? The Red painting? Yeah, see, that, that feels like taking some creative liberties. <laughs> I feel like you, yeah. I, <laughs> to adapt that painting these into red, a play. We saw these red squares and we made a whole movie about them. I, All right, man. All right. I don't know about you guys. I'll find out what this play's like. <laughs> it's just a series of red unless rooms. Just, unless we're referring to red with Bruce Willis, which oh. is probably not what they're referring to. Well, but maybe it is. I don't know. Red Dog starring I... Red Dog. Prove you're a true or, fan. I mean, what does red stand for in that movie? Wait, or, what? Huh? I said prove you're a true fan. What does red stand for in that movie? You're John Elroy right. Stanford. No. Red that's... retired, extremely dangerous. Did you type that in or did you know? I'm curious. No, I knew it. It's in the it's in the thing. Yeah, no, I thought you hadn't seen it. You were just referencing. But yeah, true. I don't know no, why I, I remember that. And as well. the, I saw the sequel too. That's one that's I remember like having fun with those. I remember them being fun. Isn't Anthony Hopkins in it as well? And it's a bunch of old people, right? Yeah, it's that a bunch sounds of like old, it could be yeah. really cool. Like you get a bunch, like of, a bunch of old, old yeah, assassins and, and, and an killers, action movie. which is kind of what. And they're they're designated is. red. Yeah, they're, they're retired right. and extremely dangerous. Don't fuck around with them. Just let them be. Is the but isn't the, the plot like is they, they don't just let them be? Yeah, they're retired assassins, but they need to be killed because they're too dangerous to exist or whatever. Isn't that well, what I'm gonna be honest. I don't remember the plot at all <laughs> about the <laughs> movie. I was just about to say, like, God, that's retarded, isn't it? Like, they're so dangerous, we need to kill them. <laughs> it's like well, that might cause an issue. I don't know. They might kill you. Mm -hmm. They might not oh, like the idea of that. You know, they might, they not, might not be on board. Is what you're saying. Yeah. See, yeah. that's why we need the Looper universe, where you kill yourself to make sure you close your loop. That was clever, wasn't it? Destiny, you yeah. you really like Looper, don't you? He's not like, there. That's a really good. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> we just have to. <laughs> Well, you tabber that discussion for another He's time. Oh, good. You know, Knives Out 2 is coming out real soon. Like in a oh, month. He probably, or so. I'm pretty sure Desi likes Knives Out as oh, well. Oh, boy. Poor guy. I, I, think so. I wonder if they're going to hey, have look, a character maybe... who just vomits whenever a lie is told around her. That could man, be this one also has a really great cast. It's like, man, just all of these actors that you get access to. Yeah. The, it's gonna be that, that's like Ryan Johnson. He has so many resources. Mm. And look what he does with them. Hey, maybe this one will be really cool. I'm sure it will be. Dr. Octopus and Spider-Man 2. I really liked Alfred Molina's performance in Red. So now, whenever I look at those particular paintings, there's a part of me that feels happy. Because I'm like, oh yeah, Alfred Molina. There's a huge amount of input and, and, a, and a whole new vibe, really. My feelings are okay. caused by right. that specific painting. And they don't seem relevant to its meaning. But then we are right back where we started. It really seems like the artwork has a correct meaning that determines whether or not I get it. And you might be like, well, I don't know okay. if that's, um, I guess um, I, like, well, I, I, I guess I'm curious. Like maybe if we took a less, uh, I guess, extravagant example, like the Alfred Molina Spider-Man 2 thing. Like if you looked at a painting uh, and it evoked a feeling of sadness, even though I guess like the surface level reading would be, oh, but look, it's like a bright sunny day and there's all these people out in the, in the park having a great day. 
and that makes you really sad because of i don't know like my you, wife you was murdered in a park in a bright sunny well, day you know we, we, i mean you could have that or like maybe like oh yeah i used to go to the park with my family as a kid but we've all grown so far apart and like i guess you could look at that feeling and most other people look at it and they're happy and you're not I don't know that you could say to that person, ah, see, you've, uh, you misunderstood or like you your the feeling that you've, uh, projected onto this painting is, um, misplaced or like not part of the original intent either that's visible from what is on the paint, you know, what is the painting or what the, uh, the artist said about it. Let's go I don't on. know that it, it's a good idea to just dismiss that. That's kind of what like we talked being... about before, right? The, there's almost two kinds of meaning. The one you're drawing out because of all your personal life experiences and what these individual pieces of sensory data can uh, do, because like, that's still a thing that is happening within you or whatever, but then there's the meaning of mm -hmm. how you draw from what is actually there, I guess. Cause... I guess it's just a, a huge part of what art does when it comes to speaking to you personally is um, appealing to, to some extent, almost necessarily, your past experiences. Um, like one of the big one of the big strengths of storytelling is like a thing that we have as human beings is that it's a really fast track to empathy to to creating a scenario where you could like explore a certain topic um, and then you can through like POV characters or just POV in general leveraging that POV you can fast track the reader into understanding that experience empathizing with it and maybe learning something from it um, like that's a part of it. Like your your experience fitting into it is is um is an almost inescapable component of uh of like any art ever because anything that you look at you're always bringing your eyes and your brain and your and you know consequently your life experiences and perspectives are gonna be part of it. Um, and, and you can recognize things like like you could use the example of the, the sunny day you know and be like yeah I, I know what this is supposed to make no I I get it I know what they're trying to get me to feel or want me to, to get me to feel like I recognize that and I just don't feel it. It's not even necessarily yeah. a lack of understanding. It's just, I, like, I know what you're trying to... I mean, that happens with movies all the time when we watch them. We get what they're trying to say. We either don't agree or we recognize how poorly that idea was put across. Oh, so we can't really sympathize with it. You recognize that it's done very well, but it's just not doing much for you. Yeah. Both. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. I guess what I'm wondering here is it seems like the conclusion that's being drawn from this discussion is... um. Let's say that I have a feeling that comes up in relation to a piece of art that I can pretty easily identify as being tethered to something that would be well beyond the scope of what the artist intended. Um, that's wrong. Or maybe that's wrong. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about that, I guess. Well, we, just, what we said before, like... you just go back to, like, how do they connect it? Or is it just completely out of thin air? Which, I don't know, mm. it just seems like we've all decided, kind of, that, like... <laughs> that's that's how we just define whether or not it's valid, even though, right, could not necessarily be fair, right? Because if I just said uh, there's a character that's the same name as like a grandparent who died, that's it evokes all that for me. It's like nobody's taking that away from me. It's kind of impossible. Mm -hmm. And it would still be referred to as meaning. Yeah, right. But what did Rothko feel? He probably wasn't feeling anything to do with Alfred Molina or my ex-girlfriend. Probably. But. The despair, the sadness, the trappedness. Yeah, maybe. I mean, he did say that he felt those things when he wrote about the paintings, so maybe that's it. Maybe if I stand in front ah, of him and I see, but you see, that's the, the thing. thing. Like, could, no, could we dive to that? That was how we felt when he wrote about it, which itself is another type of artistic expression, a different medium of artistic expression at a different time. How much should we read into... Hmm, maybe he felt trapped, like, or maybe that was the feeling that he had while talking about his own piece because of a whole bunch of other reasons that are going to be difficult for us to... It's kind of the problem here. To some extent, we are trying to do a little bit of mind reading um, when it comes yeah. to the historical like, intent. Um, it's tough. Thing that the the end, we felt... Wait, does thing. the author's intent matter? Well, so that's the part that if I guess is, to is align um, what we're it. running through now. Uh, yeah. Like... The reason why I brought that up is because she's talking about he felt like he was trapped while writing about making uh, or, or while writing about uh, the art piece. Mm -hmm. I think that that might be I think that you could argue that that is different from the feeling that he may well have had while painting it or even the feeling that he had while conceiving it, which I guess we covered in part one anyway. Right. Like the, you know, over the course of the creation of something. I guess that's what I'm saying is like, I would, I think that all of these things kind of, um, 
crystallize why it's probably better to try uh, to minimize how much you're relying on what the creator says and try to focus as much as you can uh, on what it is and like with here's reference a, to the material in it. Yeah, here's a question. Mm -hmm. uh, if Tolkien came out and he gave some statements about Lord of the Rings, it wasn't explicitly like written in the book, would you consider his statements canon? No. Uh, wait, what? If Tolkien hmm. came out and he made some statements about what happened in... The oh, like the a, a, actual <laughs> events. The okay. Canon. Yeah. The actual events. Uh, Let's say the, Tolkien I said that, that uh, Frodo was actually had... in love with Gandalf. He had a secret love for him. I think that it's um, it's it's uh, it's complicated when it comes to like if there's stuff that isn't in the story, and then the author comes out and says these are things that happened that like weren't in the story that happened at a different time or in a different place. Um, I'm not, I, I don't know. Cause Canon is kind of like, Canon is determined by the creator or, or, or at the very least, like the person who owns the I story. I never would have guessed know? that's your argument for me ever. I don't know. I feel like you're not even freeing right now. Who are you? Who are, who are you? I'm trying to, well, I'm <laughs> trying to, so I, I, it, it ultimately like I need references that exist within the material to start to figure out like whether or not I agree. Well, okay. So was... in the case of Dumbledore is gay from JK, where it's just, she hasn't got a single oh, reference. Yeah, that's where I was going. Fuck you. I tried to bait you. I got you first. back this time. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, that's where I was going back. <laughs> Though versus like Sam disappears for uh, five seconds during a scene and then Tolkien is asked, where did he go during that scene? He goes, you went off for a piece? Like, I guess we can yeah you could you could think that's what happened we, we don't know whatever but it's something like no it is canon that he peed because he just said it in an interview it's like no that's not how that works no no and i'm pretty sure that's your position as well i've never heard you say like oh yeah maybe um, i guess like uh maybe the distinction is whether or not wanna... it's contradictory or supplementary i don't even think that uh i just well think... i mean from fringy i mean like in terms of what fringy might have been thinking well i guess um i'm trying to because because when we're talking about like events that happen um, like if, 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 if you were, if you had a story that, I don't know, begins in like hour, I, I don't know, like 10 PM or something, that's when the story begins. And then the author says, yeah, at 9 PM, like, I don't know, Bill, the main character brushed his teeth. Like what, like, would that be something like, how would we interpret that as, as like, whether or not that is canon? If he not, said, yeah, he it's simple. It's not own. canon. You can imagine that may have happened. Right. As, as long as we're appealing to stuff that is beyond any... Because, yeah, uh, I don't like know why this would story. even be thought about. It's like, you're going to destroy the meaning of canon at this point if it's any whim the writer I'm, has in interviews and stuff. I guess what I'm about... trying to, like, throw it away with, um, like, external text, right? Like, if, like if you have a law book for, for like, a story. A law book is different because it's been, that's art that's been brought into the world. Now, right, right, sorry. I was going to say, that's yeah, a part of canon something... at that point. Yeah, that what is canon. Something okay, ambiguous. okay, right, yeah. What if there's something ambiguous in the medium, and then later on, um, the person provides clarification. What if Nolan came out and he told you that um, at the end of Inception, it does spin forever? Would you consider that to be valid? Nope. That it does? That nope. that's canon now? Or? Nope. He doesn't get to decide because in his movie, he left it ambiguous. Yeah, this is, this like is, this is Han shot first. Yeah, to, this is, uh, this at, is Han shot first. At the end first. of the day, when it comes to figuring out what happens in a story, basically all that you have ultimately is what is in the story. Like, because it, because it, what if, you know, like if the writer says, well, this was what I was thinking of doing before, but then I changed my mind and left it out. It's like, well, you left it out. Like you left it out of the story. So now whether or not it happened is I have nothing to like, what, I guess um, if we have the hypothetical, what happens if, um, I don't know, like the, the author somehow just like forgets, totally forgets like some, the, the story that they've written and it's impossible for them to like screw it away. Some crazy amnesia. And then they start laying out a list of things that happened that didn't exist in the story. It's like, is that legitimate? Like, what, the sorry, the what day, are the, what's the format for them doing this? Like an interview or another book? Maybe like, a, uh, yeah, maybe an interview. I don't know. They have some like weird amnesia. And then the first thing they get out of the hospital, they have like a fundamentally different understanding of the sequence of events in their own story. Yeah, I mean, people and then they just give be an like, interview where they say, that's, that's pretty much the purpose of death of the author at this point. Just be like, that's nice that they have that interpretation. Well, yeah, I, I guess that's, I guess that's the point, right? If they'd said it in an interview, then it's like, okay, whatever. But then if they wrote it down, it's like, well, now you've contradicted. Yeah, now like it's just you've contradicted in your, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that basically squares it away. You gotta be referencing what's in the story, like, first and foremost. But, um, yeah, I, th I think Han shot first is, like, the one that sums this up the best. Like, did George decide, or did we decide after seeing the yeah, story Han play shot, out? Yeah, uh, Han shot first.
Yes, he did. <laughs> like, this, the... I guess it's well. I guess I guess the reason why when we're talking about the nature of canon, maybe this is why I was getting my wires crossed. Like when it comes to Star Wars, what is canon now? It's like, well, the sequel trilogy is canon, as defined by like the people who own it. With the um, meaningful definition of canon, it is yeah. Well, I guess that's the thing, right? Canon versus uh, continuity, maybe. Maybe that's a distinction without a difference, though. Or, or maybe that's what we need, right? Like continuity versus I, I don't know. Well, you, um, I mean, pe people will sometimes go the whole route of like, I, you know, canon to me is whatever I consider. And, and I don't even think that's necessarily invalid. I just don't know that there's much we can do with that versus, you know, if, like IP licensing and owning it. That seems to be the best way we can have a meaningful definition that goes beyond whatever we like out of all the stories. Well, because um, if, if we don't do that, things start to become incongruent. Like, imagine if you said, yeah, you know, like... Uh, a New Hope and, and Return of the Jedi are uh, canon, but Empire Strikes Back is non-canon. It's like, wait, what the like, what what's happened now? Like this story yeah, even is in very their own, different. Their own world was starting to fall apart. Yeah, exactly. especially if they liked, you know, what comes after the sequels, but they didn't like the sequels, and so they said the sequels aren't canon. But you know, fucking Mando is. Also, wait, when does Mando take place again? That's post sequels, right? Now. Uh, I think uh, before uh, sequels. Yeah, it's, the, um, it's before sequels. After, right, right, right. It's in between. Uh, okay, but let's just say let's just say this person liked Rise of Skywalker, and they were like, "That's canon," but the other two aren't. And you'd be like, "Oh, all right." Well, you've got oh, your foot you... in the door to have a discussion with us, then. Made it. That means I've got it. But hang on a minute. We've already tried this. Remember a minute ago, we learned about how the artist's intention can be a tricky concept because intentions change over time and the artist themselves might be just another interpretation. How do I know I'm not doing the same thing with Rothko's feeling? Well, I think, I think the difference is you're trying to understand their intentions. It, 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 if your goal is to do something that's very difficult to do, then yeah, this is what's going to happen if you're trying to learn something that isn't so hard and rigidly defined, like the intentions of someone that can change over time. Whereas the thing might stay the same and remain as it is. You're, you're kind of chasing something that's a bit more ambiguous and amorphic, um, amorphous, sorry. Um, so that's why, while it can be very interesting to get those intentions and it can have a lot of explanatory power as to why things are the way they are in a, in, in a, in any creation. Um, yeah you can't always rely on those things being available, even if the artist is alive or not, or even if they recorded, supposedly recorded all their thoughts. Uh, someone's just asked me, how would, like, how have you gotten to the point where you're saying, like, Tolkien's words wouldn't be canon, but what, Amazon, because they have the license, they're allowed to dictate canon? Like, yes, uh, it sucks, but if you want to do it the reverse, where only Tolkien, Tolkien, Tolkien can make the canon, and that everyone else is not because they're not him. You can do it that way. That can be how you define what the canon is. Um, well, the, the other example would be George Lucas is the only one who gets to say yeah. what Star Wars is canon, even though Disney is making all the movies and they're the only people who can make the merchandise. Yeah, like, what does that. it even mean at this point to say what is and isn't canon when, like, yeah. one entity has total control over the stories that will be you, getting created at this point? You still yeah. get the and problems. And can you sell like, that ability? You still get the problem with, like, Ridley Scott, where it's like, he is the only one that can define what happens in the Alien franchise, and then you're like, oh, well, now it means we lose Aliens, <laughs> and then we gain Prometheus and Alien Covenant. It's like, yay. Well, the interesting thing, too, is that, um, is it the, is it Euthyfro? How do you pronounce this guy's name? Euthyfro Dilemma? Yeah. The, um, is something moral because God says it, or does God say it because it's moral? Um, you run into a very interesting thing that's akin to that. What if we say, um, what if we grant, okay, well, if the author says that it's canon, what if the author begins to speak a bunch of, like, contradictory stuff? How do you deal with that? Let's say that, um, let's say that J.K. Rowling comes out and she says Hermione um, was actually, like, a 12-foot-tall giant who was actually quite stupid. Like, <laughs> Intellectual what we, giant? Yeah. Well, no, stupid, a dumb giant. What do we say? With oh, this? no. Well, I was going to say. Totally um, with everything in the, in the, in the well, previous essentially. Writing, so. Well, well, this problem comes in because in the real world, you can't have plot holes. And so we're trying to make sense of things that just don't like they physically don't make sense within a world like a fictitious world can have these problems when a real one can't. So how do you how do you deal with yeah, that? I was going to say the an even more it? difficult question than she says it in an interview and it contradicts what she's done in her books would be that she actually has these facts in both books. Like there's two books and they just describe something and those two things can't be true at the same time. 
obviously you can go with interpretations of individual characters if there's a narrator or something but if it's as is as cut and dry as two things that literally just couldn't take place uh, at the same time then you probably go for the one that happened first in the timeline if they happen at the sure, same or... time you and, uh, could say that the art itself is like a lack of continuity or that they actually make mistakes. But I just think it's interesting that like, it seems like we intuitively want to say that, well, if the author speaks something, then that it must be true. But it seems like that can only be the case if the art itself hasn't made a statement on that particular thing. So only in ambiguous parts. Because if the author said something that was clearly contradictory to the art, I think most of us would consider that the art supersedes whatever the original person says. Right? Yes. Yeah. I think that's yes. generally the way that it's going to... I mean, what is the point of, like, creating the artwork if not for the artwork to stand on its own, regardless yeah. of your further input on it? Insofar as the licensing goes, I think it's just a matter of what question should we uh, ask or answer, right? So when somebody's like, well, what if the IP sold to somebody, they do something way different with the art? The, the last three Star Wars movies are a really good example. Is Rey supposed to be the most important person in the universe, or is she just supposed to be an average person, and anybody can be really important if they try hard enough, right? The book, the all three movies, well, the, the first and the third have a different opinion than the second because of the changing of directors, I think. Um, yeah. So uh, the question is, what's the right answer there? Well, or what would George Lucas have wanted? These are all different questions than, like, what does the canon of Star Wars say, right? Like, there's a different question of, like, what would George Lucas have done? Or what would George Lucas's Star Wars have said? Or what would um, whoever Ryan, the fucking name of the director? Ryan Johnson. What, yeah, what would Ryan Johnson have said? These are all different questions than, like, what is... Star Wars saying, because if you ask what is Star Wars saying, they say, well, George Lucas would say that, or well, th those are fundamentally different questions that are being asked or answered there. Um, it would also present an issue as well when uh, the IP sort of runs out, as in like it becomes public. Uh, mm -hmm. how, how do we define canon at that point? I don't actually have an answer to well, that yeah, question. Right, like, was yeah, the answer would be different people's canons, right? Was. It, well, at that point, yeah, you kind of just have to choose. Part, yeah. I don't think we can have anything. I mean, more that's why we that. distinct. Well, we did. That's why we make a distinction between head canon and canon well yeah, yeah that's like, what i'm saying like, we don't have canon necessarily anymore as a distinction once the it becomes a public ip right well yeah it's just you take each story as its own thing and if you have like a sequel a direct sequel to one of those stories it's like well you got to take those together as well like if they you know connect to each other but like you're not going to compare the wizard of oz and the continuity of like oz the great and powerful because like these are two different things they are too wait did disney make the no disney didn't make the original did they disney didn't exist yet Ah, uh, whatever. Like, yeah. The, I think it was uh, MGM, <laughs> right? Well, just look yeah, at... Yeah, yeah, yeah. The best example here is just look at uh, fan fiction. Like, we wouldn't say fan fiction is canon, but we could speak about fan fictions, right? Or oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It's, its, its yeah. own internal thing, yeah. Well, I guess uh, an example, though, with, like, fan fiction is, is the stuff that's not included in that story, like, would you appeal to the existing... Like, the, the actual um, official, you know, like, canon story to fill in the blanks. Yeah, because the, the reason is more likely... Like the reason it's more likely to break down canon is because it's likely from the same person who created it, but even then, if it's not, it's the one that people are going to be more likely to be consuming. So it's, like, more ears and eyes will reach the discussion. But there are plenty of people who break down fan fictions of uh, particular IPs as well, yeah. Happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fan fictions are just like forks of like the original, so you'd assume that most things are the same unless they explicitly state otherwise, right? Yeah. I think yeah, that's the, building off yeah, a foundation, yeah. In Pale Fire, John Shade obviously felt a lot of things, but how do we know whether or not Charles picked up on the right ones? In my play, there are like nine characters, some of whom feel things that I've never felt in real life. So what is the audience supposed to feel? I am Pablo Picasso's paintings. How do you feel about me? Here's an idea. Who gives a sh? Cash Monet. All right. I am Salvatore Mundi by Leonardo the Big Dog Da Vinci. In 2017, I was bought by Saudi Arabian ruler Mohammed bin Salman for 450 million. Three hundred and twelve thousand five hundred dollars, which makes me, oh my gosh, I guess that makes me the most valuable painting in the world. Who cares what I- The most expensive painting ever sold. I was gonna say, why wouldn't you phrase that's, it that way? Why would you say yeah, the most valuable? I, I don't you're, know how you fucked up on this. You're a philosopher but, um, yeah. and you use that word that way. Stop. <laughs> like, <laughs> You're not good at your job. Oh, I guess, I guess she is. You're very successful. Yeah. Art means, uh. or what it's about, or how people feel. Not the art world, that's for sure. 
Salvatore Mundi is a portrait of Jesus, a man who famously did not have a high opinion of rich people. I get it. Not but the best that image to use to relay that, but... It didn't matter because art is what economists call an asset. Or in poor people language, it's a way to avoid paying taxes. Let me give you some advice, okay? This section is gonna be great. <laughs> this is now Fair Salvatore's okay. business influencer tips. Buy cheap paintings. And when I say cheap, I mean like rich people cheap, like $25,000, there's nothing. Take those cheap paintings to an appraiser, one that you trust, and say, hey, Jimmy, how much would you say this painting is worth? And Jimmy goes, oh, I don't know, maybe a million dollars. And then what you do is donate that work of art to a charitable foundation, preferably one that you control. Oh, but Salvi, I hear you say, why am I giving it away? Why am I not selling it? Bro, I, I hope this loops back into the meaninglessness. I was actually gonna say, I'm actually not Unless, sure how just, this is going to be, like, a pri yeah. the prism I assume this time is just how expensive it is, is what, how meaningful it is, but obviously no one's Oh, gonna... I thought this was just the, I thought this is going to, the bitching about capitalism, that's what we're leading into. Like yeah, but and subvert the... at well, the same time, like the point of view will likely be to include the, the money people who are like, the best painting is the one that people will pay the most money for, which you can get done instantly and dismiss, like, nobody really cares about well, this. I mean, it's the Transformers thing, isn't it? Oh yeah, the best movie yeah. made the Money, I was gonna right? say, this is a totally valid critique because I think a lot of people will say like, oh, well, like, what's the best song? Uh, Kanye West, look how much, you know, triple platinum, blah, blah, blah. Who's the best whatever, blah, blah, blah. Oh, my superhero movie's highest grossing movie of all time. Like, who's the best director? James Cameron, obviously. Look at the grossing of the films. Like, I think people will, will do these types of evaluations. How popular is their art? How much money does it make? Like, I'm not even sure. Like, I, I want to believe you believe that, but like... How many people would that they stand by that once you ask them just a couple of questions? Like, once you reflect on different industries and then you find the Transformers argument oh, is why oh, it was referenced that way. It's like nobody believes Transformers are amazing, but they did make a shit ton of money. If you step outside of internet communities and talk to normies, I think normies would always cite how popular something is for how good it is. I have talked to plenty of normies about movies, think, and I don't, I don't think that's true. I don't think so. Yeah, I think most people are able to recognize that. I, I do like believe a, that people will make appeals to popularity and success to justify their positions, but, but it's it like will crumble in seconds. Like, yeah, like you just ask them about a thing that they like that isn't wait, very I don't, popular. I don't even mean they like, don't even believe it. They just yeah, like, I don't even mean in a debate they, format. I mean, you just ask them to apply that to other things, and then they'll be like, "Well, no, not that, because that's bad." And you'll be like, "Right, okay." Or they'll so. be like, "Oh yeah, you're right. I I I really so, mean da da da." There's you, something you are, deeper. Like yeah, that. you're correct. People on the internet still appeal. Like, right now, people are like, Rings of Power is better than House of the Dragon because it is getting more viewership. And then other people are like, well, no, it's not. The viewership's going up for House of the Dragon. And I'm, you know, we're sitting here like, the fucking viewership doesn't, that, that's not, I'm that's talking about that. <laughs> I mean, it's important in terms of Amazon staking a lot on Rings of Power to be successful. So there's still a conversation to be had, of course. I just mean that, I don't know. You can bring this up. I just don't know that you should spend much time on this this perspective because I just don't know how long it's going to last. It's not going to be much of a like the more money it it's worth, the better of more meaningful it is. Just like mm, sure, but yeah, you know. I can't remember anyone making this argument. I'm sure they're out there. Well, yeah, they're, no. So what, I would say that the common configuration of this argument is like, well, yeah, you say that's bad, but look at all these people who like it. I, I often that's I've heard that plenty of times. Well, see, but that's a different like, argument. Uh. uh yeah, I suppose you could say, well, I guess they'd be appealing to the popular, like, you know, people would say, well, yeah, but who cares what you think? They've made like, all this money. So clearly, I actually know. think that's a like, much stronger argument than this one. Uh, to talk about what more common, people certainly. in the world well, find to be most meaningful like, collectively is a much better way of trying to categorize art than which one was sold for the most money. Uh, yeah, I guess I'd say that there can be some level of blurriness or conflation between those two types yeah. of arguments. Like you're making appeals ultimately to things that are beyond the material. Which is interesting, uh, right? Because like happens. Transformers made all that money, but there's like nobody defending it. Like, oh, well, I mean, okay. Avatar is an interesting example. A lot of people talk about it. How many people could tell you anything about that film? How many people could tell you the name of the main character? Yay. Um, was it Jake? It, oh my god. Jake Sully. Yeah, it is Jake Sully. See, ah. I remember. I'm actually surprised yeah. I got that right. <laughs> I can't remember. I don't know why I know that. I don't know why I know that. Yeah, what the fuck? There's Jake Sully, there was of course Natiri, you had, it was Quaritch was uh, Stephen oh, yeah. Lang's character. I don't know any of I these other names. <laughs> Grace, 
Uh, look, I, well, I mean, this I remember more about Avatar, evidently, than uh, than most people do. The world than James Cameron. Mm -hmm. Oh, he loves it. He's very into it. He does. He does love it. This is a work of passion. For him. Which you know what? The fact that he really likes Avatar makes me wonder if Avatar Two might be like really worthwhile. Maybe. For his, for, uh, I guess maybe. Strange maybe. I think we'll give it a shot. Why not? I think everybody will. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Well, because as far as the tax collectors are concerned, you just donated a million dollars to charity, my friend. You're practically a saint, so use it for clout. And more importantly, it's a tax write-off. Or try it this way around. Let's say you already own a painting and it's very valuable. Like me, but not me, obviously. You couldn't afford me. <laughs> I'm Jesus Christ Superstar. Take that valuable painting to your appraiser and say, hey, Jimmy, how much would you say this one is worth? And Jimmy says, oh, I don't know, not much, I reckon. Then what you do is you die. The method is up to you there. But when you go, donate that valuable painting to your spoilt rich kids, to Ferdinand and Jemima and Armancio. They then sell it. And oh, wouldn't you know it, it's actually worth loads of money now. But by that point, they've already avoided inheritance tax. Boom. You can look down proudly from heaven where rich people definitely go. The art market. Okay. Look, it's, we're okay. just waiting for points about art to come up. <laughs> we're getting there, I'm sure. It's pretty unregulated, pretty opaque, and very concentrated. And if you have the millions it takes to buy in, there are millions of ways you can stack the deck. Whilst the plebs are standing in front of the work trying to figure out what it means, you already know what it means. It means you never have to work again. Huge vibe. Except, well, it's hard to be completely cynical. Even in the ritziest of ritzy art circles, people do still talk about the meaning. In the early noughties, a new art movement developed that came to be known as zombie formalism. Pretty quickly, people started to suspect that zombie formalism was just trying to make a quick buck. A lot of the paintings themselves were pretty visually neutral. So you could hang them in a CEO's office or a fancy lobby and they'd so take I'm up guessing. space that where we're heading here is like, what does it look like when the, I guess the economic side of art creation filters into the, the process itself? Presumably, Which is, yeah. Like that's, that's a topic that's worthwhile, right? Like if you look at a lot of mainstream films, how do standards or like expectations about what the audience want uh, alter whenever you're creating in an adverse way, like mandatory action scenes or like a love triangle because that's what you're meant to do yeah, in certain or like romance. Even it's just alive. when someone's critical of anything about it, and it's like, to be fair, their budget was X, Y, Z, and it's like, should that be factored oh, in? It's like, like what were the means available to them, and, and does that, uh... Like, for instance, if a developer's like, yeah, we couldn't, you know, we had a deadline, so we couldn't fix all the bugs. It's like, cool, bro. <laughs> you know, Bug nevertheless. Yeah. Nevertheless, um, this is a problem. Is that, yeah, it, like, how much... Is Cyberpunk in a working condition? Has anyone checked? Is that, like, well, a loved it's, game it's now? Getting played by over a hundred thousand. I think it's because of the anime. It's now it's, like a hundred thousand concurrent players on Steam. I think when we covered it, we were like, "It's gonna need a No Man's Sky story," and I'm guessing it's getting there. Is it? No, I have no idea what the there. state of the game is. I don't. I have, well, no, I have no clue. Well, I mean, it's if a hundred. I'm pretty sure that there are the the concurrent play account for Cyberpunk 2077 is higher than it ever was for The Witcher Three right now. Shit. Um, okay. So, Handing out, and I think it's the uh, the Edge Runners like anime on Netflix. Like that's hilarious. Remind... Oh, you know, it's well, yeah. I really want to know how many players were added to League of Legends from Arcane. Not that there's a way to figure that out, but it'd be it'd be neat to know. Uh, that would be interesting. Um, that would be interesting. Who knows though? Without pulling, I can too actually much get focus. an answer for you really so quick on the player count numbers. So um, the this is for Steam though. This is going by Steam charts. The all-time peak players for The Witcher 3 was 103,000. Cyberpunk today had 121,600 players. Yeah, so it's... an all-time peak of 830,000. Oh, uh, that would have been... 
Oh, I think. Do you have um, like... an all time valley for 2077? He just said it was like, eight... oh, the, the, the lowest it got. The lowest it got? I can. What I can do is there. there's a chart here that shows the, the gain in percentage game in average players month by month. It I'm looks like the how low it got lowest, before it climbed back up, you know? The lowest average player count for Cyberpunk 2077 was in October of 2021. It was only 8,000 players. Well, only. That's not bad compared to uh, some other games. With the scale of this game, that's... Well, true. That's true. Because yeah, CD Projekt... Context. Yeah, see, that was like one of the most hyped. It just happens, man. When the game gets really hyped up, so often. No, it's not because it was hyped up. It's because it was dog shit. Or there were a lot oh, of. Well, no, 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 no. What what I mean is that understand. we often see what what we often see is that a game will get really hyped up to the point that like critical like a critical eye on something like just kind of gets lost in like the promise of the concept. Like No Man's Sky was an example. That game was super hyped up. Um, so much so that I, I'm pretty sure Total Biscuit even like before that came out was talking like. I'm not sure that I see like this this game being what people think it will be, or something along those lines. Well, even I so, I think the issue is that it's not just that it was overhyped; it was that the developers actually lied. They overpromised hard. They were they were uh, overpromising yeah, and under delivering. It's true. Yeah, um, and I mean it was the same for City Project Red with Cyberpunk. I guess what I'm saying is that we have like these examples of these games that were super hyped up, high profile, and then they came out and they were massive disappointments. Like, well, didn't um. Uh, uh, I, I think um, the reason why I'm thinking that was Cyberpunk is because when that game came out, one of the conditions for the reviews for that game, I believe, was that they couldn't use any of their own captured footage. There was like a set amount of footage that uh, they had access to. And so, yeah. Um, and they couldn't, yeah. And so, like. Wasn't that it a console happened. as well? Because uh, sure. the PC oh, one yeah, was, was running only way on worse. They only, I think it was that. No, the console ones were dog shit. So, they, oh, I it think was, it was okay. only PC reviews, no PS4. These are all massive red flags that yes, should have been. Yes, there were many, uh, many red flags before that game actually released just, to the it public. Never, it never came about. Like a lot of people glossed aside and like didn't really think about that. I guess what I mean is that we see this where like a game gets so hyped up that pretty clear warnings that something is wrong just get overlooked. It's like, oh, well, City Project Red, they're awesome. Like they made The Witcher Three, so you know it'll oh, be, it'll be cool. Destiny as well, right? Not you, Destiny, the game yeah, Destiny. <laughs> like what that was a game. The girl's like, name. Based. Well, you predate Destiny the game, right? Yeah, those fuckers murdered my SEO. Wow. I was actually about to ask, yeah, that must have been a fucking nightmare when that came out in terms of like, oh great, that's gonna fuck with people searching for me forever now. Yeah, except now I benefit, because fuck them. People yeah, they, for the you've game managed game. to outlast Destiny as an IP, so <laughs> good for oh, you. I don't know. I think it's still going, right? It is still Destiny's going, but... I th Destiny the streamer is a 10-year project. Can, sure that, I'd wonder uh, which gets more engagement, especially with your last few weeks. I thought, like, isn't Destiny 2 doing, like... Because uh, PlayStation bought Bungie for, like, $3 billion. Um, so, like, I'm pretty sure Destiny's... In a competition of which Destiny is uh, is is doing well, I guess it's hard to say. It's neck I'm pretty and neck sure the Destiny game is doing far, far, far better than I am. That's, oh. I'm pretty sure it's still a pretty... Whoa. I don't think I will buy it at all. How many people are watching Destiny 2 on Twitch versus watching Destiny right now? I can I tell know, you how many like, people how do you are playing find... Destiny right now. Destiny yeah, tell me 2. How many people are playing Destiny 2 right now? Right now that, on Steam. Destiny oh, 2. Uh, twice as many. Damn. Des Destiny 2, today on Steam, had 107,456. Okay, okay, so players. close. Close, all right? We get close. There. I feel like pretty they're doing close. pretty well. Yeah, we'll get there. It's almost there, yeah. We'll get there. Apparently, I guess that game also got a whole lot of work done to it. Much like Cyberpunk. And no this thing is an MMO, right? It's like ongoing lame. updated shit, right? It, I, I'm, I'm not going to call that game an MMO. Uh, well, it's like, it's like it, the, the most watered down an MMO can be, I feel. With it like, being um, technically like an MMO, but like no one's like, oh yeah, I, I need an MMO to play. You should play Destiny 2. I don't know if that's what people oh, mean sure, when like they say that. It was, it was kind of the era of like the division where there were these like sort of, that were trying to bridge the gap between, I guess, conventional PvP multiplayer stuff on consoles and like like these sort of shared worlds that were like kind of there were other people around and you could kind of interact yeah. with them but like yeah yeah um, it's distinct I, from the other world of warcraft and the guild wars stuff i i imagine that destiny 2 is probably like really fun now if you've been immersed in it and engaged with it but yeah when that game came out that was that was uh, it was pretty darn mediocre 
Dude, that's, I just, that's, uh, one of those, um, that's one of those games I know nothing about, but I watched several people review it. I don't know why. I, just, it, I remember it being fun. Well, I uh, I got really hyped for the first one because it was like, oh, Bungie's new thing after Halo, that's going to be really exciting. And I think, I think at this point it's basically all but confirmed that something happened during development. There were like big changes that happened where the story was changed uh, pretty drastically because like the game as it came out barely had one. Certain locations were removed or placed at different points in the game. I think there was an interview where the developer said you could go to Saturn but you can only go to Saturn after the Taken King DLC came out a year later and 40 bucks. Um, something happened. Something happened at Bungie. Something happened with that game. Um, yeah. I mean, that, that should be one of those reminders that when it comes to... I think that we can really easily... It's like, oh, that's, you know, we talk about Naughty Dog or Bungie or, um, or City Project Red. It's like these studios and kind of forget that it's like, well, it's the people who are in these studios who do come and go, who, like, make the games yep. at the end of Bioware. the day. Bioware. The Bungie that existed in 2006 or 7 is very different from the Bungie that exists now in 2022. Same goes for Bioware. CD Projekt Red is now, like, a massive publicly traded company, like, in Poland. Like, it, it just changes, and it's, it's um, I don't know, the, the, the company that makes the game, like, 10 or 15 years ago... It's just not, it invariably not going to be the same company that makes it in the future. Just something to keep in mind, I guess. Somebody asked, um, was there any chance of you suing them for using the word destiny? But I don't think you could take ownership <laughs> oh, on the word fuck? destiny. Yeah, trademark? Yeah. No. No. Not Candy Crush? Like, didn't, didn't they want to trademark the word candy? Wasn't that a thing that Jeez. happened? Like, wow. That's like the react I think they shit, saw it? as well, I think. I, I can't remember if it ever, I, I'm pretty sure it didn't pan out, but I the remember is, reading about that. The one thing about it, because I remember figuring to find out this from Better Call Soul of all things, um, is it if someone started up a stream and they relied on your SEO and used a lot of things that were similar but not the same as your stuff and called themselves Destiny, would you then have a case of being like they're probably, trying to probably depend on the level of similarities? I don't yeah, know. it's like a auto copyright for like likeness or whatever, so it would just depend. Some of them pushed boundaries, but in ways that didn't always seem significant. Like, oh, it's the first painting ever to be done with a fire extinguisher. Great. That was pretty cool. <laughs> with a fire extinguisher? I guess, well, I mean, like, it's this, is, this is the character that likes money, right? I think that's the point when this is happening here. I guess it is interesting to Denny, because, I mean, there's always a first, right? Snow White was the first theatrical animated film. And I guess you could be like, oh, that's a gimmick. It's like, well, <laughs> like, yes, it you is. know, like, it's, uh, don't do that. Don't say it's such things. Them got flipped. Bought cheap first time round, sold very expensive on the secondary market. These examples are the Seven Rain paintings by Lucian Smith, one of the most prominent zombie formalists, and they made him very rich. When they were exhibited in LA, they were accompanied by this description. Smith's work acts as a tangible moment, a chronicle of exploration as he negotiates with existence. He reminds us that an artist's trajectory- I feel like this is you with the red brick, the red squares. I'm not- I'm lost now as to whether no. or not this is the, um, the character- oh, the, the character being... or- Yeah, I'm not sure. I think, um, is this meant to be, because I thought the whole point of this particular movement was kind of like cynically tapping in, in into, uh, into like, you know, like art as a, as a commercial sector. Yeah, like, that's what I thought. And, and yeah. so in this case, there's something that was Jeez. created cynically that is still somebody looked at it and like had all of these meanings that they, they yeah, I was going to say, how do you tell it. the difference? So this, well, I, so this I, is her good. making fun of this reviewer of that work. I is assume it? that that's what I'm getting from this. I am I am yet to decide. I was gonna wait for more context clues. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, well, Bola, do you think that that statement is I, being I more? No, I don't. It's not that. It's I don't know from what POV that's happening. Is it philosophy right. tubes, or is it the character philosophy tube is playing, or is it a commentary on that cynical approach from that artist? On, uh, those those paintings, yeah. Okay, that's fine with me. I, I was just gonna say I was a little bit confused. Even remember what that said. Those words just slid off my brain. That that was pure bullshit. And yeah, a lot of philosophers and art critics Is actually it? said that at the time, or words to that effect. Okay. Interestingly, Lucian Smith himself has since come forward and kind of admitted it. 
The model that was well, that doesn't matter though, right? What if if that's uh, yeah, what people we did take this away from that piece? We yeah, we we th that's why I say I think this is this seems really weird considering what you said about the red square. Like, how come it's well, valid? I think it's just different. I don't think she's has made a statement of what her personal feelings are yet, right? I think these are all, yeah, like, I think that the format of this video is she's presenting, like, th different frameworks that can be used to figure out what the meaning of art is. So we had the first one, what the author intended. Second one, it's like, how does it make you feel? And then this is the third one, monetary. Like, what happens when the monetary factor is... Um, oh, she does represent so the... She's referencing... The money in i thought she was actually saying in that moment that this because she knew this was bullshit and they were doing that to be bullshit and so she's criticizing it on that format and oh, what I, I think that's what she's doing now yeah and what i was going like, to say is like well even if say for example i provide an interpretation of a film and then i was like he 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 i only said all that to be trolly and stuff but everyone found it to be incredibly meaningful it's like it's kind of evolved past me at that point isn't it i mean that's yeah like you can create something I mean, imagine like, yeah, like some guy is like, hey, you got to write a book. There's part of your contract, like for your multi-book deal or something. And it's like, ah, I'm not inspired. It's like, well, that's a deal. Figure it out. And he's like, ah, whatever. I'm just pump out and throw out this crappy thing. And then he throws it out and everybody's like, wow, this is like your greatest work. You know, this is your finest creation. What does it matter if he's like, yeah, but I didn't care. I was so cynical. I just like wrote it in a week oh. and threw it out. It's, that's like Thor Ragnarok, you know, not Thor Ragnarok, uh, Love and Thunder. Thor Love and Thunder, yeah. Yeah, if someone said, what? Taika, that's your greatest artwork of all time, he'd probably be like, Ugh. <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> How depressing that would be if yeah. that was the thing that he had the most. It's like, yeah, Jojo Rabbit was like, that was, yeah, but like, Thor, Love and Thunder. Uh, man. Top tier. Oof. Set for me when I was younger, it wasn't a healthy model. It was about sucking up to collectors and trying to sell for the highest prices. That stuff isn't real. That's not art. According to his website, hmm. Smith is now living in New York, making NFTs for a company called Lobus, which, I mean, if somebody had accused me of making worthless art just so that it could be sold to fools to make a lot of money, I, I, I probably wouldn't get into crypto, man. But even at its most cynical, people still had to act like the art had meaning. Part well, of the process. wait, that, so that's the problem. Were they acting? Maybe some of them were, but some of them might have genuinely, like, it might have prompted something. Well, no, it sounds like they're saying they acted because it was for a tax scheme, is what, they're, is what she's arguing. Oh. Uh, that's well, the, like, that the people who were, <laughs> That like, everybody buying... around them all had to act like it was worth something, otherwise they'd get, like, exposed for a tax fraud. Oh, something. right, I see. Like, you have, to, you have to at least perform that this is art so that, you know, people treat it as art rather than, like, a means of avoiding tax. I just like the idea that there's that one guy who's like... I do think it's good, though. And they're all like, yes, 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 good, yes. They're like, no, 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 seriously, I do. Yes, <laughs> so do we, of course. Yes, that's what I'm getting at. Surely in the discussion, there has to be some recognition that some of the people who are these high rollers buying these expensive artworks are in it for, like, genuine reasons. It's just like, yeah, I really like art and I got the means to access it. And, like, I like appraising art and, and being able to have it, own it, do stuff with it. Hmm. It's not weird things. So I was just I thinking about, I don't know, my mind's gone nuts with the whole, like, when you provide an interpretation, does it have death of the author apply to it too? Like you've got the source, and then you talk about what you think it means, and then someone takes that, and then you go, what I meant by that was this, and they go, no, I'm taking it for whatever I think it means now. I guess if you write an essay, like a book report on a book, and then you, you publish it, and then somebody takes that, yeah, I guess there would be death of the author yeah. in terms of your communication of that idea. Just, it just keeps going. Death of the going. author is a Mobius strip, I guess. Terrifying. It just keeps... The process of building hype around a new artist is convincing people that their work has something interesting to say. And zombie formalism didn't last, in part, because audiences and critics saw through it. Hmm. Other trends took its place, okay, right. including a trend for what you might... And people watch can't see through not... Marvel. Gosh. Eh. I watched mm. a video similar to this concept that had to deal with, um, with it, it was Carl Jobst, I think is his name. He, maybe it's Jobster, I don't know. But he, um, he did one on like retro games and that there was a whole essentially fake BS market behind appraisals and this sort of thing. But instead of oh. like paintings and stuff, there's a, it's like maybe. retro collectible gaming stuff. You make me think of the comic book crash because that was in part. Exactly that of, too. Yeah, yeah. Like, 
because of their perceived future value. Like, everybody wanted their action comics... Uh, wait, ah, damn it. They wanted their Detective Comics number one, or Action Comics one, or, like, Amazing Fantasy 13, I think it was, for Spider-Man. Uh, and, like, they wanted that. But then the problem is that you get X-Force 1 and 5 million people bought it. It's just never gonna... It's never gonna appreciate that. Like, people were in it more so for, like trying to make money off of you know selling comic books rather than just participating and reading comic books and that in mm -hmm. part you know it's like an unsustainable market at the end of the day like people need to be engaged with the work and interested in it otherwise it kind of can't support itself anymore i call woke art or art with social and political meaning yes it's a financial asset but people still want to stand in front of a painting and feel like they get it and I still do. Hmm, feel, feel like they get it. And that's kind of been the running through line. It seems what to the be. answer's gonna be if we're gonna get one. I, guess I think it's, I think, I guess I would say it's more fundamental, is like, people still want to feel something about art, even if they recognize it as like, I mean, I guess, right, like, it, it's not on the same level, but if you're like creating a collection of Blu-rays or something, or like you're getting box sets and things like that, like, you may recognize, ah, oh, man, this is a cool thing that I have, this collection that I'm building up, and hey, maybe I might sell a couple of these eventually if I need some money, or, like, you know, sell the whole set if I need it. But at the end of the day, I still would like to enjoy whatever it is that I own. Like, people who collect, you know, who have a huge collection of retro games, of course, the collection itself is of value to them, like, the collection itself, rather than the individual game. But, you know, the individual games can still be meaningful to them. I think but it I think yeah, what she's talking about uh, getting it. Or go ahead, finish. No, no, go for it. So I think what she's talking about getting it, she's meaning like standing in front of something and having a feeling evoked. I think that's what we mean she says gets it. Or, or like trying to understand what the other's trying to convey. I think a big problem with this, um, there's a really good TED talk by old piano player guy who was talking about how classical music, the, um, the vocabulary of classical music is kind of lost on modern day people because we just don't listen to a lot of it. And there's a phenomenon that happens where you listen to a piece of classical music and this happens with 99% of people, even though they won't admit it. You listen to a piece of classical music and it sounds okay, but you don't really get it. Like, it, it, I guess, like it's not amazing. It just, you hear it and it's eh, whatever. And I think people start to feel bad about it. Like, fuck, I don't, I don't really get this. You know, they're like, there are few... Because there's people who watch Blade Runner five times before they uh, are oh, finally yeah. understand it. <laughs> like, because it's a film that you're supposed to... Like, there, there's definitely That's that. what I'm saying, like, FOMO. I think FOMO explains to... a lot of it. Like it's, I think you're right. I don't know if it's you, FOMO. It's just more like a, you're watching dude, something... that one was FOMO. He, doesn't, he does not want to... He, he was, like, explicit. Oh, like, we, we are referencing a specific example uh, yeah, with okay. the Blade Runner one. Yeah, where it's like... There's there's a perception of this is of high quality. This is like the you know the, this is like a great work of this um, medium. And if yeah. you look at it, and it's like, ah, it doesn't really do anything for me. It's kind of like an unacceptable answer for some. Like you feel like it's an unacceptable answer, so you've got to keep watching it and trying to figure out like whether you get it rather than just accepting. Yeah, it's not for me. Like just oh, being okay. a little bit more confident in your preferences. I still think that's applicable to a lot of people as well. Just you don't want to watch them and everyone's enjoying it and having fun and getting all this meaning out of it. And you're like, I didn't get anything. What the fuck? What's going on? What's right, wrong with me? Part of the conversation. Yeah. It's kind of how this has been framed. This whole video is the, the, the solution to when you don't get it. What is it? It's tricky because there is kind of a cultural pressure with art, especially modern ah, art. See? Yeah. <laughs> there it is. There you go. And I know that there are some people who respond to that pressure by just denying that modern art can have meaning. They're like, oh, nobody really gets it. Why nobody does she really have so much reverb to this? To. I don't get it. I don't know why. Is it, it's wait, totally so unnecessary. Have we decided That's it's definitely part. not a part of the just the room she's in? Or? It's absolutely artificial. Really? You could, you could even you could hear the distortion in her voice, too. It's not even well done. Why would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> beginning, you know, so weird is like i've been in rooms before i know how rooms work if you're whispering to me and i'm right in front of you it's not going to echo for the whole all, all around us ambiently hmm. and they, seen it's even worse here me. oh you're right because if you were talking like this in an art gallery and it echoed like this how fucking annoying would that be like if yeah. you were just well, i guess you're supposed to oh, shut the fuck up in this art gallery okay yeah, no one's allowed to talk yeah, yeah i mean i know how rooms work you know what you've before. convinced me i do think that this is artificial now <laughs> because if it wasn't my god.
What a strange choice, but yeah, okay. They just pretend to. Yeah. And that's always seemed kind of cynical to me. Well, it, and, it, and it applied to somebody else talking in the background, too. They didn't... See, so someone someone else is talking, it gets hit with the same reverb. Oh, effect. Rags. Do you remember that Batwoman episode where they'd applied the Batwoman filter yes! to her voice, and then some random person talked between her saying something, and the filter had applied to his oh, voice. Yeah, they didn't yeah. cut out the filter for that other person's voice. <laughs> I do remember that, yeah. Uh, we're not going to get any more seasons of that show. No, <laughs> oh, we got to save her. We have to enjoy to every it. second we have Great. now. we got to squeeze as much blood from that stone as yeah. we can. We will finish it eventually. But we at will. At the same time, I do feel that pressure. Like, I, I feel like I should have opinions about Mark Rothko. I should be that kind of cultured person. But I guess if that's how I'm approaching it, then I'm not really engaging it's, with yeah, it's, it's I'm just not, worried about the kind of person that I feel I should be. Yeah. Like, oh, what if I get invited to a party and I say the wrong thing about Mark Rothko and I make a fool of myself? Man, I would, if that, what this party? just seems like a really lame way to engage with uh, with. Uh, but is it a uh, reality? It? Damn. Well, it's a reality of your own making. Uh, which maybe that's the revelation at the end here. It's like, yeah, I don't I need to do so. Well, almost You're describing like the FOMO, right? The idea that like everybody enjoys some particular piece of art, but you don't get it, and now you feel like you're missing something, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, we're saying that um, that's that maybe the conclusion of the video at this point is that's that's yeah. what it's all about. That, not necessarily strictly about FOMO, just that the it's a it, it says something about you. That's what it all is. Well, all of our when you go is. on an art trip to a gallery and you get presented these paintings that just seem like pointless, be bold enough to say, "Yeah, I don't, I don't like it." Fuck yeah! <laughs> I want to, I want to bold in those people. Do it. I wonder, what it. I wonder what it means that this painting, this whole blank, this red canvas. Just be brave enough to say, like, ah, and then go walk off and go look at <laughs> something else that you like more. Open up Twitter. And be like, this is a better way to spend my time than an art gallery. I can complain about Star Wars. Mm -hmm. A silly way to approach it, because even if I got everything there was to get about Rothko, there's thousands of other artists here that would confront me with that same anxiety. If you come to art looking for a stick to beat yourself with, then you're probably going to find it. So maybe we should ask a different question, which is, what is the point of trying to get it. Right. I hope you have a good answer because it seems... When I was a child, to... we studied Macbeth in English class. If you don't know it, it's about a guy who murders the king and steals the throne. And there's a running theme in the play about Is this clothing. a dagger I see before me? People say that Macbeth is wearing somebody else's clothes as a metaphor for him stealing the crown. They say that his new title doesn't fit him. It hangs loose about him like a giant's robe upon a dwarfish thief. Macbeth is all about wow, the Wow, racist. And I, being a little wise ass, put up my hand and said, Miss, did Shakespeare really intend to put that in there? And there's two ways of asking that question. The first is, did the actual man, William Shakespeare, actually sit down in 1606 and have the thought, I am going to use a clothing metaphor in my new play. And then I'm going to send a bunch of flirty sonnets to someone and make them wonder whether I'm bisexual. Oh, we haven't done one of them in a while. Yeah, yeah this is really, it's, they're, they're real bangers. Why There's no way we can know whether he thought that without a time machine and a mind reader. But the second way of asking the question is, do we get more out of the play if we assume that the clothing metaphor is intended? Do we enjoy it more? Does it prompt us to some interesting reflections if we assume that we are meant to notice it? If we just go, nah, that's just a coincidence, uh, don't worry about it, then are we missing Well, wait. This is that, you go it's ahead. not your only other option. Because, like, ah, it's a coincidence, don't worry about it. It's like, ah, it's a coincidence, let's talk about it, though. You know? Yeah, that's what you, I guess we, we usually... We that, usually, right? If we have, like, an interpretation like that on some movie or whatever, we'll usually be like, ah, this probably wasn't intended, but who cares? It's there. Yeah, if... It, it, we often say if, if we watch something really, really bad and the writer is clearly not talented at writing, <laughs> and we oh, see right, something yeah. like this, we're like, oh, that... That might be intentional, but it, it's probably a coincidence. But it, it's, it's still there. The thing's still there. But yeah. you know, I don't know how much credit to assign to you, but that's a different thing. 
The philosopher Alan Goldman says that the point of interpreting art is to maximize its artistic value. Now, what exactly is artistic value? Well, maybe that's another story for another time. But his point. I... Oh, I feel like it's really important though. Um... This is the video <laughs> for it, you know? I feel like this is not a story for another time. This is it, man. Of the, for this video right at the beginning it's like right so here's some definitions if you agree with this we can progress and we can talk about it rather than you don't well yeah. <laughs> we, need to we need when we're interpreting art we need to maximize its artistic value i'll talk about that not now yeah talk we'll do that, that later oh. not in this video well, on the meaninglessness of art but... anyway. <laughs> mm. oh. a story for another time well so and this is the thing i mean with this far so i feel like you can make some conclusions this is like okay for pop philosophy, but it's terrible to actually explore the topic in any meaningful way, I think. Yeah, it's, I'd be um, curious to ask, you know, if we if we got a hundred people who watch this and we asked them, you know, tell me about it, what, what was said in it, I don't know if we'd really get a concise through line of what was pulled from this. I mean, the vague thing would be it was presenting a couple of perspectives, but a lot of them were very quick and um, they, they presented more things to dig into, but they didn't really go any further than uh, the surface, which, you know, I just would have thought if your focus is philosophy, you're going to want to do your best to be boxing it down. And then I suppose there isn't a strict answer to this one, and that's part of the point. But uh, so many things were left unanswered and uncompared. At least so far. Maybe yes. they'll fit it all in in the last, how long have we got? It's like seven minutes. Maybe. I think is our, uh, I think our discussion is far is more not helpful. It's not a com competition. It's not about being right. But then how do we know that Charles is wrong about Pale Fire? Because if he's right, then the poem isn't good. Whoa. Oh. oh. <laughs> um, ooh. Well, that is, I do not know if that's as weighty as you think it is. I suppose we'll find out. Well, it's how loaded that is, right? There's so much That's a very it. loaded, yeah. Especially after the sentence before it was, it's not a competition about figuring who's right or wrong, but... If he's wrong, it's not good. It's, it's like, oh, good. that seems consequential. Dude, like, throwing yeah. the word good like into this video is well, a nightmare. Yeah. Well, well, I don't think we've had the word good at all, like any, like, good or bad. We've only ever had correct or incorrect readings yeah. of it. But yeah, like, good. Oh, what does that mean when we're talking about the meaning of art, fundamentally? John Shade leaves behind this amazing work. He writes about being an old man at the end of his life and what it was like to lose his daughter, and it's really, really moving. If we assume, as Charles does, that, oh, well, that stuff doesn't matter, it's really all about him, well, then it's kind of a waste. Ooh. Oh, I'm that's sorry you feel that way. I'm really sorry it... that that's how you view these things. That like, must be awful. This character is philosophy tube now, right? It's not like um. I think so. I think, I think this, this is, is yeah, a perspective the creator, on, yeah. Uh, on this. Because, yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's dodgy to be like, the interpretation is worse if uh, if it's to be taken this direction versus this direction. Especially if you consider the or even valid. if it's, I even It almost seems like if it isn't, like, if you know the answer, then it's a waste. Okay, wait, can you back, yeah. up, like 35, back up like 35 seconds and play this whole segment? So this. <laughs> yeah, this is... A competition. It's not about being right. But then how do we know that Charles is wrong about Pale Fire? Because if he's right, then the poem isn't good. John Shade leaves behind this amazing work. He writes about being an old man at the end of his life and what it was like to lose his daughter. And it's really, really moving. If we assume, as Charles does, that, oh, well, that stuff doesn't matter. It's really all about him. Well, then it's kind of a waste. That's what makes Charles a tragic character. He's so lost in his own mess that he can't see the true value of what John has made. As for me... Mm. Well, so I don't, I don't see how that answer changes anything. Like the, like how do we, because the claim was, if the author's perspective on what the story is about is correct, then it's not good. It's like, that doesn't, that doesn't change anything about what is in the story, though. Like, the story uh, with these characters. Or that like, which you even said about... On... I, think it would, I think it just... I think it feels like one of those things where it's like... I could be wrong, because I don't remember now. Because um, it was a long time ago when this video was brought up. Or when we listened to it. But, like, um, 
It's, it's almost like if you make it to the end of a story or whatever, or maybe you finish a story and then the author's just like, oh yeah, that story, it was all a dream. And that's why it was the way it was. You can kind of feel like it cheapens it or it's like, oh, well, if that's the case, this is dog shit. Or like, this isn't interesting anymore. Or well, if Nolan actually came out and he said like, oh yeah, when that spinning top wobbled, um, we ran out of money to film the last five seconds, but it falls over. Like, yeah, he's in the real world. Like, if that's the case, oh, well, that's actually kind of shitty. That's actually not that cool. Or do you remember actually at the end of Shutter Island, do you remember the quote that Leonardo DiCaprio says to um, the other guy? About the what he said he says I like is it better that. is it better to die a good man or to live a monster yeah imagine if the guy comes out and he says oh if you look really early at the beginning um he actually just sees that quote in a book or whatever and he just like says it because his character's just kind of like wandering it but he's actually crazy again oh well okay well that makes the ending really dog shit if that's oh, actually I, I, the case, right but i guess the thing is you can always just disagree with that and say like well i think because it's not right, you, right. could, you could disagree with that and try to draw other meaning out of it but like if it's true and if you take that to be the case and oh well it does kind of cheap out i think but you, I, yeah but i guess that's the thing is you don't have to take it to be the case because it is beyond the material like if he says well it fell over it's like i didn't see that like you said that but i didn't see that in the film so yeah sure I, but i, I, I mean you probably agree you could read it differently but like if it was the case that that was true and then you believed it that would kind of cheapen the thing it sounds like um, that's kind of what you're saying does it sure, not just cheapen but, but, that but, framing, though? I don't understand, like, how we can define one interpretation as just better than the other one. Are we going with, like, it's more detailed or deeper for It thought? sounds like, I don't remember the beginning of the what this was explaining, but it almost sounds like, let's say that I, let's say that my child dies, and I write, like, a very touching story about the death of my child, and all the parents and everybody reads it, and even people that don't have children relate to it, like, wow, this is so beautiful. And then later on, I come out and I say, like, holy shit. Uh, this was actually just about a, a game of League of Legends where I fed super hard. And I like all the things are an analogy for the different stages of a League of Legends game that I lose. Well, somebody might look back at the story of that and be like, oh, fuck. Well, this is like fucking dog shit now. Hold on. I didn't know this was an allegory for a fucking game of League. I thought this was like a beautiful story. It sounds like that's the argument that she's kind of making. Well, we should tie it back to the statement which preceded it, though, which is it's not a competition about who's right. And then, she, and then the response was, but what about if this interpretation then? Like, what if we don't fight about it? And then she says, well, then it's not good. It's like, oh, so there is a reason to fight for like what you believe to be the correct reading of a story then. Well, sure, but that's kind yeah. of what the whole video is exploring, right? What is meaning or what is the correct way well, to interpret things? I, like, I guess what I'm saying is, if the claim is it's not a competition, but you should, but like, it's not about who's right, but if, if this is uh, the conclusion we come to, then it's not good. It's like, so it is about like trying to, ascertain some truth i guess or at the very least like fight to nudge interpretations of stories in a direction that we want so there is a point to having these discussions and fighting about whether you think you're right or wrong well i mean i imagine there's some point she made a video on it right it's a 40 minute video <laughs> i mean i imagine she thinks there's some point no, people yeah. can well, talk sure, a long time well, sure, that, that's the case, but, like, what is the conclusion that we've seemed to arrive at here? Yeah, I was like, going to say, do you really feel like everything we've seen so far supports that position? Because I don't. Supports which position? The position that there are interpretations that are superior to others. Um, I don't know if she's given a conclusion on it yet. It seems like so far she's been exploring. She just said it. Things. Yeah, she, said she just that it, made the statement. If it's an interpretation, then the story isn't good. Therefore, the other interpretation This is like the whole the issue we're taking. It's, it's weird to waste. hear from Philosophy Tube that there could be two people with interpretations of a story and that one of them is just better than the other. Yeah. Even though, they, even though like, they okay, both, I might, maybe I'm, I, yeah, I might be misinterpreting, but it, it still sounds like it's all like an exploration of different ways of looking at. It. I don't know if she's given like this is the answer. I don't. Oh, yeah, different will. ways. One being wrong. Do you, do you some believe being that? Wrong. You believe that on this statement where she says, if this interpretation is correct, the book isn't good. That that isn't like her perspective on on that story, like her definitive perspective on that story. I mean, it sounds like she's saying that like if there was a different interpretation, it, that interpretation makes it sound far more hollow, shallow, and less meaningful. Well, than not that it doesn't. It's wrong, and it has doesn't no make word. it sound that it, that, it's, it, that it is less good. It is not as it's not good, is what yeah. she said. Yeah, so I think that's I think it, would it sounds like that. it's not if it, if it was a story just about himself as opposed to like the meaningful, touching story of his grandfather dying, then it sounds like that's one is like way more self aggrandizing and not as interesting, whereas the other yeah. is way more interesting. That's so totally think, fine as like a perspective that she's yeah. sharing, but it's more so that's that I thought that, I thought we just said that we're not meant to be fighting about like which perspective is correct or not. And I also thought that the conclusion that we were drawing from this is that it's actually incredibly difficult to like ascertain the meaning of anything when it comes to the, like this art. And how do we factor in what somebody intended versus how it makes us feel personally? Like, should we? It seems incongruent with the whole tone of this um this video so far to make any definitive statements on like the quality of a yeah, story. I mean. This was a plot twist to me. I never expected her to say this. <laughs> exactly. This is uh, an unexpected statement.
given everything that's been in the video so far. Okay. Yeah, these are very very strongly worded uh, that, that it's that the that it's that it's bad, that it's a waste. And especially after after talking about how emotional it's Oh yeah, it's a waste. Was. What does that mean? That a story yeah. is a waste. I like I, based on everything we've talked about so far, that seems like a conclusion that you wouldn't that a story can be a waste if the author's interpretation is correct. Even though we're not meant to be fighting about whether or not any of these perspectives are right or wrong, but you think that if you're right, that it's a waste. Like, hmm. It's a very definitive statement to make, given that this whole video has been like about not really and coming to any sound, to... strong conclusions on any given, you know, argument. That's why I was looking to clarify to make sure this wasn't a character again. I'm pretty sure this is conclusion time. Like, this is philosophy tube. Rather than, um, you know, a, a, a POV character. And Rothko... I can try to put together all the different ideas that we've looked at today. I can bear in mind what Susan Sontag said about not intellectualizing things too much. I can remember that the process by which art gets exhibited is often a financial thing rather than an arbiter of its meaning, so I don't have to feel pressured by that. And I can also try to think about what Rothko himself might have intended or felt. Not so I but that's not even a really good explanation for the the art gallery thing. Like it can be for this reason, so I shouldn't care about it. It's like no, there there are other reasons that we talked about the whole the pre the pressure thing. Like it's weird that you in your recap of that went with the the the, the cynical art zombie stuff instead of the more it, you know the more personal feelings that had not to be pressured. Or being pressured in into certain way, yeah. stuff or it's yeah. Like, odd way to recap all, that whole point, but yeah. I can re reconstruct his brain but so I can see whether I can also feel those things. I'm looking for new experiences when I go to his art. I'm trying to grow and develop as a person rather than trying to get it. Seems like a... Wait, wait, wait. So you're not... How are these two distinct things? Is that not well, part of what getting it is? Is learning the interpretation of a piece part. and... Does this answer the the question, or even come close to being like the question, is art meaningless? That statement just there, about like, I'm, I'm not, it's not about, I'm not trying to intellectualize it, I'm just going to experience it. It's like, what does that have to do with whether it has meaning or not? I thought that was the, why we're here. Presumably, does art that meaning? is art's meaning, to experience it. Art's meaning is to experience, so that's the art's answer, meaning art's is meaning to is to experience it. it. Art's meaning is to experience it. I can believe that's I mean, the point, the part of the, at least part of the point she wants to. I mean, you know, you kind of summarize that like a lot of this, all these different metrics have loads of issues that poke mm -hmm. holes in them to the point of throw it, not necessarily throw it all out, maybe even keep it all in and thus. Maybe there are parts of each one that have something, you know, valuable to offer. Or it's like prisms, I guess. As I've been writing my play, I've had to deal with a lot of these questions and be in the room with actors as they try to interpret the characters that I have written. By the time you're watching this, rehearsals will already have started. I know that a lot of you already have tickets and I cannot wait to share The Prince with you. I am so, so excited. It is a dream come true to be able to make art. And I, I, hope it's better I just wanted in this to video. say thank you to all of you basically, because without Philosophy Tube, I'd never have been able to do this. <laughs> and I also wanted to make sure that even if you can't come to London and see it live, you can still experience it. So there's a streaming service called Nebula, where you'll be able oh, to watch wait, is this, professional wait, wait, It sounds like we're going into an ad. I was actually about to say, I don't know if the video edited or not. I guess we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> keep going. We'll give her a chance. So in our, All right. I was wondering, in, in order to... So, so would she want us to know how she intends for the art to be uh, interpreted or to know the in her intentions of the play would, would you know is that something yeah, we should it was, know we, we should it was mentioned at one point in the video right uh, um, it was going to be about the royal family but it ended up being about something so should we that, that would be an interesting question to ask her is like do you think that I should factor in anything you said in this video about your play like what I think about your play I think she would say factor in whatever the hell you want well, don't right. Yeah, thanks. You're, this is this whole yeah. video sounds more like an exploratory. Like here are things to think about than anything else of the play. Unlike YouTube, Nebula doesn't have ads uh, or yeah. algorithms yeah. or demonetization. <laughs> it's owned by Nebula. the creators who work on it, like me. 
So it's a place where we can put the experimental, unusual stuff that Wait, wouldn't so that, work that's the end, here then. on YouTube. No more. Like it my might play. be. Give us and it. also like the behind-the-scenes be documentary the end, that the Philosophy Tube crew thing. made last year about how this show comes together. Fans of Philosophy Tube can get a special deal on Nebula. If you sign up to Curiosity Stream using philosophy my special video. link, well, like I said, I think it, um, all of her stuff is kind of pop philosophy. That's what she does. Well, well I was going to say, I think so it even suffers of being pop philosophy. Year, not a month. Well, that's kind of how pop philosophy year, works. It always does suffer. <laughs> well, do you think it could be done well, or at least better? Well, I don't know. A lot of philosophy people on YouTube and in the world argue that. That's why people don't like, well, that's why scientists don't like pop scientists. And pop scientists don't like normal scientists because they're dog shit communicators, which is true. Normal scientists are dog shit communicators. You, so. Well, I would say that this video has not been the greatest example of communicating your thoughts and ideas. Uh, no, let us say. Effectively. Uh, well, surely by the fact sure, that you're the saying... the problem with pop stuff is it's usually like, it sacrifices a lot of intellectual integrity for um, curiosity or entertainment. So I would say that this purpose accomplishes its goals insofar as it's entertaining, and maybe it'll provoke some people to dig further, hopefully. But I mean, like, if you come away from this thing, you've got a good understanding of meaning and art, probably not a good thing. Well, because that's the thing. I'd be curious to poll your audience as to the what if they could write a paragraph would be what they concluded from the video. I'd be interested to see what uh, kind of answers you get. And everything on Curiosity Stream, including this little documentary about what happened to Picasso's estate after he died. It's a fascinating little insight into the finances of the art world. Considering that you can get both Nebula and Curiosity Stream for a year for like less than what Netflix costs a month, I think that's a pretty sweet deal. And you'll also be helping me bring my dream to life on a professional London stage. So go to curiositystream.com slash philosophy tube and sign up for the bundle today. And I will see you very, very soon at the theater. Okay. Oh, so, that's yeah. it. Right. Oh, okay. that was the end. Oh, all right. Well, well <laughs> that was a bad video. Um... Yeah, I mean, I just, I, I don't know. It, it, uh, I think that my biggest issue would just be throwing a, a few too many words in without defining them, because uh, it makes yeah, sense. Yeah, the, the bomb at the end about something being a waste and not good is like, whoa, that's, like, you can't just drop that without an explanation. Like, a thing's bad if it, it doesn't match a particular interpretation or... If, or well, if I still feel like the reason why is because the other interpretation was going to be dog shit, right? That, like, without the context of it, this is what it's really about, is, like, his relationship with his grandfather. It just, whatever it was, if, if you interpret it the other way, it just becomes, like, this incoherent, schizo-rambling bullshit that doesn't really have as much meaning. Well, it was um, the, the, but, the guy who was interpreting that the poems were about him and that the guy was possibly in love with him or whatever. I... Surely. I thought it was the one with the, the relationship with his grandfather or something is how it was being interpreted. Well, uh, whichever the... When you have two interpretations, because, like, my concern, I thought uh, we were sort of on the same page with this, was that as long as the references match, it's, like, valid, and how interesting it's going to be at that point, I just I find that really difficult to, like, put on a scale. Uh, if we're going to just be like, I don't know, is Star Wars more interesting than Lord of the Rings? It's like, uh, I don't know, maybe... How, how are we ranking these? And if you want to be like, yeah, but we can tell when it's, you know, what's more interesting, a, I don't know, a ball rolling down a hill versus Star Wars. It's like, Star Wars, obviously, right? And it's like, are we going by like, the individual? And then, uh, I don't know, like, it, it just feels really weird to say that one interpretation is just definitively better because it's more interesting. Um, well, I guess, like, well, what... I, so did you guys, we all, everyone in here liked that Everything Ever All at Once movie, right? Yeah. Yes. If you come away from that movie and you are like, it was, it was kind of like an okay superhero movie, I would say you have a dog shit interpretation of the movie, right? You kind of missed the whole point, right? Now, that is a valid interpretation. Not only is it a valid interpretation, a direct reading of the movie actually gives you that. That's what it is. It's a kind of like a superhero multiverse movie. But like, if, that, if you walk away and that's your ultimate interpretation, man, what a... But if, that well, moment. so if that's someone... kind of the point, though, is um, that I guess is like we would fight over what people say about movies. It seems like the conclusion that we've drawn here at the end of the video, though, is that like anything can be anything, you know? Was that? Like, I thought that was, what? I thought there were a lot of different things presented that like either anything and anything or like the author's intent is important or intellectualizing things are bad. I don't think this, again, I could be wrong, but I don't think the video went on to make strong statements about how you should interpret things, just that there are like a ton of different ways, theoretically, that you The strongest part was where she said that there's some interpretations that are just good and some are bad. Um, but well, I don't think it was that some are bad. I think it was in reference to that particular piece of media. 
I think that it if like you're gonna, piece of media was really if weird. You're gonna use that only if you you agree that if you're going to declare that one interpretation of even a singular piece of media is good by comparison to another, then that opens up the floodgates. There is good and bad ways to interpret media. Well, yeah, I mean, I like think everything. anybody would agree there's probably good and bad ways to interpret media. Ex no, I, I completely agree. Mm -hmm. She did that at the end and didn't elaborate. Yeah. In a video called Is Art Meaningless? To... That's absurd. Yeah. You just drop that at the end and that's the, the video's over. And I feel like, no, you've just this is... opened this up. Maybe this to help you out, like, I actually... Maybe she was doing all of this just to provoke thought in you. <laughs> well, that's my... That, that's, oh, that's meta. This is a Rothko oh. painting of a video. There you go. Maybe, or maybe, maybe it was the capitalist version. She just did this because she knew it would make the most money. Um, mm. That's probably true to some degree. Because, yeah, if a lot of people can interpret their own conclusions, then it's going to be better than if you told them too many things in stone. Um, well, yeah, you, you've given everybody something to where they can uh, walk maybe. away like, I learned something. It, whereas you didn't make any, like, real definitive statements. And so it's the least defensive thing ever. Because you didn't say anybody was wrong, except right at the end, when you said that that interpretation was bad. Or like that it's worse than the other one. Yeah, just to just to clarify, if you pulled apart your own statement about that person having a dog shit interpretation of everything ever all at once, if they said, What do you mean by that? That like like objectively I do, you'd be like, No, I just think that my point of view of the film and what it's about is way more interesting than yours. And then they go, To you? And then you'd be like, Yeah. And then they go, Oh well I don't care. I think like, what oh. I would say is there is a plethora of media to choose from that would give you that interpretation and that if you are going into a movie like that and that's what you're walking out with, you've wasted your time watching that movie. There are a lot of other movies made for people like you that you could appreciate probably more because as a superhero movie, it kind of sucked. There are way better superhero movies. If you're only watching a superhero movie, you're missing like 95% of the subtext of the film or, or, or the, the actual text. I think it film. does better as a superhero movie than a lot of the stuff that comes out these days as well, if, even on that track. But I, I understand what you're saying. I mean, in terms of, like, if I just want to watch, like, epic superhero shit, yeah. I'm not getting, like, yeah, it's a way different type of experience, right? Um, yeah, that's, that's why I would say that, like, if, if that's your interpretation of the movie, then, like, damn, what a waste of, like, you just... You, they're well, I guess, to watch. but, like, that wasn't... That kind of wasn't, like, we didn't really talk about that much in terms of, like, thinking about what it is that you want to get out of something. Like, we focus on, do I get it? It's like, but what about what do well, you want to get question. out of it personally? Yeah, I think that's um, the same question. Is like, do I get it? What am I getting out of this? Like, what, am I understanding it? Am I engaging with it in the way that it's meant to be? Right. Supposed to? Yeah, hmm. actually, yeah, true. All right then. Um, is it all right? <laughs> <laughs> Destiny, if you want to. No, wanna, fail. If you want to, if you want to get out of here, I, I don't blame you. Okay. We'll play a little yeah, like I made it the whole way this time. Are you? You actually right? did. Well, we do super chats next, but um, we usually offer that the well, guests can. Once, right? Fuck you. Yeah. Jump out. Wait, what? Fuck you, I said. But I love you. Okay. Well, hey, thanks for having me on. It's been fun. Stay safe. Be careful, guys. You too. Yeah, you bet. Good luck mm -hmm. with whatever you too, it is buddy. you get up to next in life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Be careful, bitch. Bye-bye. You too. Toodaloo. See you. Bye-bye-bye. See you later. There he goes. And then there were three. Yes. Um, and I know that even our audience would be much more interested in watching us break down Rings of Power or She-Hulk or... Covering a video that uh, maybe is from Movie Bob, where he references me. And don't you worry, all of those oh are on the way. But I think it's good oh to get um, almost what you could call these like 101 videos every once in a while. We, we've done streams like this before, where we talk, try and, try and talk a bit about the fundamentals. But I think we do get asked about this in the form of Super Chats every once in a while. So we can refer to these if there are people out there who really want to know. Because... That was that was several hours of us trying to tear apart every last fundamental word that relates to all of like, well, everything to do with art and meaning, right? Like, there's not much more we can do with that, especially being layman, because I am not a philosopher. I don't know about you guys. Thank um, God I'm not. Last thing, not exactly a profession I was looking to become, but at the same time, not impressed by this philosophy. I'm assuming philosophy tube identifies as a philosopher. I, I don't know. Well, I, I mean, if you're philosophy tube, maybe I don't know. I, Presumably, I I expect better. Yes, um, the video was a little bit incoherent for me, but um, yeah, very. A lot of it was very empty. A lot of things were said, but you couldn't really pull anything useful out of it. Well, very I up, very un unhelpful, I would say. What I ever find bizarre almost is that um, I always end up feeling like we are kinder to the interpretation side of things than some some of the videos we cover that I would expect to have even more lenient perspectives than us. Like, um, 
I don't know, like, like, it's so weird to categorize interpretations as good or bad on a scale uh, when you're not referring to accuracy of references, just how interesting your thought oh, is. Yeah, yeah, ex that's exactly. So yeah. Like, um, what are we appealing to as our core framework? I don't know. But, uh, hey, it can't be said that we never covered a video like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I find comfort in the... Uh, in the intellectualizing of art, but at the same time, I'm always happy to entertain. Uh, we we do this every once in a while. I think where a scene or a, even a line of dialogue, it'll give off a feeling, and we're still trying to figure out what it is. Because um, that's like step one, the whole like experience, and it's like if someone said, "Yeah, you don't have to intellectualize," it's like, "Oh, but I want." Mm -hmm. A lot of the time, anyway. <laughs> what if that's just your, you know, personal? What if that's is. the meaning that you pull from it, is intellectualizing it? I suppose I consider that a positive. Are you guys ready to just, uh, do some super chats? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds fun. Let me, uh, let me grab a drink here. Well, actually. Mm. I don't want to hear any yeah, clanging of pots and pans. <laughs> I, will, I will make sure to. I will make sure to clang and cling. And plonk. Mosey, All the watch, pans. watch Lost chronologically and do a critique. That's like seven seasons or six. It's one of those two. My critique was it was it made me feel really something. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh wait. So am I starting up, or are you still getting a drink? I'm guessing. I think oh, that Violence. what. What? No, I'm here. I'm here. I'm talking. Right. We're having the chat. Did you, did you right get now. it? We thought you were getting a drink. Yeah. No, Beverly, no. I was. Call it. Well, I was thinking about it, and then I checked, and you're like, "Oh, then you said the whole pots and pans thing, and then I we got we got swept up in that, and now here we are." So, yep. Does this mean you are getting a drink still, or does it mean you are not getting a drink? This means that you know Could what? I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Oh, there I'm you gonna. Go. Well, there is there is another interpretation, but that would make this entire conversation a waste and bad. I will not explain to you any details regarding those very strong statements I just made. So, I'll be back in a moment. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, there's so much clanging. Don't go doing it on purpose, because we pointed it out, okay? I was gonna say, it doesn't really feel the same way if it's done on purpose, does it? No, it's it's kind of like um, what's like when someone accidentally makes a bad movie, and then they kind of like when they make their little sequel, they they make a they try to make it bad, and it's like, oh man, the beauty was in it being yeah. shit accidentally. That probably should have come up at some point. Like, um, a lot of the time, it's because you can tell. It's not even knowing the intentions of uh, skirted over to trying to be bad. It's that you can just there's something about it in the execution because. It was that, um, do you, you ever see that TV show that Tommy Wiseau made called Neighbors, no. I think? I think CJ reviewed it, that's how I know about it, but it's like, it's an it's a different kind of awful, because, uh, I don't know if you remember right, but The Room, there are production values in The Room that are kind of like shocking, in terms of how inept the script and the performances are, they're still like, because it's, it's like shot on film, right? And, um, it looks like there were people he hired who knew at least some things about how to make a movie. Um, he spent a shit ton of money on it, as far as I remember, too. Right. But, uh, yeah, that TV show is, like, horrible. And, uh, yeah, you start to wonder if it was done on purpose to try and relive the glory days of people hating your work, I guess. Or, well, having fun with it. <laughs> yeah. Um, He's still getting his... Well, maybe we should just begin, commence... Well, yeah, nope. okay. All right. <laughs> just, uh, e Hulk's feet never ceases to amaze me. Hmm. All right. What do you think of Adam Driver in talks for being Doctor Doom? Keep up the long work, long man. Hail doggo goo. He's a great actor, but I don't know what I'm, it's Marvel. Adam Driver right is Doctor Doom. Do you, do you not see it or? <laughs> I don't know. That's one of those ones where I'm not sure. Chat, how do we feel about that? As an idea, too young. That's probably true. Then again, how old is Adam Driver now? I think he's in his late thirties, right? He's kind of older. 
than you might expect. He has the voice for it. Um, yeah, I, guess, I wonder if it would evoke too much Kylo Ren, though, you know? Why, well, right, because it's another masked villain. Hmm. I don't know. I, I mean, you got a lot of great choices for a lot of characters, it's, but, you know. <laughs> Who knows? Um, Muller, I wanted to get your thoughts down on this quickly, but what did you think of King Kong 2005, and what would you cite as its main writing problem, if it has any? It's been way too long since I've seen it to be able to give a stronger answer to that. I know, obviously, everyone's complaints back in the day when they were watching it was that it was, like, too long or too slow. I remember the meme was just, it takes like an hour to get to Skull Island. That fact alone seemed to be enough to criticize it. But obviously now I'm thinking, like, if I go and watch it, I wonder if that build up to Skull Island is really good or not. I can't remember. Is it meaningful? Is yeah. it necessary? Um, but I remember liking the film, so you got that much. Uh, has a film ever made you weep, i.e. Schindler's List? Hmm, weep. Meaning, like, drop a few tears, but not quite cry? Is that what we would define for that? Probably, like, a good number of, of things, actually. Yeah, it's not exactly an impossibility. The, 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 what that would be. I mean, I, I think we've been over it before, but when you get several amazingly funny jokes in a row, I can be brought to that position again as well. Yeah. I've, I've been at that point on Gothic phone before. Weep is a cry? I don't think, this is the thing, I think we've talked about this before, it's like, as far as I understand how crying would be perceived, it's like, I don't think I've ever cried from a movie, or from a piece of entertainment. Um, but, uh, tears popping out of them eye holes, yes, it can happen. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm back. usually, are you looking forward to the new God of War coming out in November? Yes. Looking forward to streaming it, too. Bun on the bun. I'm gonna meet up with Odin, Thor, Ear, and a whole bunch of other Norse fleems. It'll be good. Uh, when are the 200 Super Chats gonna be ready? Love ya. So, as has uh, been notable from, from the EFAP audience, I'd imagine, we've had a bit of difficulty with uh, covering everything, and we've already doubled up EFAP episodes a couple of times, and then there was the thing that happened with my PC, so... Just we're just trying to find the ne very next slot possible. We will uh, we will we will sort them out because um, yeah we didn't even manage like last EFAPs got added on to the backlog because we ended up spending nearly twelve hours on two episodes of TV. You know how it goes, but um, Wednesdays are gonna start being catch ups again as soon as we don't fill them because the thing is we got an EFAP episode for next Wednesday, not a, right. not a regular catch up. This uh, we'll do what we can. As fast as we can. But it'll all be, uh, when it releases on the Moolah channel, it'll be labeled. You'll be able to find it once it's up. Um, I think I know what's going to happen. Illumination is not going to use the original designs. They're going to use completely different characters and say it's the Mario characters. Uh, wait. Could you say that again? The Sorry? Chris Pratt movie? They're saying the Illumination is not going to use the original designs. They're going to use completely different characters and say it's the Mario characters. You, really? They're not going to use... I, I don't see that. I would imagine that if you were going to make a Mario movie that you would want to, like, retain a lot of the iconography of the games. And, like, Mario at this point for the last 20 years has had a very, like, well-defined look. Same with Peach, Luigi, the world. I Look, I will say, if they do actually make, like, changes like that, that will probably make me hate that movie less because I can see myself despising it. Something I've realized... The more that I think about it is like, man, I know that we all like to meme about Mario and everything. Like it's a really easy memeable, like because of its place in like pop culture. But Mario is like really great um, and actually fairly important to me. I think it's something that I, I'm, uh, I've i been realizing more and more. Like a lot of my favorite games are Mario games. Um, that's that's like a, that's a series that I value. And I think if if this film is going to be what I think it will be, uh, given who's making it, um, I guess given like the climate that we're in, I uh, I could like I don't know I could see myself really hating that movie um, if it if it's like trying to in part like leverage uh, more of the recognizable like Mario things. They should adjust. It would never happen, but. God damn, they should have just made 
They should have just made a Mario movie with no dialogue, or the only dialogue is, woohoo! Like, and, and stuff like that, and actually done something unconventional. Like a pantomime, like, Mario movie. Or Chris Pratt. No, but you need your celebrity voices. You need your celebrity voices. You couldn't get you couldn't get Charles to to reprise the character that he's been playing and who he helped define for like thirty five years. How long? How many? I want to see Chris Pratt. At least, at least twenty years. At, no, more than tw- at least twenty five, twenty six years. Like a goddamn quarter of a century. This man has has been the voice behind Mario. Ah, uh, he gets the little cameos though. He doesn't get to play because we can't put his name on the poster. To attract people to watch a Mario movie. Like, as if there wouldn't be a, a broad appeal for that. I think that's what I find surprising. That, like, there, seem, there must be, like, this perception um, that, like, a Mario, a Mario movie wouldn't have enough broad appeal. Um, I mean, I wasn't interested wasn't. until I found out Seth Rogen is Donkey Kong, okay? That was, like, the main draw for me. Uh, Seth Rogen is Donkey Kong... Jack Black is Bowser. <laughs> King and Michael Key is Toad. That's such a. It's, it still feels so parody-ish uh, to me. It feels so rancid. That was about a year ago, as well, that that got announced. And hey, the film's coming out in April, and we're getting our first trailer in like a week or two weeks, I think. Excited? Um, can you imagine? No, I'm, not, I'm kind of dreading it. Morbidly curious, what they're gonna do. I'm not. <laughs> I'm upset. I think no matter what, I'm gonna be upset about it. It's like if someone said, hey, you know, over over in that closet or, or not even over in that closet, like, hey, you know, if you open the blinds, there, there's a dead body out there. You'd be like, hmm, I kind of want to see. It's not something you get to see every day, a dead body. You know, they made movies about going to see dead bodies. Yeah, I might want to go check it out. Not because I think it'll be amazing. I just feel like I have to know in that that so, that sort of macabre sort of way. That's how I feel about the trailer for this Mario movie. Like like looking at a corpse through a window. So, I thought Andor had been fighting the Empire since he was six years old. Is he six in that flashback? He, he looks old. Than six. He looks like he's at least ten. Double that age, yeah. In which case, maybe they're referring to the fact that the Empire are the ones that have colonized the planet? Yeah, maybe. Who knows? I'll have to see what they mean by all of it as we go on. I mean, look, I'm happy to, I'm happy to, to discard <laughs> that Rogue One stuff in, in service of whatever they're trying to do with the show based on what we've got at the moment. You can't. That would, that would be the, no, the I, fuck I, up. I, I, I'm just saying, like, yeah. Maybe it was up. a lie. Uh, if this is going to be in the story, I guess we'll see. Who knows? Um, I'm assuming they mean The Martian, but they said The Martian is a stupid movie. Please watch with YMS. Oh, I, I, I liked it, uh, but I don't know how like much sense it makes. <laughs> I have not seen it, so. I'm pre- oh, well, I guess, yeah, I was about to say what happens at the end. So Wow. Yeah. Well, film's like seven years old, book's older than that, all right? I would yeah, never right. spoil, I, would, I, I wouldn't spoil things just because they're, they're seven years old. Just... You know, Soma's kind of old. <laughs> It is kind of all. Yeah, I would never, I would never, ever, that. never do it. Against the Lord of Spoil, though. The Lord, though. Yeah. Han Solo is killed by his son, Kylo Ren. What's our baby? We keep going. Not every story has to be huge. The Expanse, one of the best modern shows, starts on an ice hauler ship with working dudes talking work and stuff. These characters are beloved because they're normal people. Agreed. I, I, I was happy that we started just real low, low level. We'll see how it all rolls out, but uh, I'm just more interested in good characters than uh, than anything grand happening. I'm tired of grand shit happening all the time in uh, Star Wars, you know? Give me, give me a janitor. Like, he's late for work, you know? I'll watch that. Then suddenly a Death Star laser hits him and you're like, ah. That could be a funny season. Get to know him really well, but he eventually discover enough context that he's just a jam to on the Death Star, and you're like, oh no, he's gonna die. Maybe that wouldn't be funny. 
Anyway, is DNA art? Can it be, or was it always? DNA is not art. Yeah, we, we would go as far as saying the, uh, taking a photo of it, or, uh... Or representing it visually, you know. Representing oh yeah, if you it. want to make a, a double helix sculpture or a picture or something like that, yeah, that, that would be, be art. Awesome. But that's not DNA. That's a, a representation of it. So I guess it depends on what they're asking. I mean, if, if you're coming at this with the, a, a theistic perspective that oh, some right. some supernatural creature created DNA as an expression of blah 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 blah, then yeah, it would be art. But since there's no good evidence for that, I wouldn't worry about it. So wow. MGR answers the question by cutting people manually. Answers what question? Oh well. <laughs> Next up. Cutting people manually. Do you mean when, when you chop people up in that game, you have to do the, you know, hit the stick? Uh, down, down, well, down, it, down. it enters like the, yeah, it enters like a, a mode where you, um... Like you, you are manually controlling the directions of the of the cuts. Maybe they're suggesting this is me really reading into it, but it's a response to the DNA question that if you chop people up, are you expressing yourself? Uh, the resulting pieces of DNA would count as pieces of art. Uh, well, I mean, maybe in like the video game, right? Like if you if you're doing it in a certain way because you think that it'd look cool or, or whatever, like while you're slicing through the bad guys. I suppose. But I mean, we can talk plenty about like the ways that people express themselves, right? Like, what is the style system in a lot of uh, action games like Devil May Cry, if not a way of expressing yourself, like in taunts and things? Um, that's yeah. expressing yourself within a work that is itself the expression of somebody else. That's when you get to get in the real uh, <laughs> crazy exploration. This one just says, that's kind of the plot for Joyride as well. What? And this, the context is so uh, absent. In Green Goblin voice, please say, Riddle me this, Spider-Man. What is 13 but also 50? Wow. How edgy. Wouldn't that be something to riddle? That sounds like a riddle. I didn't know that the Green Goblin... I guess he's sort of a riddle guy. Does he do he makes riddles? riddles? I don't think so. No, yeah, I don't think so. It's it's like a, that sounds like something the Riddler might say. Philosopher Batman. of the day, Descartes. I've heard the name before. I don't typically look into philosophers. Uh, look up the video of a baby elephant painting a picture of a house. It's a painting, but it was trained to make those specific brush strokes. Would that still be art? Well, if the requirement is ex self-expression as opposed to... Didn't we talk about this with like a, a robot, if you program it to just paint the house, is the robot creating art? Or is it, is it your art at that point? I, I don't know. I, I it, don't know. I, I, I don't think so. If we're talking about something like a Roomba-esque um, machine, I, I think it would... You'd have to look into the way that it goes about fulfilling that task in terms of the complexity of its thought processes, and I just don't know how we can do that yet. Well, no, I, so what I was saying is just like, instead of the brush stroke, I tell it to make a brush stroke. I'm, it's, it's my piece of art at that point, right? Because then the machine is just a tool. I would say so, yeah. If it has no will of its own or real thought process of its own, and it's, it's literally just, just a more complicated brush, then yeah, it would be your art. Or Destiny and Rags. Is it a spider web an expression of the spider? Could a beautiful web be art, regardless of an existence of a sapien? I'm pretty sure we've... I'm sure a web we've can be beautiful, but I don't think a spider is uh, mentally advanced enough to be able to express itself in that web. It's not well, doing the, it for the, the, for the purpose spider, of expression. For the spider, it is purely utilitarian. Yeah. Though like, they, we what, can what, what, find we, them beautiful. We recognize a sort of, a, they can have a symmetry to them and the way they can catch the light and the dew in the morning, absolutely. things of that nature. But as I said, things can be beautiful, but not art. In fact, many things. Yeah. Well, yeah, like, like just nature, things. right? The environment. Yeah. A planet, a star. Um, I'm not sure how this relates to anything we were talking about. YMS makes a good point in his video. If an artist paints a picture that is so photorealistic, it doesn't make that painting a photograph. True. Oh, I mean, sure, but that has nothing to do with this topic, I, I'd say. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't, yeah. I don't know how that relates to a what photograph we're is a 
yeah, a photograph is a specific not. thing and how it's how it's made and yeah. and between the, yeah. we compare that to a painting. Both a photograph and a painting can be art, but they're completely different processes. One will not be the other by definition. Art evokes interpretation, like lyrics that resonate. Good art to you is something that you interpret and relate to in a positive way. Bad art would be you interpreting in a way that resonates badly, like food that's too spicy. Um, I suppose that is one way to do that. I'd be curious at that point to the person who has this sort of setup. If, um, if a piece of art reminds you of maybe the, the loss of a loved one, is that bad or good? That was kind of where I was going with this. Um, I mean, are they talking about a, it, it, just because you get a sensation or a feeling from something that might be unpleasant or not just not pleasant, that doesn't mean it isn't art because it, it makes you feel a particular way on the spectrum of good to bad or pleasant to unpleasant. Um, yeah. Because there's plenty of art that's meant to make you feel uncomfortable. Plenty of art that you know makes you cringe or is just distasteful and there's plenty of that that doesn't mean it's not art art can be defined pursuit of beauty via skill what if i do something accidentally and then take a picture of it can, can you say that super chat one more time so their definition of art is pursuit of beauty via skill i don't know pursuit how much of skill i don't agree with that like. Uh, yeah. I don't agree. It's the pursuit of beauty. You could make things. You don't Wait. want. You might not want to express beauty. Yeah, you might actually, want to yeah. That whole definition is like I'm not happy mm -hmm. with. What if I want yeah. to make something ugly? <laughs> exactly. exactly. I want to it, the expression part. Sure, I'm good with. I that's the part I generally go with. But you can. You don't have to express things that are beautiful. It just so happens by the nature of what we call beauty, things are much more appealing when they're beautiful. So um, that's why we tend to want to make beautiful things with our art it's not the norm for pretty clear and understandable reasons why we don't make things that are dist distasteful and disgusting and that, that turn you off from them but you can if you want and that doesn't make it less art art so isn't just creation art, or beauty it requires intent and expertise at the medium Ooh. Expertise. i don't Ooh. i'm i'm yeah, the I don't agree with the expertise uh, because first off, without without going too deep into a discussion of expertise, I think we both I think we will use it generally just to mean a high level of skill or knowledge. Well, it's just like what is what does that mean? Expertise? Well, you mean like if somebody's a child's enough, crayon drawing is art, yeah, and a child doesn't have expertise awesome. in anything. Yeah. They haven't had the time to have expertise in anything, so. Yeah, you don't need expertise, but ex it's again, it's like the beauty thing where a lot of the times people will pick up expertise because they have an interest or a goal. And so they become better and better as they practice and they do it more and more. Or they have a natural talent that they, you know, will use in their expression. And that comes across as expertise. Um, you don't, but, but it's like you don't have to have a high level of skill. But often, of course, if you have a high level of skill and you create something with that relevant skill, it will be to a lot of people more impressive or more impactful. Yeah. Uh, is beauty the same as art? Like, would natural beauty be considered art or just a natural beauty? I would argue it's art, but only because God created it with intention. Uh, well. Uh, so that you'd say that you, the, so nature is art because God created it. I guess we kind of covered that already with the, what you said earlier. Yeah, the, if if we pause it for, if we assume that there is a, a deity of some kind that created the universe. Is, is everything then, art then? Yes, it would be. But yeah, everything, everything would be art, every single thing, including yeah, it, your it art would, would be. It would depend on the theology of it, uh, but if you believe that, uh, for instance, if, if you're a deistic, if, you, if you're a deist, and you think that a, a god built, the like, kick-started everything and then fucked off, then only the things that they created are the art. Um, once you start introducing other minds into it, unless they're unless they're predetermined to do certain things, that's the thing. Predeterminism actually comes in you know to play here because if you are a god and you have everything planned, you have your will. Everything will happen according to your will. There's no way for anything to happen otherwise, and you create the world knowing everything that will happen beforehand. 
then literally everything is going to be essentially your fault. And so it will be your art and your expression of whatever it is. However, if you don't have a predeterministic universe under this theology, then once you introduce minds, sufficiently capable minds into the picture, then the art is theirs. Yeah. It's not yours at that point. Yeah, because yeah, uh, at, at a certain point, if you, depending on your viewpoint, it would be that if I painted something, it's like that's God's work, not mine. Yeah, if, if, if you think, a lot of people credit God for all kinds of different things. Um, but again, it, it depends on how you view your particular theology. Yeah. Um, which is a, a complex question for a lot of people, who especially who don't particularly think that deeply about it. Um, but yeah, if, if you don't think that, uh, you know, it, d it depends on the theology and the, the framework of it, how much you can give credit to this deity for, or deities uh, this might be covered, but have you looked into aestheticism? There are naturally occurring structures that are universally preferred, like symmetry. However, it is the human mind that attributes any metaphysical value. Well, I mean, of course, right? It's always going to be a human's perception. Yeah, we're a fan you know, of symmetry. We say, <laughs> is he still, yeah, it's it, not universally, though. Uh, no, I, I, sorry, I, I, what I'm I saying... Mean, I, I think you would apply yeah. in a lot of these universally, in like, enough that um that it gets real close to being basically everybody i'm just kind commenting on the, the fact that, that like, like it comes in with like when we rate beauty oftentimes symmetry is like a big old boy with that yeah yeah and like the yeah, kind of symmetry and architecture yeah. beautiful woman really like yeah um but but no i haven't uh looked into aestheticism is art a noun for a physical object or a concept? Is art the expression of the artist or the interpretation of the viewer? I think, uh, is art a what or a what? Can you say the last bits? Well, I think you've answered this before. Well, your, your take is that art is the in the creation, not in the uh, viewing. In the viewing, yeah. yeah. That's, that's basically the question. Which um, but I, I, I've... Because uh, I, I believe you can consider this a part two of our... Our discussion that we had with uh, John and um, and Doomer on yeah the, on the medley yeah yeah this is like a further down the That's road still yeah. kind of absent humans can the universe still create art your response yeah, to that was, sorry, can you, as long as there's did, sapient said, beings of some kind is absent of humans can there still be art yeah which you said yes if there are sapient beings yeah. well i thought the question was absent absent humans can the universe create art or can art be created well i don't the universe well, creating art i wouldn't i, I wouldn't create it well in yeah the universe, and that's what i'm yeah. saying i thought that we already we already kind of yeah yeah eventually if it wasn't us it was it would it would be something else uh that evolved this to this level if um yeah, because that must be what they mean, otherwise, because can the universe create art? They must be referring yeah. to just... That's a whole other question. Yeah, because yeah. the universe isn't an agent, Yeah. so, like, no. At least, At least yeah. As far as from from our point of view. Uh, yeah, it, it, it can on, produce yeah. agents, though. So that's, uh, that's what... Which is mean. interesting to think about. Mubishly just finished Breaking Bad. Could you do Mike's... Uh, all he has to do is cook speech, but make it about Ryan Johnson making Star Wars? Um, I could, but I don't know that I want to. Well, all right. I'm so sorry. I would rather continue. Here, folks. Rather, I'm rather comfy talking about art right now. Sorry. Uh, what if you paint a painting but store it in a room that has no light? You can't perceive what the painting is because color requires light. Assuming that there's no texture to the painting, uh, yeah, color doesn't exist if there's not someone perceiving it which for humans and requires photons we we have to have light to perceive color as far as i know so but in a pitch point... black room then there is there is no color it, it's just not it's not happening right colors um, of, yeah it's, it's an interpretation of wavelengths as uh, of light as they bounce off of objects so you need those things what if the only person around the tree was deaf i think the vibrations the would, would still, still yeah yeah, that's why I check the definitions, because uh, sound isn't... You, you can have sound, of course, without people to hear it. It is... You know, it's, it's the definition that I gave, which, I, which I'm which i going to be going with as, unless someone well, has you know, a better you, one that they can do. You handled that really well, because you said that if we're defining sound as yeah. the human's perception of sound waves or whatever, then I suppose 
the conclusion that's all, is set. That's, yeah. It's how I've always understood the difference between light and sound. Sound's a physical thing in the world, but light isn't. It's an interpretation of a brain or a brain's interpretation uh, of yeah. yeah. Okay. Of, of wavelengths hitting yeah. retinas and that whole process. Isn't like don't we take everything in back uh, upside down and the brain flips exactly. it? Yes. That is my understanding. It's crazy. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that it is, is really pretty weird. crazy, I know. It is exactly the same as sound rack. No, I literally, color is not a physical thing. Color is an interpretation that our brains make. Because humans are very, very similar in terms of their brains, that's why the vast majority of humans could agree on what colors are what. That's why we Some have... People can't, right? Some people are colorblind. Some people, people are the odd ones out. Yeah, so well, that's, that's what I'm saying. It's like even among our similarities... That that's why we're able to tell colorblind people what colors they can't see, right? Because there's so much like it's you can there you don't have to experience color to be able to know the differences between colors that you can't see. Like I said, we can we could we could prove to people who are colorblind that there are colors they cannot see. There are ways to do it. You could you could bring someone into a room who is colorblind and you can convince them that there are different color, like the walls are different colors by bringing in a whole bunch of people and getting them to make independent observations and then pooling all of their observations together and then telling the colorblind person. And you can prove to them that colors are real and they're just missing out on them or they're having different colors. Like it's, it's different than, it's different than sound, right? What colors do you see, Ra? <laughs> I'm not going to name them all, but geez. We'll start with blue. I I see all I see many colors. It's it is a it is a misconception that I cannot see uh many colors because mm -hmm. it's a racial stereotype, but you know, it's fine. It's no it's no big deal. I see many colors. Light and sound are both physical. No, 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 no. Light is not color. Light is not color. Sound is a physical thing. It's physical vibrations in the air that's caused by energy and all that stuff. Light is not color. You're wrong to think that. Color is a shared hallucination. Um, sort of. It's a, it's a shared phenomenon and interpretation. I wouldn't say it's it's not a hallucination. Well, um, I mean, if we're gonna say that's a, hallucination at some point. Yeah, because <laughs> you know what do we? Well, what is a hallucination? Because we link the colors point. with what we're looking at. It's it's not a hallucination because we know, like, we have. If you want to make something of a certain color then you mix particular things together. You're not hallucinating the color as the light bounces off of them and enters your, your eye and then to your brain. You are specifically linking this thing to this thing. There's a grounding in reality that it has that can't really, that, that can't be dismissed. Like, yeah, it's subjective in a way, but it's based off of something that's very real. Uh, this entire intro is just sophism. I disagree. Uh, let me double check. Like evil. Well, Fallacious argument, especially when used deliberately anything. to deceive. Yeah. Um. Depends. Not ours. Our our conversation wasn't sophism. You'd have to. You'd have to be specific as to what was uh, sophistic. I wouldn't even claim that about anything philosophy tube said. So I just disagree entirely. No, I don't think so either. There's a difference between. Sophistry and being wrong, or being vague, or being yeah. It was just a bad video. It wasn't. I don't think it was meant to deceive. It just I think incidentally I, confused. The way that I describe that video is just that it's um the reality is if you really want to have the conversation about whether art is meaningless, it's going to take a lot longer than that. You need to define your terms very clearly, and you need to try and run all of the uh, the topics that you're going to to their real logical conclusions rather than just kind of abruptly stopping before we conclude anything. Yeah. Because I think that there's probably some conclusions that are worth drawing because it just seems like everybody does operate with some sort of system qualitatively for art. Uh, and pretending that, you, that, that, that that isn't happening doesn't seem uh, productive. Because at the end of the day, like if at the end of the video, it's like, oh, you know, maybe just feel it out. It's like, yes, but... As you say that, you will fight with people over your perspective on art. You will. You you inevitably will. There's um, a lot of people who think art is like purely subjective, and then they make who will fight they, about they, it. 
Yeah. They will yeah. absolutely throw out without even thinking it that The Room is a bad movie. And it's not, it doesn't even need to be discussed. I know, you know, we all know. But art's totally subjective. So I just jumped in. You discussed the new art generating AI that's really good popping up recently and its implications for art going forward? Um, uh, no, we haven't. I don't think we did. No, and really? it's complicated, that one, because um, I think intuitively you'd be like, it's not art when it's made by a robot, but then again, it's like all of the stuff that went into creating the code behind the thing that's generating the art might be able to make it qualify, right? You think so, yeah. Maybe, maybe. But what if it is done by algorithm of, well, what the, the Dali mini thing was, or is, where it'll like, it's, it's just like a learning algorithm in terms of what words connect to what imagery, and then it just creates approximations based on like all the entries put together and whether or not people are uh, approving or disproving until it just starts generating art that people are like, holy shit, that's like accurate. Is that art or is that something else? Mm. So, sure. someone says something. We, someone says that if basically if um if someone doesn't have functioning eyes, then you can't convince them of the reality of sight. That's an incredibly dumb. Do you think all blind people in the world don't think anyone else can see either? Just because you can't That's fully insane. appreciate something doesn't mean that you can't understand like the yeah, existence the of something, like a phenomenon. Well, I can't like, drive, yeah, you, <laughs> but like, yeah, well, yeah. It, it's it, you can't see just because you like, don't have a just because you don't have that sensation or that, that sense. That doesn't mean that you can't convince those people that you have that sense. That's a and I mean, if, to, to if think all this of them is are true, lying to you or something, then we just unless, go back to the whole like, how do I yeah, know that the, anybody is real but me in existence? Yeah. You know, are they talking the about like conceptualizing comment. it? Like when you haven't experienced something like that, it's like almost impossible for someone it's, to translate what it's like to you. I'm sure it would if be one, very difficult. Yeah. They say if one does not have the necessary receivers for the data of light and sound functioning eyes and ears, then there's nothing you can do to convince them of the reality of sight and sound, which is just flat out insane. Because the so, implication is that no blind person can be convinced that normal people can see and people who are well, colorblind. I've been convinced of plenty know. of things that I, I mean, can't. I mean, see yeah, it is a, well, I mean, we can talk about light. I can't see ultraviolet. I can't see it. The only way that I can see it is when it's represented in the visible color spectrum, but it exists. Exactly. And I know it exists. Same with infrared, because I can understand the effects of these things, even if I can't see it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I guess, like, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know if it's applicable, but, you know, like, oxygen particles, like, I'm pretty sure they're real. I can't see oh, them. Maybe. I guess if I had a microscope or whatever. Uh, yeah, the angular right? size is way too small, yeah. But well, I mean, I mean the UV light and the infrared, that's the example for, I guess, for us as quote unquote normal humans. Uh, yeah, like, I don't know what it would, humans. I don't know what it would look like to see an ultraviolet light. Like, I, I don't know what that, in, in much the same way that I don't know what it means to be like, to hear in the same way that a dog does with the frequencies they can perceive. But I know that they can do that. Yeah, be because I could prove to you that. that I could hear those if you did a test where you arrange these things to be given to me and I could identify them, then you'd be like, oh, clearly this, this dog can yep, hear these frequencies, here. even though we can't. It's responding to them in a 100% accurate way, and it, it seems to be able to hear them. Um, I was just thinking of how I would even try and approach that. Like, if someone was blind, they had no concept of seeing, how, well, how would I begin trying to explain what the phenomenon of seeing is? Yeah, so is it how go ahead just every every sentence i think to start i'm like oh i'd have to explain what it is right it's like you know you currently oh, see nothing right and then they'd be like person? what do you mean i see nothing i i would explain sight to a blind person as the ability to perceive objects and details at a distance because they can still imagine and and picture things in their head presumably. yeah imagine you were touching it with really really long invisible arms Kind of that might be the way I, I legit I've never had to do this. Yeah, yeah, but I would imagine that would be a way to explain to them like Matt we have we have like an invisible uh, um, We have like a million invisible arms that are constantly touching everything from a long way away And we could perceive those things far before they are close to us 
that's kind of, I suppose, how I would put it into a perspective they could understand. Assuming they have that as a creepy no, bastard. Like, yeah, kind of. <laughs> These it's, like Matilda, it's like Matilda. Terrifying. So how the the guy said, "How the fuck is that insane? What's insane is believing things because people tell you to trust me, bro." Well, as I said, it's not a it's not a trust me, bro thing. You can do you. It's not like we tell people who are disabled in terms of their blindness or color blindness or deafness, trust us, there's just all of these things. It's like we, we can show them that we have a civilization that's based around these senses and that you are an outlier from that norm yeah. and we're making affordances for you. It's like I said with a colorblind thing. If you brought someone in to a, a room who was colorblind, and then you could bring in a whole bunch of other people and they could come to an agreement on what color is what independently and then let that colorblind person know. So the colorblind person would know that there is some detail that they're just not privy to because of that disability that everyone else seems to be able to grasp. And the same thing, the blindness part, like obviously there are people like it's not just a trust me, I can see and you can't. It's like, do you feel these organs on your thing? Yeah, they. you notice how it, for us it does this. And like we built a whole civilization around it. You think we did all the all this stuff that you're touching, feeling, experiencing. Like we did this because we have, you know, sight. We can perceive objects at distances. It's not a just trust me, bro. It's an incredible, it, it's an incredible method with that you can use experiments for. By the way, my current avatar is from um, an AI generation. How suitable that is very that's that's quite a that's quite an image it's it's kind of spooky hmm he's scary he's gonna you he look like you remind me of jinzo but rags is it art the ai generated one no jinzo is though i would have thought you'd want to ask always a card i wanted qualifying question rather than saying no Oh, because I don't think that I don't think we have an AI that's sufficiently advanced enough to do more than like more. Yeah, you know, I don't. I don't think it's at that level yet. But if, say, for example, I fed ten thousand pictures into a machine and then told it to will them all up and create something out of it, um, on my end, code wise, and then it comes out with that, is the machine still not just a tool in which that I'm using to create a piece of art? If it's literally just following the code that you made for it, then it wouldn't be art. There would have to be some sort of sufficiently um, capable input from it that was personal to it in a way that I don't think we have developed yet, well, though wait, I could be wrong. I could see how you're, how you're ruling out it's the AI's artwork. I agree with that, but how are you ruling out that it's the person who made the AI's artwork? Oh, that's a, oh, I didn't know that's what you're talking about. Um, I, I probably think so in a way. Like it, it sort of makes this autonomous process that uses this code to create art. How now how um how much do I give credit to the original creator for the art that comes out of, as a result to uh a result of it? I don't know if I'd give them the much artistic credit so much as like expertise credit, if that makes sense. Like if um someone who made an algorithm that could produce this image or code that would produce this image, I'd say, wow, I, I would be, I would not be impressed with their artistic skill. I would be impressed with their like coding and technical skills. I think that's fair. Whereas if we go back to the God example, right? God knows the, the output of every single thing that will ever happen and knows it beforehand and does it. So you could, you know, that, that would be a little bit different than that. There's sort of a throw it to the wolves kind of element to the coding aspect of, you know, depend, whatever you put in, you might get out something crazy. It'll abide by this code's structure and formula, but there's so many different combinations of objects and things that, you know, who knows, are virtually uncountable. Fun fact, mantis shrimp can see 12 channels of light by rags. Hello. Hey. Almost missed the show. Found out that uh don't hug me i'm scared released and had to binge hello mola hello rags good day fringy and guest hello to you hey well i'm surprised they actually did get a full-on show for don't hug me i'm scared i'm curious what the season would be about in totality but hey uh, i'll wait for someone to recommend it first i'm at the gym while listening to this getting gains both physical and mental i love conversations like this well, I'm super glad uh, that anybody would have found it engaging or enjoyable. It's very 
outside of what we usually do, I find, these episodes. Um, but it's still kind of important, and a lot of this stuff is running in the background of everything we end up saying on uh, when yeah. we break down things. And it's nice to know that every once in a while we just you know throw it out and see if the three of us, plus guests or not, uh, you know, fishing around in there, see if there's anything else we can poke at. See how it goes. Is it Rags, how would you prove to a blind person that you were a dog? <laughs> I think that, You'd woof. I, I mean if they were if they were close by, they could feel me and they could be like, Oh, you are clearly a different creature than I am. You are you're clearly a, a much higher evolved form of life. But uh if, if they weren't with me, I don't know. That that's interesting. If I had to if I had to to my best of my abilities prove to someone who wasn't here, how am I a dog if they couldn't see? I assume I could you could arrange a test if I had some other people, but alone it might be pretty pretty difficult for me to do that. Uh, devil fruit of the week, the Barabara fruit, which allows the user to split their body into pieces and control them. The user is also immune to slashing attacks. Would you eat the fruit? You can no longer swim if you do. These Um, yes. I would. If I could split my body into other smaller like 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 two smaller rags pops out of me cuz if uh, i had to give up swimming for that i think i would i think i could put that I to think use. it meant like you could have your hand come off and it'll float around and do whatever you want at will oh that could still be really useful oh it's definitely useful uh, like if you wanted to if you wanted to eavesdrop you could leave your ear somewhere like, oh, I'll come back and get to see her later. Who knows what I'll hear over there in that room. I could be really sneaky. I could leave it, you know. Or maybe you could take an eye, right? Take your eye and you could put it someplace, angle it right. And you could you could have a, you know, you could be looking at some something going on over there somewhere. A little spy eye. A little spy ball, so to speak. I could be nifty. I know I don't know why I went instantly to like methods of espionage for this power. However, I it would be fun. Like I, I need to I want to get something, but I don't want to get up. I'll just have my arm float around over there and grab it real quick for me. Or uh yeah. Could be fun. So the problem with me oh, for all of these is could... that I don't go swimming that often, so it's never that much of a sacrifice. I'm just like, okay. <laughs> oh yeah, I haven't I, I can't remember the last time I actually swum. It's been ages. Oh, what you could do, maybe if you were tired, right? You could put, you could take your head off and you could put your head in bed, tuck your head in to whatever capacity that was possible. And you could just, you could sleep while your body was maybe like exercising and stuff. Maybe you could do that. Yeah, I think so. I could work. Yeah, you, you could be holding on to something so you don't lose your balance or, you know, something like that because you're sleeping. But you're, you could like do, you know, push ups and sit ups and some stuff like that or, you know. Oh, if you, if you wanted to keep, um, no, no, let's just carry on. I'll just, uh, <laughs> carry on. I'll just uh, AI generated power. images art. They sure look the part. I don't think in their current form, though, I could be wrong based off of, you know, I, I'm no, I'm no big, it's going to depend on the, on the form, right? Because there's all different kinds. Like if, if you get from Star Trek, when he makes a painting, I'm like, that's art. That's data expressing himself, right? But if I see an AI-generated, you know, Elmo at the Nuremberg Trials, <laughs> then uh, they're like, that's not... I wouldn't consider that art. Even if it, could be, if it can be super funny and potentially beautiful, um, I, I don't think that's art. Uh, for me, it would just be think, actually. It's just, just about the, so, the yeah. form of creation in it. Um, because there's something a little, a little weird about like how if it was like if it is a billion drawings are thrown into a machine, you ask it to blend them up and po poop something out. I don't even know what that is, exactly. Um, yeah, it's it. I mean, is uh, is a smoothie art? If you throw all of the, if you throw all the ingredients in a blender and you blend it and then you take it out, is that art? It's like well. You're an agent, you created it, but is it, you know, how, you know, it, now if you use that smoothie to make a painting with it, right, you use your paint smoothie or something, like, that's where it gets really complicated. That's the kind of stuff you get into where it gets really flizzy and tizzy. But I don't know, it's, it's, I don't know, it's strange. It, yeah, something like that is, is, it's that weird sort of, well, you did make it, you are a sufficiently capable agent, 
did you make it for the purpose of, you know, expression or did, is there anything about you that you put into it subconsciously or even consciously that would make it an expression of who you are? Or is it just you put it in a machine, hit the button and then, oh, it's because some smoothies look lovely. They have a you know texture to them and they look delicious or appetizing and might have a good color, but it's its own thing. Uh, the, the, what was I? I remember Shelly D uses the tree to make, sorry, uses the tree makes a sound analogy to prove that criticism is not objective. He talked about how he hated your TFA video. I don't care. Who's Shelly? <laughs> You wouldn't he hates even... the TFA videos. I don't know, man. That's already like a red flag. I don't, it, it wouldn't. I've never understood this whole like completely dismissing everything I do in all of those videos based solely on the fact that it's like you could never call any of this objective. I'd be like, even still, remove that. And as far as I'm concerned, like 99.99999 of the craft is still in there and the usefulness of what's discussed in the video. All you need to do is think of it as a video that breaks it down in terms of cause and effect, the film. If you hate that approach, don't watch it. I don't know. If you... Or actually do something to disprove it. Yeah, that would be neat too. But I mean, if, if the process is happening in the video and you say, well, that process doesn't exist, it's like, I don't, I don't know, man. I'm going to believe the video that shows the process happening. And I've always been uh, bored by people who are like, it's not objective because they've never been able to replicate my argument for it anyway. I say mine as if it's not, like, I'm pretty sure you guys would share. It's, 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 it's like they've never even known what's being said. They'll just go as far as treating it as though it's me saying my opinions are better than yours. That's it. Yeah, more that happens it. all the time. That's what they all do. They never Boring. actually watch it and engage with arguments. The closest we get, we're lucky to get them taking a quote out of context, because like, well, at least you, you got the quote. That's further than, further than most people get. Um, I hear the guy from Iron Giant. It's Art. What, uh, well, which guy? There's a lot of guys from Iron Giant. I guess the guy called Art, right? Is that his first name? Is that the joke? Uh, the, the protagonist? My... Uh, damn. Tomba. His name, he's got a... Hogarth is the name of the protagonist. Yeah, Hogarth, exactly. Well, I didn't... They said the guy. I don't know if the like the uh, yeah, but who the bad guy? I don't know. Was uh, anyone in Iron Giant called friend? Art? Because Art is a name, right? It is a, a name. Um, they call him Art for short, and his, his full name is Hogarth. Maybe I don't remember. I haven't seen it in so Hogarth. long. Hogarth, Hogarth, right? Or is it Hogarth? Wait, ah, uh, no. <laughs> now I don't know. I don't know. Hogarth, H O G A R T H. Yeah, I thought so. Hogarth Hughes. Um, how would you differentiate art that is designed by groups of people, expensive movies, video games, or even books, that are proofed by other people from individual artworks? I would regroup it. I mean, it's just a collaborative process. doesn't necessarily take away from the fact it's it, little yeah, bits the, of expression from all kinds of different people. I mean, still... I guess Definitely you'd say, right. like, the film has a shit ton of artists working collectively, but then if you, the more you break it down and figure out who's responsible for individual parts until you get down to, like, the literal individual pieces. Yeah, I wouldn't say that the, the CGI, you know, artists, you know, the, that their art is the same as the art of the, the script and the, you know, the costume stuff. Like, that's, everyone's responsible for their own parts. Um, one could say that life itself is art. The fact that atoms could organize themselves in a way to react to their surroundings is amazing. Um, so one of the issues is that we're not, as far as we know, it's very likely that it couldn't have possibly happened to any other way, that it's an, an inevitability of the processes that seem to be reality. Um, and again, if these are natural processes, then there's not an agent that's involved. It's not an expression from any thing. Uh, from any agent, so it wouldn't be art. Uh, considering Destiny is here, do you guys have any takes on StarCraft II story? I don't. I've, I've played, played through. I've played through Wings of Liberty, and I've played mostly through Heart of the Swarm. I need to go back, finish it, and then do Legacy of the Void. It's on my to-do list. I don't remember too much about the story. It, it seems to be just here's some reasons why you go on all these missions. It's I think it's that kind of a story. I never felt really strongly or deeply about any of the characters. Um, I just am a casual player of it here and there. 
um that never grabbed me it, it was it it felt like just one of those video game plots of here's why you're here now here's why you're here now here's why you're here and there's some general sort of thread that goes through it but um i'm not gonna speak strongly about it either way lord Longbong of mutlington abbey is there any good chance of a kong fab peter jackson's long mm. kong and there's less Ooh. going on your movie fab for the ages p.s there were wagsies screeches for the good book. oh thank you very much we were just Not talking this about month. we're busy that kong kong boy recently and there's another super chat that mentioned it yeah, not going to be this month, not going to be the following month, but who knows, maybe in the future at some point. It's just that we've got who a lot knows? of things yeah. going on. Who knows? Would Kong be a, be related to Halloween in any way? The Monsters universe? I'm assuming it's more of... When, when, is, it, when is the time uh, of year for Kong? I don't know. Is, there an, is he all year? Is that Kong? He's just a maybe, all year kind yeah. of guy. This guy said, as far as we know, a couple hundred years ago, the Earth was flat. No, we've known that we've known that Earth was a sphere for a couple hundred. <laughs> like, like, geez, the, I think the ancient I I don't. Because yeah, there's loads no. of ways to discover the Earth is not flat. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah like, knowledge we've... was acquired and lost and it depended on which societies we're talking about as well. Have it's been uh, let's see how long have humans known the earth is let's put around for google i mean we have the uh, aristosthenes and that was ages ago uh, ancient greek um let's see ba 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 uh third century bc uh, hellenistic astronomy established the roughly spherical shape of the earth as a physical fact and calculated the earth's circumference and i think they did it within like 10% accuracy. They were pretty damn close considering their knowledge levels and ability to, you know, make calculations and stuff. That's that's pretty fucking impressive. Um let's see. Yeah, we've known for a long ass time. I mean, I mean in 1492 when you know Columbus was sailing, like he knew the earth was round. I didn't think they were going to sure fall. He was trying to find a way to Ranks. India. Like a sure Columbo. Yeah. Right right as he was getting on the boat. And one more thing. The world isn't flat, right? We're not going to fall off the edge. And like, no, 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 no. Keep, 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 well, keep going. If you keep going around the edge. You'll, you'll get to India. You see, if you keep going around, you'll, you'll circle back to India. I'm like, oh, okay, have someone on the front good. of the boat keeping an eye, and the second you see the edge, be like, whoa, 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 go back, go back. Be yeah. fine. Uh... But yeah, we've absolutely known for a long time. To say Eddie Carr gave his life to save his team is an understatement. So much heroism and all he gets is the throwaway line. What an upset. This is the, the, the lost world guy. It's true. Very true. Very upsetting. Very sad, rude. Sad. Sad. Just got home from a wedding. My YouTube app randomly decided to stop playing EFAB 200 during the speech portion of the evening. Screw me, I guess. Oh. So your phone started playing EFAB 200 while there was a speech happening at a wedding? How does your phone do that? It just randomly starts <laughs> opening of a... How does that happen? That's weird. That's a that's a dick phone right there. That phone's fucking with you. It's a strange phone. I if that phone was a dick, it would have played far worse. It would have started playing some weird shit. I guess we're weird shit, I suppose. We're just used to our weirdness. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um British Lindsay Alley of uh, British Lindsay Alice over here calling me a lesbo. I wasn't clear on the lesbian jokes, really. Um, it was like, it was yeah, something um, lesbian in every time. They're just like, alrighty. We could definitely work a bit harder on our, on our humor. If I were alone in a room with a red painting, I would add a green dot in the middle of the painting to mess with people. Oh, dude, you can't do that. That would be vandalism, like, unironically. That would be vandalism, and I do not support it. Even yeah, even, even if I think the painting is funny in terms of whatever the hell's going on there, I, I don't like the idea of destroying it in, or changing it in any way, you know? Uh, you know, it is what it is, which is something I don't like to say, but I just said. This just has a thumbs up. Thank you. Oh, thumbs up to you. Right back at you. Which would you guys rather have? Telekinesis, but you can only lift one ton, or teleportation, but you only get six charges a day. Telekinesis, teleportation scares me. 
We uh, talked if, about that before. Uh, yeah, yeah, we did. All right, recap. Okay, if yeah, teleportation is portals, is it, it? Yeah, if it's like portals, then I'll take the teleportation. Yeah, if I'll, it's like I have to cease existing or something that like scatters my atoms or something like that and then reforms them, so I like die. I don't want it. Um, yeah, yeah. If it's it the depends portals, on the method of the teleportation. So I would actually opt for the portals out of a. I don't think I'd be able to live with myself if I went with telekinesis because I'd be like, I can. I can really make this world a better place with the portals. Uh, I would actually... It, it, you'd have to decide, fucking Man of Steel style, it's like if you let the government know about this power of yours, it's, like, it's unclear what'll happen to you, but you will be able to change this world for the better significantly by... in all kinds of ways, by you know, opening portals and stuff. Uh, we talked about it before, it's, uh, that that is portals. This is this is Doctor Strange's problem. Portals are incredible as a power. Imagine introducing portals and then saying you can open as many as you want, any size you want. You can move them when they're opened. You can open more than one at once. You can uh, also have basically anybody do it. Like wow, just just the portal alone was bad enough in terms of like having us control it, but you just added all of that too. You're like, oh yeah, by the way, you can also accidentally kind of open a portal to a demon world and destroy the Earth. Afternoon. Okay. What? Okay. Great. Art is objective. The difference between art versus propaganda is one is done for its own sake, the other wholly for the sake of others. Prop must be... Propaganda must be artful, but has no definition? Or propaganda does have a definition. Well, it says def. Dot. I'm not sure. Def. De what else would that be? Fine or no? If it's categorized as art, um, I'm not sure what to make of that entirely. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, the problem, the problem is a lot of things get called propaganda, or people fight over whether something should be categorized as propaganda. The 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 let's see, Oxford uh, definition is information, especially of a biased or misleading nature used to promote or publicize a particular political cause or a point of view. So, um, yeah, that, that, that definitely, th there's nothing about that that insists that, or, or that there would lead people, me to believe that they're different uh, than art. There's, I've already seen some people call rings of power propaganda. So it's like, it's, it's something that's... What for? Uh, that it has, well, j as you just read out, like it'll have, it'll have a point of view and it's trying to push it. But the thing is, like, a lot of stories do. Uh, you know, is is Bioshock propaganda? I guess someone could I say mean, it, that. It it is, but not under the typical. I mean, it might technically be going under the definition we read, but there's that especially of you know misleading or biased aspect of it that typically is what people focus in on and it, what comes to mind when they hear propaganda. We think about posters that you know. I mean, I mean. Uh, you know, especially about, you know, World War One, World War Two, and even before then, you know, portraying your enemies in a certain way that, you know, that every country did to, you know, drum up people to enlist and to mm -hmm. buy war bonds and, you know, freedom gardens and things of that nature. I mean, like you could say that um, you could say that, you know, Rosie the Riveter is propaganda, but I don't think anyone thinks negatively of that. I certainly don't. But it's not no one would call it propaganda, really. It just doesn't seem to fit that. The, the, the semi-malicious stuff, or the, the, the especially, you know, biased or... Um, Which, by the way, that tied in nicely with Bioshock, bad. because the Big Daddy's holding rivet guns are called Rosies. Yes, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. That's a good... Yeah, I never... I never... Yeah, I never put that together. It's interesting. I like it. Could a function of an object add to the artistic value of the object if functionality was exceptionally desirable? Say that one more time. I want to make sure I get it. Could a function of an object add to the artistic value of the object if the functionality was exceptionally desirable? Um, so maybe this, sometimes this might have been about the bridge conversation. Maybe. Probably. Um... It can be an emergent property of a particular function's efficiency that it is aesthetically appealing or matches with a sort of expression that the artist wants to give. If you were to tell, if you took, if you took a classroom full of preschoolers and told them to draw a bridge over a, over a gap, then it's very, very possible that some of the preschoolers would 
it just so happens build a very efficient kind of bridge that also is just because they don't know anything about engineering or physics they'll just sort of draw bridges and whatnot and it and to their liking aesthetically and it, they happen to match and just because of the functionality goes it's not like it's a zero sum you know bar where as the functionality goes one way the art has to go the opposite way sometimes i feel like it can mesh just fine um but a lot of the times it does seem that the most aesthetically pleasing thing is not necessarily the thing that conforms to the the reality of the world in terms of physics and structure i was thinking when they said this that take like you know, like i'm gonna bring in my really really sharp sword I've designed it to look really cool, but the main thing is that it's really, really sharp. And then you have like a big old steel cube, and you just go, and it slices right through it. The fact that it does that to everyone, they just be like, whoa, and it like almost makes them appreciate it more as a piece of artwork, that it's so impressive on its functionality. I assume that's what it was referencing, kind of. Um, Maybe. Maybe I will. Hopefully, both of our answers uh, has has given them something to consider, or has given them a, a sufficient, you know, response. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, why can't function be the art? I get way more for. Uh, sorry, I get way more feeling seeing a telescope looking at the stars, or watching a crazy chemical process than I do from looking at only red paint on a canvas. Can natural process be art like clouds? Natural processes. Now, now that I'm thinking, actually, like food could have been an interesting example of something that has a utility, right? Which is that it provides you like nutrients and sustenance. But like, is that really the primary? Like, when somebody's making food, is at the forefront of their mind necessarily its nutritional value, or might it be like how it looks and what it's going to taste like? Is that artistic expression? Is a chef an artist? I feel like the answer has to be That's an interesting yes. point. Is taste yeah, if it's... improving taste but not changing the nutritional value? Is that an expression of... It? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. The f I guess it's the Which difference of raw food, like a banana as you pull it off of a tree. Um, well, I guess a banana is not the best right. example, but uh, like if you pick a berry off of a bush, like that berry isn't art, but the way that you make it into a food in a dish, that is art. I mean, the presentation of, of dishes is a very important... It's a very important thing. You can have... I mean, it's it's a whole massive industry for our civilization. This, you know, restaurants and you know, presenting food as something that's to be savored in its in its aesthetic before you get to eat it. Some foods are so darn good looking that they almost it's almost a shame that you have to destroy it in order to turn it into poo. <laughs> That is, that is weird. It's like that 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 was such a delicious, <laughs> incredible meal, and it looked absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna turn it into a I'm sticky turn brown, into gross shit. smelling. I'm thing. actually going to turn it into shit and poop it into my <laughs> toilet later. <laughs> See, when you run up to that red canvas and vandalize it, it's like you. The true vandalization is when we take a beautiful meal and turn it into shit. That is the literal turning something into shit. But yeah, um, and the. The thing I was saying of why banana isn't the best example is because bananas, as we know them, are are engineered to be the way that they are. If you went out into the woods and you found a banana tree and you pulled the banana off that sucker, you, that would not be what you would probably recognize as a typical banana. The banana, the big, the big old yellow bananas that we've got, they are not the natural form of. I mean, many fruits and many of the things we eat. Yeah, are it applies to lots of food. When you pluck a potato from a tree, it's like, oh, that's that's not looking quite right. Uh, the nope. scenario actually doesn't seem yeah i mean broccoli is a human invention there's plenty of foods that are crossbreeds and you know like corn is essentially one of them too or maize you know uh uh are beauty and art the same thing if you can find beauty in the function of something can that also be considered art finding beauty in the function of something doesn't make it art well, it's just, it's one of those things that we can recognize as being wanna, something that we typically call artistic in well, general. For the sake of rags, like when, when you give these answers, the main intention we're trying to get here is that art remains a meaningful category. Because if there's an unraveling that happens, if you say that anything, because we, we did talk about this, we were like, we, there's this intuitive thing that a lot of people feel when they look 
and a really long, big old landscape in real life, and you just go, oh, that's gorgeous. And they, I think people are very tempted to be like, this is art. And it's like, what you, what you mean to say is that, man, that's really pretty. Because art needs to remain uh, yeah. a little bit more specific and categorized than that, otherwise everything, pretty much everything is art at that point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, but yeah, I guess what I'm trying to argue is you're not you're not gatekeeping for any other reason than trying to maintain uh, functionality. This is what I was saying about um, in was it intention or interpretation? Philosophy Tube like opened it up so hard that I was like, we've just killed that word. It's not worth anything anymore. Uh, oh, so we're good. Disney movies are made only to make money, so they're not art. We can critique them without destroying art. Um, I don't think you could say that those films are made only because there's probably people. There's so many people a part of it, yeah, who are making it. Who yeah. Be, yeah, who value it. As that was a, actually as um, almost the saddest part of looking at the behind the scenes stuff is whenever they were like, oh, here's the stunt guys. And then they talk forever about all the work they're putting in and how yeah. much they. It's like, oh, you guys, you're, you're doing great. You're doing great. You worked hard in service of this garbage. Yeah. The last bridge I saw with form was prioritized over function collapsed because it uh, before it was finished. Yeah, I don't know of any bridge building that prioritizes form over function. I imagine you need to it's nail pan out. Yeah. function, otherwise, yeah, you're in trouble. But uh, it's, it's just... Standing. I just, I hate it when people are like... Unlike a painting, when you make a car, it's to make sure it works. There's, there's no artistry. Or, and she's like... Nah, 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 it hurts. Oh. Even like, you know, like making a watch or something. It's like, that's to tell time. But this was obviously explicitly function. It's like, is artistry? Watchmakers want to... Birdie. Carpentry. That's, a, that's another good example as well, right? The watch has to work, but like how it looks. Damn. Kind of, <laughs> yeah. kind of wish these came to mind when the topic came up. Oh, I think we brought up a lot of comparable ones. Mm-hmm. I'm an engineer and an artist, and she is wrong. You draft engineering in the same way you draft a novel. Thumbnail, sketch, and painting, good art and good engineering are both planned, then execute on. I really feel like we, we, were, we were more on point than, uh, than Destiny was on that particular subject. I really feel like when we tried to draw the distinction between uh, architecture versus art... It felt... Architecture in particular seems like a bad choice because yeah. as I understand that architecture emphasizes pretty heavily the aesthetics of the things you're creating compared to I guess engineering. Which um, is more they, yeah, they both go together. That's like the yeah. whole that's the whole craft of architecture. That's, you yeah, have to that's make something, what I would have you make something thing, that stands yeah. up and looks nice. Like you that that there is a prioritization on something that is aesthetically pleasing, whereas I imagine that for certain fields of engineering, the most important thing is like, well, does this work? You can figure out what's pretty or not like later on. And I think that's what kept happening was like, yes, but you understand what she's saying is that there's when you have things that focus more so on function versus the expression, it's like, yeah, but this is a really bad example and a really bad way of saying it. There was a lot of bad examples used in that. If, yeah. Like I say, I just, I think if you got a hundred people who watched that video and asked them what they felt, it'd just be like, you just, I just, I, I think, I think you just get so many different answers. Set of answers. Yeah. yeah, it's and not I a well put together, together video. Um, it's not communicated well. Unless, of course, the video was only be, designed to make people think for themselves, which is which, like, like sure, I feel okay. like even then you could have made people think more effectively. Yeah. Never, yeah, was there was never so this old. element of why why do you like certain poems or plays or movies more than others? Have you ever thought about that? Because a lot of people probably haven't. You know, it's just they just know that they like things more, but they don't, they never really think about the why. What are the elements that you really like to see? How come a character death in one film you like and a character death in another film you don't? Like really legitimately think about that. Take a moment. There was never that sort of encourage I, I never got that encouragement to be pensive no um more like youtube's figure coming soon uh that's the like little plastic figurine ones that a lot of youtubers get done i'm not sure i don't, I don't there's no plans but i mean sounds like it could be neat uh, should you guys EFAP movies Transformers 1 through 5 here's a drinking game take a shot every time Shia LaBeouf screams Optimus or Bumblebee I'm dead 
That one does sound like it would be kind of fun, because I know that he says it a whole bunch, but I don't know how much he does actually do it, so... He screams a lot in his home. Oh, damn it! Bumblebee! Blah, blah, blah. He does a lot of screaming in general. Does he, um, get, like, an exit in that franchise? Like... Uh, I think his story just ends and then it's Mark Wahlberg <laughs> shows yeah. up in the next one. Uh, concept cars really look like the production car. Well, yeah, I mean, the yeah, reality yeah. is that even in these places where your d form is more important than, uh, or, like, form comes first, the, the, this is why it's such a terrible example. Exactly, yeah. Because things change in the process. I know what you intended to mean, but your example sucks. It's, it would be <laughs> like if someone said, you know, um, you can't really say narrative is the same in games and books because books get planned out ahead while games are going to be changing because of the mechanics involved with the gameplay. I'd be like, why would you say that? Like, yeah. even, it's uh, not even true. No, it's, it's not even, it's, it's so, it sounds like something someone might say, but it's just like, you didn't think about that for five seconds, did you? Like, exactly. It, you, I, I know what you're probably trying to get at, but again, it's it's on you to communicate this effectively to me, especially in a video, right? Especially if you're a philosopher too. Like, what good is being a philosopher if, like, if you have to do so much legwork to understand what, what they're trying to say? Uh, con oh, yeah. Uh, is the onus on the artist to communicate coherently or on the audience to discern meaning? I would argue both in a way. Both to some extent, I think naturally, inevitably, you know. So if we say coherent communication is is two parts, it's the delivery of the message and the understanding of the message, then yeah, I guess like we can't really say anything else, isn't it? That that is what it is. Well, I mean, as an example, right? If people don't understand Bly Manor, that's the, that's their problem more so than that show, as I would say, based on what the show is about. And how it communicates its message, it's, right? That it's one's like, really difficult do I think to the show prove. Has failed? Because yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, um, I'm kind of a metric we've often, a rule of thumb we've often gone by is like, so uh, a recent example would be you must accept that you failed in The Last of Us Two, right? Because and and TLJ, these are two projects that had a very specific idea, but it, the fan base has exploded. There's a huge split, and half of the fan base is on both of those either didn't understand the point you were trying to make or felt you had failed miserably at it. The fact that that many people exist on Earth who feel that way surely means something. And then, of course, if I am to maintain that, then I'd have to maintain that the amount of people who came away from Bly Manor being like, what the fuck was that? That wasn't even scary. Does that mean it was uh, Mike Flanagan's fucked up in some way? I don't know. I'm not sure. It's uh, because, of course, there should be, like... Uh, there's going to be a lot of people who maybe watched Lord of the Rings and thought, like, I didn't understand what the point of that was. It seemed like a mess. And I'd just be like, you know, I don't think it's Lord of the Rings' fault. So I don't, yeah, I, I think it's going to be on you. It, yeah, I think we would have to go case by case. Because obviously with PLJ and The Last of Us 2, we would argue very hardcore that it's the incoherent writing that caused the communication problem. Meanwhile, in Bly Manor, uh, it could be that it was marketing that did it. Don't know, because uh, we we got the experience. I think Mike Flanagan was hoping for the audience to have, so it's hard to uh, sort of think uh, think about the POV of not having that happen. Um, but yeah, that that's a whole subject on its own. Uh, Philosophy Tube's videos always come across as excuses for her to dress up needlessly in needlessly expensive sets. Twelve grand a month minimum for this long. Little bit, uh, that the it production was exactly, yeah. I didn't, it didn't, it, I just got like, it just didn't add really anything meaningful whatsoever to have all the costumes and all the art stuff in there. He's like, you need to, you need to focus on writing better. Maybe I would have liked you start playing dress up. Maybe I would appreciate the dressing up more if I felt that it was better, uh, accentuating script choices instead of sort of, yeah, because like when you think the script is terrible, you might just see those clothing choices and just be like, this is just to distract me from the fact that the video's got nothing substantive to say, isn't it? Or something like that. I've always, isn't it just like she copied ContraPoints as well? Um, at least it, a lot of people have that as a, a theory. I'm pretty sure the timeline fits. Uh, but, you know, inspiration versus rip-off, it's a whole thing. That's a whole other subject. 
I'm doing some redrafting and need a bit of general advice. If you want to significantly expand on some events and character developments that take place prior to your current story, would you prefer A. Splitting the current project into two and writing the new stuff as its own project, or by adding the new stuff into the beginning of the current project and reworking the plot to avoid pacing issues? Surely it will depend on how much there is of this thing. If it's big enough to be its own project, then I suppose that might be the, the correct choice. But if it's enough to be a flashback slash prologue, then I suppose that'll work. It's really going to be on you to see how coherently it can mesh. Maybe you can test both and see which you think works better. So, does anything else you, you guys have anything to add? No, to that, that's, yeah, right? got it. That's, that's <laughs> sorted. Please watch Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Not perfect, but above any other show of 2022. Subjectively, I liked Edge Runners more than Arcane. I can't believe I just wrote that. Ooh. Interesting. I keep hearing about it. Not quite as much as I heard about Arcane, but it's getting there. Mola, what have you been using to make clips infinitely loop recently on stream? So that is VLC player, and then there's the A, B, repeat option. And you just hit A, let it play, hit B, and then it'll go boom, boom, boom. Forever. That sentence involving Tim Pool's answers the question, what is a leftist dog whistle? That's the thing, I, I'm i here for the art stuff, not the Tim... I don't even know what it, it meant, really. Like, it was like a hypothetical that Tim Pool would come up with or something, a story that... Where you, Which I'm fine at entertaining that hypothetical. I don't... Well, so I don't, am I. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm totally fine with that idea. I think it's it was, an interesting. It, it feels weird when it's like, like these, the, I, I'm still in the back of my mind thinking about the whole like, you know, isn't it disgusting they came up with that defense? But then as the thing goes on, it sounds like it could actually have been valid. And it's like, well, then what was the guy doing the whole time? Wouldn't he have said it, it was? And then we would have looked at it. Was it his word against hers? And then if that's the case in the story, it sounds weird that everyone agreed that it was just wrong. Like he was wrong. What was the evidence like? Did it all get flipped? What was happening exactly. in the story? I don't know. I'm curious. Because I saw some people were just like, well, why don't you just go read it then? And I was like, well, I, I can't right now. I've only just found out about I've got, it. I've got <laughs> like, shit to do. I was just curious, damn it. Great art is horses by tacos. Bukowski. All right. Stop saying intellectual. It's intellectual. That's true. I should say that more often. I've changed the question. Choose either teleportation, but limited to how much you can sprint, or telekinesis, but limited to how much you can lift. Okay, this is going to get tougher to answer now, because if we try and switch it to portals, limited to how much you can sprint, I don't even know what that means. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, can't, I can't put really something to the relationship between the two things. Maybe it means... Yeah, I just don't know how to answer. That's the distance limitation for the portal. How far you can sprint before you need to stop to take a breath. That's how far your portal abilities can go. What do you what do you think then? I, you, oh yeah, I like I understand in terms of the faster you are, the portals can already take you farther, or the stronger you are, the more you can lift telekinetically. But I th I think for this one, it really will come down to how much you know the intensity of that relationship. So like what is said, like, what is the exchange rate essentially? Not portal teleportation. Yeah, we know we're not doing if it's if it's teleportation. Because we're not even going to engage with teleportation if it's not like a portal system. Too scary. I'll be dead. <laughs> yeah, I'll be dead. I don't want like if it's Star Trek teleportation. No, that kills you. It it deatomizes you and puts you back together. It's not like you stay together and skip in space time or you go through a portal or a magic hole or something like that. However, if it is portals, and my choice is I can go as far as I can sprint in portal form, or I can lift with telekinesis anything that my own weight can lift. Uh, I'm not sure, actually. Yeah, I'd have to know how much. How much strength equals weight, and how much uh, speed means distance. I, I'd have to, I would also have to know. Yeah, there's a couple of variables there. Uh, so what I think is going on is that she's going on to... Going to an art museum in the same way a dad goes to the bathroom, it becomes a place of reflection. Hi, Rags. Hello. The Rothko paintings, and I imagine all those who like it, are purely self-reflection, it seems. Quick, someone put a mirror in an art gallery. Yes. 
I don't, and, and someone could be like, isn't that good enough on its own? And I'd be like, yeah, but I, I'm a... How much is Rothko responsible for any of that? And how much is that... You know what I mean? Like, it just, uh, we, we went over it. It's just, um, just lame, I think. But, uh, I guess it needs to exist. The extremes on either end, right? That's kind of why the toilet is there. It's like, at least we have our, uh... Yeah. There, there you go. It's an argument. Are all advertisements art? I think so, yeah. Yeah, they, they generally will have an artistic component to them. I mean, you have people, that's their job. Their job is to design the ad, not to come up with the information in it. Like, the company decides what they're going to have on the ad. And it's the, 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 advertise, the, uh, the ad artist that comes up with how to present that in a way that is, um, you know, digestible to uh, people. This is the James Gunn polka dot man thing again. Yeah, yeah, it keeps coming up. I, that there. was that was uh, on my mind while this topic was going on. I mean, that one's great because it actually happened and it's so absurd. But I, I think it doesn't um, quite address the root. I think uh, exactly why. Oh, like it was on my mind in relation to the I guess statements about um like actual events in the story. You know, like. Like, if the author says, yeah, this happened, compared to him having, like, a different perception of the character that he created. I guess that'd be relevant for a different part of the discussion, though. Yeah, I mean, because uh, I was going to say the hard shot first is one I'm just going to try and reference more whenever Death of the Author comes up, because it's the most palatable, I think. Good one. Everybody I agrees so, yeah. that Han shot first, which is so funny to me, because it's like, so you all agree with Death of the Author? And I think a lot of them would be like, yeah, sure, fine. And then you go... So anything Tolkien said outside of his work is not necessarily, like, not true, right? Like, it's not canon, right? And I think a lot of people would be like, whoa, hang on. Yeah, I mean, you're, I think you're right about that. And yeah, it's just, it just, it's denoting that you have a preference for the input of an author depending on how much it matches or doesn't match the artwork, or how much you appreciate their input, how much insightful things you think they have to say. Like, if Tolkien said something that did kind of contradict some of his work, but you liked it a lot, I think people would be okay with it. Right. Which is, you know, the, the, when you just announce that a random character is, is gay, like Dumbledore and with JK, that it's just funny as opposed to anything else. <laughs> or that she's made a canon that they, uh, they magicked their poop into a poop dimension or something. Was that, was, am I making that up or did that happen? I, I know what you're talking about. Um, something Sorry. about that. Uh, because we've made I those don't jokes think it about was. It before, I think right? this was from, uh, I can't believe I'm typing in Harry Potter poop dimension. In <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a fetish. Um, the poop dimension. Whoa. Oh, my God. 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 Oh my God. Da, 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 da. I need to show you this. Is it an image? No, 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 no. This is even more amazing. I typed it into Google. I, this is exactly what popped up. What the fuck? I know! I, 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 this is insane! <laughs> the poop dimension was first <laughs> hypothesized to exist on EFAP Order 66 when it was brought up that, according to J.K. Rowling, it was canon that wizards and witches in the wizarding world of Harry Potter used to defecate. Used to defecate themselves and then magic the feces away, prompting Rags to ask where all the poop goes. The poop dimension, of <laughs> More importantly, if people can be sent to this poop dimension. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I remember that. It was just like, imagine, there's nothing more torturous oh than God. that. Abandoned in the Look poop dimension. That. Look at that, that, that headline, by the way, there. Yes, Harry Potter wizards shit their pants, it's canon. <laughs> <laughs> can you, like, so first About off, the whole wizard poop no. thing. Harry Potter, huh, slash Harry Potter. <laughs> oh, no. I cannot... <laughs> Trungos can be accessed at the edge of the known poop dimension. It is the only <laughs> area safe from the poop. <laughs> Creatures from the poop dimension have no rights in our world. No <laughs> rights. Oh, this, this wiki's amazing. All you guys who contribute to it, this is fucking hilarious. <laughs> oh my god. If you were to tell me, I just hear, we all assume because there's bathrooms in Hogwarts. Like, there's girls' bathrooms and boys' bathrooms. It's and totally unused. Yeah, but they use it in the book. 
or maybe they go there because the, to be secret because no one uses it. It's just uh, it's just a holdover from a bygone era before the poop dimension was discovered. Uncovered by Hogwarts. <laughs> they, they haven't uh, they haven't converted the bathrooms into something else, you know, uh, the closets or or classrooms or whatever. Right, because normal people aren't. I don't know shit about Harry Potter. Normal people can't like go to Hogwarts, right? So there's no need uh, to accommodate. Them. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't shit myself because like you'd have to. You would have to make like a Doctor Strange portal right on your butthole. So Fuck that, that as yeah, you poop it, dude, I'll just go in the yeah, woods. So that you'd okay. Have to, if, if yeah, this... you'd have to poop through the portal. You why don't why don't you just take it out of like why don't you just use the spell to make the poop go away inside of you? Oh, I don't want to risk that. Why does it have I don't to know. leave? I'm getting scared by the idea. Like Didn't they there's a joke about that with uh oh yeah, it's in Breaking Bad kind of when they, they're like the portaling out the pie that Scotty's eating or whatever and then it portals out his gut by accident and it uh they make yeah, a joke like, about it. It seems like a recipe for disaster. Yeah, I'd just yeah, I'd like, rather avoid you... that. I'll poop in the woods, it's fine. I don't want to risk losing How my... How come we can't... Like, world-building-wise, why don't you poop away, like, enemies? Why can't you just... Why can't you transport Voldemort's well, heart okay. into the maybe, poop dimension and just take it maybe, out? I have a feeling. Maybe Harry Potter's not very well written, right? Yeah, <laughs> I have a feeling if we, if we watch Harry Potter, we may find a couple of inconsistencies, I think. Maybe just one or two. Uh, Wings quote of the day... Oh, yes. Here we go. Look, just because Kyle said this shit stains on my seats doesn't mean this shit stains on my seats. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Bodus, uh, bad anyone referring to my Mustang as the V6. I don't the get it. The V6? V6. Oh. Yeah, because you people go out and they they buy a Mustang sports car and it's a V six fucking automatic. It's like, oh well, all right. Oh, is that like the lame Mustang or something? Yeah, it's you know it's it's, well, it's not an even automatic a car, right? Yeah, canonically, mm -hmm. I don't. You, you didn't even drive, get a. So. I don't know. But yeah, else. it's not a pro. It's not Bingo. a big V eight. It's not even a manual transmission. It's just like, eh. I don't. But know. I mean, it's it's harder and harder to get a manual car now nowadays. Um. Manual. I don't it know is how harder. hard it is. Is it harder? I, I still, I think harder. they still make um, They do make them, it's just that they make a lot more uh, automatic, so it can be difficult to get a, a manual car. Maybe if you specifically want a certain car as a manual. Yeah, but I, yeah that's I've, what I'm saying. Like, yeah, it can be tricky. Like, not every model will be manual, but if you want a manual car, um, you won't have any problem getting it. I think one. that a lot, I, I think it's actually that a lot of cars do have a manual. It's just that they don't make a lot of them. So, like, maybe, because I know, like, Chevy Cruises have manuals, and they're actually kind of fun to drive. But, and especially, I don't know if it's improved, but I'm pretty sure that there's still, like, shortages. Like, if you want to get a new car or even a used car, it's kind of hard at the moment just because of uh, supply chain issues. Mola, please play that clip of Tyrion vomiting once you're done with the video. I mean, honestly, the video wasn't like the worst thing we've seen on, on e It really wasn't, no. It's no, just that it was the it's just disappointing in that it didn't seem to want to put the effort in to exploring the Well, I guess, um, I, I don't know, like, it would have been nice to get at least a few more, like, definitive conclusions. Yeah. Even if we don't have, like, a full-on conclusion to the answer. Uh, to the to the question, like a, a definitive answer, it would have been nice to get a few concrete statements instead of just like float floating an idea, kind of exploring it only halfway and then stopping and then forming a totally like separate conclusion right at the end. I wouldn't say that it was a well organized video. That's for sure. No, no, it wasn't. Watch Cyberpunk Edge Runners. It's better than Arcane. My Man. God. Everybody's I don't saying believe that. You. Well, I say everybody. A couple of people are saying that. Two people, um, yeah. I don't. I don't believe you. <laughs> like literally, a couple of people. <laughs> I mean, recommended by a couple. I, I, I'll if Drinker recommends it, then I'll be like, all right, maybe there's something to this. I think Disparu recommended it, so it's getting around. More people will see it. Mm -hmm. Has Shad seen it? No. I wonder if everyone's stunned. We'll see. Hey there, EFAP. Loving the content. Recently bought a Fringy plush. Keep up the de keep up the detailed discussion and the hours of fun. Will do. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for getting the plush. That Ooh. campaign is over, by the way, guys. So if you if yep. you didn't get we one, we told you on uh, Wednesday. We tried. Get it. 
I told you multiple times, do not procrastinate. I t- multiple times yeah. I told you. It was don't told. Procrastinate. Was that, Many times. That little fringy plush and that little mubes plush, those versions anyway. That's that's it. Gone. That's it. It's gone. You were warned many times. You were told you were many times. You got your warnings. I guess uh, yours is, is uh, soon. I'm actually surprised they haven't told me that it's like ready as far as I know. Um, so. Well, soon anyway. Yes. It's like, as far as I know, it's done. Like it's ready to be, you know, but we'll see. Oop. Thoughts on Donkey's video game studio? He said, and I'm paraphrasing, I play games so I know good games, but he likes Last of Us too. Um, <laughs> I mean, I imagine that the hey. skills that you need from like, a video game publisher are going to be not necessarily contingent on your ability to, like, ad- I mean, I mean, best of luck to him, right? Like, it's a, that's a, that's a pretty, as I understand it, he's like forming a little video game publisher. That's cool. Like, that is cool. Try. Um, but you better be ready for. Uh, Everything that comes with that. Uh, yeah, like a lot of challenges. But hey, yeah, like that's cool. Um, to b- take a bit of a more active role, I guess, in like trying to help uh, the games that he likes get out there. Yeah, that's cool. Um, Wally works, so a mostly sent Mario movie works. Oh, I, I mean, I don't silent? need Wally as an example. There are plenty. I mean, silent films predated films yeah. with sound. You don't need dialogue to tell a story. Technically, reproductions of paintings are art. Yeah, I, yeah. I guess this I mean, is in reference you, to the I, AI you, discussion. I guess it depends uh, on the. Um, um, I mean, it's if it depends on what angle they're looking at it from. The if we're talking about because uh, almost every picture we see is a is not the original one, but we still call it art if it's a you know if if that thing's been copied. So if you make you know obviously like DVDs, right? The the story is you know it's it's, it's done over and over and over to sell as a product. If if that's the angle they're going for, or is it by copying something, is that art? Is it art to well, take something I guess someone else be... has done and like? copy it the nature of reproducing something right there was one mona lisa that is the original one that was created by leonardo da vinci like that he created and then there are going to be copies of that i think it gets more i guess the the only way that i would say that would be comparable is like the um the the original what do they call it the like the 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 film like the film reel for the uh like the original what's that called what's what called sorry you know, like like the original reel, like for for the film, like the film when a film is done, the right? film like they're, they're... negatives, the negatives, the master is it? I the, the master reel, master copy. Yeah, some. It, I mean, something along those lines, right? There is that, and then there's always going to be like the the duplicates, I guess, of that master copy. Right, like any DVD that you buy is a duplicate of the master copy in a sense, which itself is the product of a bunch of different, you know, bits cut together. Yeah, and then and with video games, if something's it's copied, well. it's meant to like, it, like if you open an art book and it's just a picture of the Mona Lisa, like you know, you know what they mean. You know, I think the the difference is that um a lot of what you would appreciate in the Mona Lisa will stem from like the the actual original work that a copy kind of can't. Like you would have to do like a one to one with all the same brush strokes, or to have the same in the same way that like when I, you know my copy of a video game is the same as somebody else's copy of a video game. It's fundamentally the same code, same assets compared to a copy of the Mona Lisa, which is not going to have the same brush strokes. It will have a copy of them, but it's not going to have like the texture or anything like that. Or maybe it does. Maybe I don't know shit about how how these things are copied. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, philosophy two really embodies the role of woman since she's so thoroughly unfunny. Oh, I know plenty of funny women. Jay Longbone. Indeed. I don't Jay need to Longbone. name more than that. One that's is an true. example. That's just one. Yeah, that's right. Alison Brie is a really she's a funny actress. Community. Good art provides the mind. Sorry, provokes the mind, making one think about the reality by providing a unique representation of reality. For instance, cubism makes me think about how some art is shit. 
Oh. What is I, cubism exactly? I like a lot of cubes. I'm a, I'm a member of the Church of Cubism. We praise the cube. And, Can you uh, give me an example of a cubist? Like, like oh, the, uh, it was in the video, right? Um, the when, I think the way Philosophy Tube described it was cubism is what, like viewing a piece of art from multiple angles at the same time. Is that how it's? Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, I get you. Yeah, I think I'm just looking at some examples. There's a lot of cool images here. Is that what makes cubism. it good? Cool stuff. I don't know. I don't want. I don't want to be seeing any of this like cringe sort of thing where it's like, ah, oh, yeah, like minimalism or cubism or abstract. Yeah, like that's some bullshit. Like I, I get annoyed when people just like dismiss, like whole guys dismiss like, oh, the see, dismiss not... the fucking red square. Don't dismiss cubism. Okay. <laughs> I'm not even dismissing the red square. I'm not. I mean, no, I'm not. Silly, I'm not being yeah. silly. Yeah, don't. I know, it is silly, but I mean, fucking red square, man. Some of this cubism stuff's pretty neat. Rags has forgotten Green Goblin is canonically racist in the Golf with Friends lore. Spider Man? <laughs> canonically racist. Last week, my dad found a Phasma cardboard cutout. I didn't have the heart to tell him I hate those movies. Captain Phasma now watches me sleep. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> well, at least you know she'll be entirely ineffectual. That's not true. If she, she could betray you. Uh -huh. the, most Im the most impactful thing she ever does is lower the shields of Starkiller Bay. So, maybe she'll stab you in the back and then I'm, die. I'm drunk right now and I'm jumping on to say I love you guys. First felt sane when I discovered EFAP because at least you guys take the time to talk through your points. Very few do that. This, do that, that. Sorry. Very few that do the same. We are quite niche in how ju just how much we will explain the point. We are unusual. We are I'm not glad typical. for people to f be able to find us. Be like, oh my god, I do that too! Yay. Uh, I missed the molar plush. When is Rags plush? Also, hi. Soon. It is soon. Also, hello. Ooh. But it is soon. In Rings of Power, doing Bronwyn's speech in the tower, thought they reused the same six or seven actors to fill out the crowd. Don't even change their clothes or hats. Really? I'll keep an eye on that when we cover Doesn't it. Doesn't surprise me at all That'd that they do that. Episode 5 is that one. Yes. Five? Oh, 5? Oh yeah, that's right. 5 is out, yeah. Hmm. Color a label that dis color sorry, color a label that describes the properties of an object to absorb light. You can literally measure it. You can measure the wavelengths, but you can have multiple people look at the same wavelengths and come out with different colors. Because their brains work differently. Currently working on an 11 hour plus video about Alien. Releasing in chapters and honestly more left ringy rags. You're an inspiration in getting me through the editing phase. Keep doing what you're doing. Oh. Good Thank to you. I, I will. It'll be done. We that shall do like it. That sounds like an adventure. An 11 hour video about Alien? Oh yeah. Go for it. I do, li I do like Alien. Alien is pretty neat. I give it Alien's a big old thumbs great. up. Maybe even two. Two thumbs. I'm pro. I'm pro Alien. Mm -hmm. The movie, not the aliens. They're pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. They should probably be exterminated. <laughs> pretty terrible. Uh, is art the process of where we imbue the physical world with the soul or essence of the artist, like with the chef? You put some of yourself into your work, bring life to it in a way. That's, Sounds uh, like a flowery like way to say it, but yeah, kind of. It's kind of fundamental, at, like what you are doing with art is essentially taking something that is within you and making it real in the world. Because um, yeah, like again, it's like it's... What's that? Something within you and you make it real in the world, it's like taking a poop. Uh, I mean, you can make something that's like poop when we're talking about art, sure. I guess it would be that's that it's, the video. taking something that's abstract and doesn't exist tangibly and you're making it tangible. That's right. Like an, an idea for a story is like, I mean, I guess it's kind of complicated, right? Because like the, at the end of the day, it only exists in the way that people perceive it. Well, I mean, we had that discussion, but like, that's, that's how I'd imagine anyway. Well, the, their meanings and their, the, the meanings and everything and interpretations that they pull is, you know, reliant on them perceiving it in some way, but. Well, I guess, I guess the way that I think about it is like, if I've got a novel, the novel exists, but like the story itself is the product of my, my ability to comprehend it. If I, if I don't exist, like, yeah, the book exists and the matter exists and the words exist on the page, but the material itself is, um, you know, like it doesn't exist without that, without me to interpret it. 
Or anybody, I mean, not just me specifically. I'm not the most important person in the world. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Disney movie related. Can thing where many people collaborate to make art stop being art because of outside interventions, such as profit-seeking behavior? Uh, I mean, it's still art, right? It would just be added as an addition. Especially if you're dealing with a project that large, you can guarantee there's at least one person there who's doing it, like, for artistic reasons. But, um, even, I'm trying to think of, like, if someone said, I am solely creating this thing for it to make me money, uh, that would still count as art, right? Yeah, of course. Um, if the way that yeah, if the way that it manifested was yeah, it had had that expressive quality to it, which it almost certainly would in most cases, I'd imagine. Then yeah, I'd say so, absolutely. Especially if you're aware of its artistic qualities and how it relates to their ultimate goal. Much like it's kind of like the bridge in a way. It's like even if your ultimate goal is just to make a bridge that's really good, the I mean, e even the things that you you know don't put in specifically because of whatever reasons could be you know artistic. How about teleporting that deatomizes everything except you? Uh, I don't think I can. Wait, everything else that. in the universe except for me? Yeah, I don't the idea is that, that it, uh, it does it instantly. So it's just like. But uh, I guess they're yeah, saying. But what about this, everybody else in existence? Well, I was going to say, that kills all of my loved ones every time I do that. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, I don't want to do that. This is. Oh, this Why? is. um. This is very uh, closely related to one of my favorite SCPs, SCP-1970. I was about to say, this feels like it could be a really good Twilight Zone thing. I want the power to teleport everywhere. And then at first he believes that he's killing himself, like he starts to consider that, but then he realizes, no. Well, shit, this sounds a bit like that Rick and Morty, uh, that Rick and yeah. Morty <laughs> joke in the Vat of Acid. You prestige yourself. It's the prestige. You prestige yourself. The, yeah, Take it in. I, the, this is real. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> like, I think you said I had something to like double that. check the number. This is similar to one of my favorite SCPs, nineteen sixty eight. If you would like to look at that, I've said it. It's out there. Go, go and take a look. Ooh. To clarify, you will tell. Okay, okay. So I'll just ask the question again. Because so you have a choice. You have telekinesis. Your limitation. You can only lift as much as you are able to lift as yourself right now. But obviously it would be at a distance. Uh, versus the power to um, teleport at the distance that it would be at your maximum sprint before you have to give up. Because you've ran out uh, of I wouldn't energy. get very far, I don't think. <laughs> maximum sprint before you had to give up? I, I'm pretty sure that like entirely, maximum or... sprint... I'm pretty sure that, like, a maximum sprint, no matter how athletic you are, like, you can only do that for a very short amount of time. Like, your yeah. maximum sprint. And, like, you can and also do that for maybe 20 seconds, 30 seconds tops. Yeah, it's tough. Uh, and as far as the lifting goes, do I have to exert myself yeah. in order to use the telekinesis? Because if I do, then I'm just potentially saving time going up there and moving it personally and then coming back it's not actually but you can stack the teleports uh can you is that baked into that question because if you can then maybe that's uh, not well, so bad six right? a day just... remember six it, a day if it's, oh. if it's still applying the six a day that's still oh i mean that I... could be useful but like i don't know how many places where would i, I... Go. I think i'm gonna find yeah, more use where... casually for the telekinesis than i am the teleporting at that point. i think so as well i will I'd too. Be like, yeah. i want to reach my phone oh i can just telekinesis it over to me this yeah, guy's like i, I will teleport to the other side of my room to grab it. it's like that seems really unnecessary that seems <laughs> unnecessary compared to if, just telekinetically yeah if i yeah taking the distance that i can maximum sprint multiplying that by you know, three or whatever, and if, if you want to use it all in one go, you, you can only do five times the distances because you have to save one to get back. Well, no, you can't. You, it's, it's cut in half yeah. because you can only teleport back that distance. So you have to teleport three times there, then three times back for a trip wow. that would only probably take you not long at all to just travel regularly, normally, well, because it's it's, it's limited by your sprint distance. If we be super charitable and assume that you can full blown sprint for two hundred meters, oh wow! I think, is, I, think, I think that's, that's charitable. Crazy. If you can sprint at full sprint, like yeah, for two hundred meters, that's, you're not getting very far. Like yeah, that's an extreme you know. example, and that's and even then. I'm well, because I'm pretty sure that like really the most that anybody could expect to do is a hundred, really. 
as I understand it, unless I the, like totally don't know what I'm talking about here, but I, I'm pretty sure that I learned about this, that like there's different modes at which like a human operates when it comes to running. You've got like a full-blown sprint that doesn't last for very long, and then after that's done, you move into like a second phase um, where your body's like is just processing, I guess, all of this at a different rate. I think one element, though, that we should remember to keep in consideration here is not just the distance aspect, it's the fact that you can bypass obstacles. True. How yeah. that would factor into, it certainly helps, because not only does it make things truly as the crow flies uh, in terms of distance, but being able to go in and out of buildings, around objects, into... Like, if, if every day you could teleport into your vehicle and then drive off. That's something, depending on where you live. Um, not having I don't know if that's like... I just don't know how worth it I think that is, I not guess. As much, not as much as a telekinesis, unless I could come up with some real advantage to... Yeah, I just... Yeah, yeah. I take the telekinesis. I think there's yeah. way yeah. too many examples where that's going to be useful in regular life. And also, like, how often do I need to lift something that isn't something I can lift normally, right? Like, the answer seems... I mean, the whole world is designed to be usable by humans with regular... Pretty much. Strength, so. How often do you have to pick up something that's heavier than you can lift? Yeah. Probably, like, when you move Probably. houses, you get a friend to help, but... How often does that happen in your life? Yeah, exactly. A couple times, maybe four. Depends, but yeah. It just it, it it's just almost it it's just incredibly useful in your daily normal life. You'll get so much yeah. more. Ironically, mm. you'll get more mileage out of telekinesis than telekinesis. <laughs> <laughs> mileage, got him. Got him. Ahoy, Efab. I finally finished my first draft of my Arcane Act 1 episodes 1 through 3 video. Time to redraft vigorously and finish this five-hour extravaganza. You're all a huge oh inspiration to me. Been watching since episode one. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. Good to hear. Good luck. Very glad Good to hear that. Everything about the production. It can be a nightmare, but also very rewarding. And I thought Arcane was pretty neat. Maybe you do, too. Maybe you don't. Who knows? If anything, mm -hmm. though, I hope it's going well. And I look forward to season two. Give me. I'm not getting it for a while. Uh, you know, mm. you, you don't want to force it out too early. That is that, that, true. That's, that's good general that advice. That is true. Yeah, that's that's just that is really good general advice for your life. You don't want to force it out too early. And on that note, whether you're whether you're in chance. the loo or pregnant, oh. there's just it's so applicable. Oh, now there's two more. If you could have uh -oh. iframes in real life, what action would you tie it to? Going up and down the stairs, opening doors, driving, sleeping, etc. Iframes. So I assume when you say iframes, frames. you mean that. Yeah, yeah. It's it's so I would be able to do some sort of like click on and off for a certain amount of time, giving myself invulnerability to all essentially damage, and then maybe some moderate quote unquote clipping through the world. Probably answers itself. It's whatever the most dangerous thing I'm doing in my day to day life, I guess. Which is like driving. I think it would be driving for most people. Yeah. For yeah, for most people, the most dangerous thing that they might do in their lives is drive. Um, Mine's is probably it, crossing the road. I mean, you could make a really cool trick out of it and freak people out. Yeah, like you could shoot yourself during your iframes or it's something like that, you know. But even then, like I, I'd, I'd have to think of how you could apply that. You, you make a hell of a magician being able to consume stuff depending on what it is, or like hot food or or touching stuff. Yeah, I, I'm just trying to think of what can you do that's useful? What do you need? I bet some people could get a lot of use out of it, like bomb disposal technicians. Maybe you should, but... anytime you're, like, all surgeries, all medical-related things, so that you, you know, it's like, we're going to have to give you a heart transplant, and you're like, no problem. <laughs> I'll have high frames while you're swapping about. Yeah, a risky surgery. Um, yeah, I guess it also would depend, on, it, during your iframes, can you get positive... Also, something I was thinking about was games. Yeah, if if you're like if if you're playing a game and you're using a dodge where you have iframes, you can still be given boons and healing by like allies and whatnot. So I assume that would apply to medical operations. Something I was thinking was, um, I like have iframes when I cross the road, and so when the car hits me, it like crashes into me as though I'm just like this absolutely titanium block that cannot 
nothing can be done to me at all, so it just goes and like explodes right next to you. I'm just like, oh wow, whoops. And then the people in there are just <laughs> fucked. <laughs> Someone asked what iframes are. Invincibility frames. It's generally whenever you do whenever you're doing something in a video game where your character cannot be uh, harmed, there's a, whether there's this a is a Dark Souls dodge or like a Resident Evil Four is a great example. Iframes are very much a part of the gameplay. When you're climbing up and down ladders, when you're doing kicks, when you're vaulting over objects, you have iframes, so nothing can hurt you while you're doing those uh, actions. You would be surprised how many little invisible things are at play in a game to make it feel better, even though you should technically be getting hurt or because yeah. it's uh, coyote time in, in platformers. I talked about it in the crash video. You do. Um, That's right. When, yeah. when you, uh, there's a, I, I remember I learned about this when I was dabbling a bit, um, in like a uh, game maker, um, like you could, you could have it to where like you programmed a character to, you know, if they, if they've stepped off of the uh, platform, they're going to fall. The problem is that you need to, when it comes to reaction times of players, people can feel like, wait, what the fuck? I hit the button. It's like, well, the computer doesn't lie. You did not, but that feels shit. So what you do is like when people step off yeah. the platform, uh, they you give them a little bit of extra wiggle room. Like you you can actually start falling and then make a jump. Most it's platformers like, do uh, this. It's like aim assist for platforms. Pretty much. Uh, yeah, I think that's I think that's a way to think about it. Um, and what I found in the crash video is they were incredibly forgiving uh, in Crash Four, more so than in Three and Two. Like super duper forgiving. To a degree that's kind of insane when you think about it. Insane. In the membrane. Yeah, insane. Oh, no, you don't get the reference. Oh, damn. <laughs> well. Crash insanity? Well, because insanity, like N, the, the insanity, the uh, fuck, N? abbreviation. Well, yeah, like it'd be insanity. N I N. N dot sanity. No, N dot sanity. So like insanity like Norman, beach is the uh Norman sanity. Uh well, it's just insanity Norbert. beach. That's what it's called. Oh, N sanity beach. And okay. you've got like lots of uh characters because you've got like um entropy. Doctor Entropy. Intro P. No, like N or and entropy. entropy. Oh, okay. Yeah, entropy. Maybe that was someone else I was thinking of. I embryo, nitrous brio, embryo. M M brio. N embryo. N embryo. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Like I bought. Like, and, and then of course, Doctor Neo Cortex. Doctor Neo Cortex. And N yeah, there's a lot. Eo Cortex. Well, no, his name is just Neo Cortex, so his first name is Neo. <laughs> oh, Neo. He's the okay. real Neo he's, before he's Neo. He's the chosen one. Well, I, the, he is the, the real Neo one. sucks now, so, yeah. He well, can, can you imagine if you, like, re-edited the Matrix, but instead of Neo, you had Cortex, so Smith runs up to him, and you got your little Cortex there blocking all of his punches. <laughs> just super chill, cinema. doing all of the bullet time. Imagine that with Doctor Cortex with his giant head doing the bullet That's time a, thing on the rooftop. I, this is he's the he's the yellow skin doctor with a big N on his forehead, yes, right? That's okay, him. that's must that's that's a conversation starter. Please, the big N on your forehead. Please watch Succession. It's got all the family drama of Hot D and Game of Thrones, and it's set in the modern day. It's very funny with a great cast. Well. I've heard that recommended quite a few I times. I hear it's really good. Yeah. What uh? What is it on? Is it like Apple TV? Or uh, something? I think it's uh HBO. Oh okay. I'm not letting you leave. Dance monkeys. Well, only two more after this one, and then the dancing shall cease. Mm -hmm. Rags, look up SCP-3000 for some existential horror. I love me some existential horror. SCP-3000. I will bring up. A um, I'll bring up a picture, not a picture, but I'll bring up the article here, and um, yeah, I'll, I'll read that later. I've got it pulled up on another tab. Would you clone yourself? Well, I don't know. Depends. <laughs> We're gonna need a lot more context, yeah. But uh, yeah. I think I would be too spooked by the things that would happen next. Theoretically, I don't know. Mm -hmm. A lot yeah. that comes with that. It's a lot of baggage, you know. Yeah.
But the thing is, if I'm in a world where it's incredibly normal and incredibly beneficial, I, I, you know, it's, it's like drawing a hypothetical of, like, would I do it if I wanted to do it? It's like, I guess I would. Uh, but it, as it stands right now in my life, it's like, you have the chance to clone yourself, will you do it? It's like, probably not. I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> like, thanks. It's called Insanity, Spider-Man, short for Norman. Or maybe the end is short for something else. Who knows? Crash Bandicoot. The N-word is subjective, Spider-Man. I don't think there's a single one. Because it's Neo, Nitrous. I actually, God damn it. Oh, Nefarious. That's right. Entropy is, ne his first name is Nefarious. Man, nefarious. Like, oh, his parents nailed it with the name. I was about to say, it's like, thanks, guys. You you basically boxed him into being evil. <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> you forced his hand. Here's a wacky Yu-Gi-Oh card, the Suppression Pluto. I, I saw that one pop up and I looked it up. So I'll paste it here for you and I'll read this. Uh, I'll read this here. All right. Once sure. per turn, you can declare one card name. Look at your opponent's hand. Then, if they have the declared card in their hand, apply one of these effects. Take control of one monster your opponent controls, or destroy one spell or trap card your opponent controls, then you can set the destroyed spell trap on your field. That's interesting. Um... Obviously, this is a pretty darn good effect if, I guess, an older you especially, but yeah, if you, if you know what the opponent has, or they use an effect where they get to draw a card specifically so you know what's in their hand and you use this, um, it's, it's pretty useful, especially because this effect is once per turn. So as long as you have this monster out on the field, face up, of course, um, you get to activate that every, you can do this once per turn. So it's a consistent, like, opportunity for you to use it. And uh, yeah, getting set, uh, it says set here. Set means face down, right? If you set a card on the field, it's face down, which mean, which is important because setting means that a flip effect can be activated or like a trap card can be effect, uh, can, can be used, right? Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a neat card. That's a, that's a neat card. He's a two summon 2600 attack. So that's not bad. This one just Eight says stars. flames. Hmm. Oh, flames! Yeah, that's pretty good. And that means we caught up on the super chats for this episode. And uh, all right, since we're at six hours, we are going to wait, wait, call wait, wait, it wait. there. Possibly. Hold up, that. How come the flame super chat has all the the stars on it? They're a member. Oh my God, it's full of stars. Members ones get to be all starry, I guess. Ooh. YouTube added. It would um, be so cool if they let you customize the thing that would show up on the. It would just be a picture of Trungos. Hell yeah. Be the way to do it. And also, six hours week? Hey. Bad. You had a 12 hour just now. It wasn't even that long ago. It was like two days. Me and Rags remember. And Fringy, to a lesser extent. <laughs> um, but yeah, was there anything you guys wanted to mention about things? This, that, and the other um, thing? All this? Doom? I guess, uh... I am... I mean, I'm... I'm the video I'm working on, um... My goal was to have it done by the end of September. That's a maybe. It might be pushed into early October. I am working on it though. Um, a new, yeah, like I, it's uh, yeah, it's 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 close. Is uh, all I got for you. So hopefully I have something for you soon. What about you, rules? Um, I do have things in the works. Um, absolutely. In fact, I'm sort of waiting on a um. Uh, of course, we have the plushie that should be coming out very soon. Like, I'm expecting any... I'm checking my email all the time because I'm expecting at any moment to for them to be like, yeah, it's all done and we're ready to get that uh, underway. So, like, expect an announcement any day. But uh, in terms of video stuff, uh, I absolutely have things in the works. A couple videos. Um, but I'm trying to get some new assets lined up with something else uh, so that it all kind of comes together. Uh, so that will... That'll be happening soonish, I think. In fact, I should be talking to someone uh, maybe maybe tonight about it because I'm not too tired. We only went for about six and a half hours, so yeah. yes. Um, we're saying short. I think this is a middle. All right, guys, you're not gonna let me get get lower this on is that. The middle. No way. Yeah. <laughs> um, a, yeah. 
but, 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 oh, we gotta, uh, you have a series of movies in mind for next year's Halloween. Anyways, take care. Good night, Hall. Thank you very much. Um, yes, it's already been chosen. Yes, we do. No spoilers, even though I may have mentioned it already. I don't remember. But no spoilers. In fact, we're recording for it not too long from now. I'm not even sure. I can't remember which date we agreed on. I'll go find out soon. <laughs> um, Purple Flip or Vanilla Fleam? So, I, um, I'm aware of Purple Flurp in the um, Jimmy Neutron universe. I don't know. I generally don't like purple flavored drinks. I'm not big on grape. Grape is fine, but I'm not big on grape. I love vanilla Coke, though. It's one of my favorite beverages. I like in terms vanilla of... Coke a lot, too. So, yeah. I don't know what a Fleam is, but I'm going to take my chances with vanilla Fleam over purple Flurp. Um, I wouldn't mind trying both. I've really got not got a preference. I, I, I like to experiment, so I don't know what to do with this. Uh, I guess I just flip a coin. Okay, we're both. What about you, Fringy? Uh, what are the two choices again? Purple Flip or Vanilla Fleam? I think, yeah, I'd go with Vanilla Fleam, I think. Okay. I, I like Vanilla. You know, at this point, I'll go with the Flip, just so that I can let you guys know. Mix it up. Uh, what it, what, yeah, what it turned out to be. Hopefully I'm not you know, hurting myself too bad with this. I hope it's edible. I assume third of the question, that we're not trying to poison us or anything. Um, yeah, alright, that about sums it up. I, uh, I, like I said, you've got uh, a Wednesday EFAP and then a Saturday EFAP, and my god, G-Hulk, Rings of Power, House of the Dragon, we code on Nerdrotic's channel. We got Andor yeah, Minis. Yeah. I say Minis. TV. It's uh, it's in the pipeline, so to speak. Yeah. Um, if you wanted to know what we thought of Andor, so at the beginning of this stream, just rewind it by six hours and eighteen minutes. Um, other than Same that, book. thank you all so much for joining us. What a, what a fun mm -hmm. ride we had through the world of philosophy. I guess definitely. That's that's, that's definitely that's what, that's what we happened got. today. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, definitely other than that you guys take care thank you for the kind donations Absolutely. uh that's another Goodbye, thing of course we everyone. will be catching up on the super chats where we find grand opportunities to do so you'll see them coming in on the uh the moolah channel you got your halloween arc is starting up the trailer is out you can go check that out on the moolah channel to see what you're in for um yeah and just more stuff more stuff's coming mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. thanks again uh, for keeping us company, lads, and good night. See you next time. Good yeah, bye, bye, night. Bye, 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 bye. Bye, bye. See you later. <laughs>